Welcome to the county ground for this magical review of the five minutes. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day three of the county championship match between Northamptonshire and Middlesex at Wantage Road. Cracking day we've got here at Northampton. The first time, really, Phil, that we've got some genuine blue sky. The, not the, the ice cream vans in around the corner. The players are getting ready. They're just well, beyond the boundary edge. The umpires on their way down the steps. Overnight, Middlesex were 128 for one trailing by 424 runs, having had Northamptonshire declare at 552 for six. My name is Dan Jadzeviks. I'm joined again for the third day in a row, which is an absolute treat by Phil Rowe. <laughs> How are you, Phil? I'm oh, very good, thanks, Dan. Yeah, as you say, it's, it is great to see some proper warm sunshine, isn't it? Mm. You've even taken the uh, the over shirt off today as well. You've off, oh, it's gone, I've declared. <clears throat> I've declared summer, it's official. So whatever you need to do. Don't, don't look too far ahead to tomorrow. I don't think the yeah, that's not so good. Is it? I don't think the local forecast looks stunning for tomorrow. But hopefully, we've got a full day of cricket. We should have a full day of cricket today. I think we had more than ninety six overs yesterday. Which yeah, is which is remarkable, incredible, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, that won't have happened many times. First home game of the season, certainly not in the last 10, 15 years for sure. It's great to see. I mean, yeah, we, we, we won't start by talking about the ball. Let's just talk about it. It is nice to <laughs> we'll see. We'll give it 30 minutes. <laughs> it's nice to see some genuine spin bowling yeah. uh, early in the season because we, we often have to wait quite a long time uh, in Red Bull cricket for that to happen. And we've seen we've seen quite a bit already. So that's uh, that's been good for the, for the purist. Yeah, absolutely. Players make their way out to the middle. The stream at Northamptonshire is powered by Daffabet. And if you'd like to get in contact with us at any point during the day, you can do via Twitter at NorthantsCCC or via email stream at nccc.co.uk, whether that's a question that you've got to pose to myself and Phil, whether it's a comment about the, the game, whether it's your thoughts and opinions on that Kookaburra cricket ball, whether you just like to tell us how good the live stream is. All of those are completely allowed. If you tell it the stream's rubbish, we're not interested, though. Yeah, we won't be reading those out. No, no, that'll make, make their way to the spam folder quite quickly. But constructive criticism, we take that let's, let's have some of that, yeah. for sure, yeah. Absolutely. Nathan Fernandez on debut, is 65 not out. He's faced 137 balls, batted for 154 minutes and hit seven fours. And former Northamptonshire Loney, Max Holden, is 40 not out, having faced 80 balls, 110 minutes and two fours as well. Ben Sanderson is going to open the bowling on day three from the David Capel end. Looks like he's going to have a slip and a leg slip in place as Karen there 
and Emilio Gay make their way down to Lewis McManus. Fairly orthodox field through the rest of it. Safe save looks like he's catching at a short mid wicket. Someone at a fairly deepish square leg. I think that's James Sales with the long sleeve on today. A mid on and a mid off. Chris Tremaine at cover. Justin Broad with the shin pads on at point. Rafi Weatherall down here in front of us at fine leg. How do you see the day going, Phil? I think it's going to be similar to the first two, Dan, to, to be honest with you. In terms of um, bat dominating ball for, for large parts. That said, you know, teams have been bowled out cheaply in the, in the, in the first round of games, um, including North Ants, nearly bowled out cheaply. Mm. And the very strong, um, finally put together Nottinghamshire batting lineup was dismantled for 80 uh, only a week ago. So, um, you know, it can, it can happen. But the, the nature of the pitch and the ball suggests it's not going to. Yeah, as it stands, we've seen seven wickets fall here at Wantage Road in the best part. 152, 194 overs of cricket so far in this match. This feels, based on what we've seen so far, this opening half an hour, one with the new ball with Middlesex on day one, Roland Jones yesterday morning as well. Mm -hmm. Just feels like if there's a chance, maybe a special 30 minutes here for Northamptonshire to pick up a couple of these Middlesex batters. It's played aerially into the leg side and far enough away from safe say, but short mid wicket to cause no panic. So that's the first runs of the morning and Max Holden gets off strike. I mean, it, you know, it's an obvious, you know, here's the first of many obvious statements during the day. Yeah, we're only, settle in, folks. We're only three balls in, which is um, the best time to get someone out is before they get in, right? So um, striking while the iron is hot and early wickets are absolutely gold. There is an argument, I've just seen Max Holden knock that off his hip and it did carry for quite a distance. That's led to a change in the field, which is what I wanted to happen. This is where I was headed, was a catcher at sort of, not quite short leg. He's kind of a catching square leg, essentially. Yeah. About 12 yards from the bat. I think that's a good position. Good bumper from Ben Sarneson. Fernandez underneath it. And a little bit of a welcome back to the crease from Ben Sarneson there for the young Nathan Fernandez. Just a slight stare. But we saw a couple of those yesterday. I mean, there's no guarantee that's even going to bounce from what we... From what we saw that's right i think it was from 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 this end wasn't it from the lynn wilson and there was i think it was max holden got under a bouncer mm. it was from uh, luke proctor yes and it nearly landed on the bales oh that squared fan fernandez up and through to the wicket keeper mcmanus i got a replay of that one see if there was a little bit of movement a little bit of shape either through the air or off the pitch Manus will be happy that that one's carried through nicely because he had a tough time of it yesterday afternoon. Shaped away slightly yeah, off the pitch. Yeah, nipped away. That's the Ben Sanson. The one that comes back and hits you on the shin is slightly fuller generally with Ben. The one that takes the outside edge is about six, ten inches shorter. That length he just hit there and there. He is a metronome, this fellow. Yeah, a fantastic operator. And that's the first over of the day complete. Good news, we've got Wendell and his flag in early doors, in his usual spot as well. We were yeah. like, He caught us off guard yesterday, or sorry, the day before, stood over by the ground staff's quarters, but Wendell's in and he's found his flag, which is well, possibly the highlight of the day, certainly so far. It's, yeah, it's, got, it's an early contender. I suspect it'll be in the top three by the time we get to the end of the day. How can you tell when Wendell's tired? Because he's not flagging. Flagging, I like. Is yeah, that, is that a joke? Uh, I think he tried. Yeah, I think he tried. Looks like he's bought his brand new cookware in as well. I hope that's not a jukes <laughs> that he's got in his hand. Otherwise, there's going to be a very few. There's going to be a few North Ants cricketers out there. They're going to be incredibly jealous. <laughs> Just flicking up the, uh, flicking up the Wendell off break. I don't know that it's any pretty... of the county's got as enthusiastic a supporter as Wendell. He he could be the man, the the, the most. Like obviously a, enthusiastic mm, supporter in in the in the country like a north hands ultra an ultra <laughs> brilliant 
Yeah, not the ultras. It's the ultra, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Sing singular. singular. Yeah. Not not Helmai that we spoke about yesterday. Chris <laughs> Tremaine from the Lynn Wilson Centre end. He hits the top of the bat straight away of Max Holden. Like a bit of a heavy ball, that one from Chris Tremaine, didn't it? It did. And it just struck me. Um, yeah, it popped a wee bit. And Max adjusted his hands and knocked it down nicely. But uh, how early was he forward? Was he was so early, mm. you know? And when you see that as a as a quick bowler, you, you know, you think, okay, he's looking to get forward. I'll I'll try and push him back. But you don't have that opportunity really. It's a better shot by Max Holden. He was a bit of a slow starter yesterday, wasn't he? I think he took a little while to get going. Chris Tremaine, none for seventeen off. Seven overs so far. Yeah, I had a little look at Max's uh, career stats, and for a man of his capability and potential, you know, by the time he leaves the game, he will want and will improve those numbers because um, they just don't reflect what a good player he is. He did particularly well on loan with us, as I've said before, and we were very keen to try and find a way to keep him. What he has done is um, ensured that he's, he's worked so hard on his white ball game that he now is a is a strong feature of the Middlesex T20 batting lineup, and um, you know that'll ensure to some degree his longevity in the game if he does have some quiet times in red ball cricket. Well, guess what? Max Holden is one of the first names on your on your sheet in T20 cricket. So um, yeah, good on him. Yeah, absolutely, we spoke yesterday, didn't we, about particularly for the younger cricketers, the, the the willingness to be to to adapt and to play all three formats and be successful at three formats to make sure that career is long and successful. Chris Tremaine on the money. Do North Hans have to just, just push the envelope a little bit here? I know we spoke a lot, didn't we, yesterday about stick or twisting and yeah. James Sales, particularly with that innings that he went on to score his first first class 100 yesterday. kind of feels like something's going to have to happen and it's going to have to happen quite quickly if there's going to be a positive result for Northamptonshire. Yeah, there was a good example of of, of what you're talking about, Dan, which I'll I'll, um, I'll come back to after this next one from, from Chris Tremaine. Which was, um, yeah, so we've talked, we talked um, quite a bit yesterday about catches in front of the wicket. Now Northampton's have got two catches in front of the wicket here to, to Chris Tremaine. But they haven't got three, and they haven't got anyone on the offside in front of the wicket catching. And um, there was a spell yesterday. Rob Keogh induced a false shot from, um, I think it was uh, Fernandez. Yeah, it was. Um, which would have been a lovely chest-high catch to short extra. And we did have that fielder for some of Rob's spells. So I think it's, I think it's important to, to you know, to to recognise that you might have to just as you say, sort of push the envelope a wee bit and put men in unusual positions and leave them there. Um, the nature of the ball and the pitch combined means that, you, you know, and we've got 500 plus on the board, we can afford to have men in, in, in positions that might be there only if the batsman makes an error. Well, let's have him there because mm -hmm. we don't, you know, he's not needed anywhere else. So, yeah, I think captains have to be a bit braver and um, yeah, leave men in unusual positions for longer. One of the one of the things we've seen, and it's been marginal, you know, it hasn't been a real strong feature, but I'm looking for ways of getting people out always, is to have men in positions where someone doesn't quite get the ball down quickly enough. Yeah. And the guy who's uh, just gone into short square leg is there for that very turn off the hip. It's a slow wicket and you end up timing it straight to short <laughs> square leg. And, and um, let's have men on the offside for the, for the equivalent on the drive as well, is what I'm uh, taking a long time trying to say. Solid by Nathan Fernandez. Now you might say, you know, you might say, well, that's all very, very good, well and good, Phil. But how many times has that happened on the offside? It's happened once or twice. Yeah. But if you've got no one there, you're never going to get someone out there. And what are your other methods of dismissal? Yeah. There's been one catch behind the wicket, which was Rafi Weatherall. A couple of LBWs, wasn't there? A couple of LBWs. One bowled. So, yeah. You're working hard for your wickets. You want men in the right place when that uh, opportunity comes along. However unlikely that might be. And as I say, it is, there is next to no scoreboard pressure for North Ants. If we took mid-off out and opened that area up, 
and put that man at a catching extra cover, bowled some drive balls and got hit for three fours. Well, so what? Mm. It doesn't really matter. If in doing that, there is half a chance that someone goes early, just misjudges the length a little bit, doesn't transfer the weight well enough, hits the ball on the up and it's caught there. So that's the sort of thing I, I would like to see a little bit more of. from, from you know, And that, that applies to both teams in this game. Short ball and appeal for RBW. That'd be interesting where that actually hit because it didn't bounce. It was on the way down when it reached the when it reached Fernandez. Yeah, I don't think there was much leg involved. I think it might have been a bit more body. Oh yeah, yeah, that's never out. No, that's, that's too high. Quite a long way over the stumps, isn't it? But interesting signs. I think I'll use the word to describe. I wouldn't say ominous. I wouldn't say exciting signs either. But interesting. If maybe the little bit of carry in this pitch is on its way out, then it is going to get a little bit harder to, to bat, particularly to those straight balls. Fernandez back on the money. Sends that one into the offside. So potentially, listening to your point there about almost not orchestrating shots from players, but we've got that catcher of Karen there in there at a catching square leg. And we've got James Sales and Rafi Weatherall almost protecting the boundary behind Karen there. Fernandez unlikely to try and turn that one round the corner with a catcher there because there's not a great deal of value for shot there. Do you lose a weather or a sales? Open that area up and say to Fernandez and Holden, well, you can turn this ball around the corner if you'd like to, and you might get four, or you might get caught by Karen there, and we move sales or weather all to somewhere else mm -hmm. in that field. Yeah, I'm certainly creating questions you know, using fielders and using gaps to, to create thoughts in the batsman's head. And and I say, almost if you have to accept a few boundaries with that, then let's do that. You, you know, there's a, there's a couple of old old stories about bowlers deliberately bowling three half follies, and the next one is a little bit shorter of that length, and guess what, caught second slip. You know, and they're happy to have conceded that, that they've bought, they've lulled the batsman into a false sense of security they've often i'm not a, overall i'm covering what i might say later in the season here <laughs> overall i'm not a big fan of suggesting that you leave an area open to encourage a shot because i don't think the game sort of works that way that said in this situation yeah i think it's it's a valid op a valid option to get mid off out get him in a catching position and encourage them to oh, there, you know if i just punch it there oh no i've been caught extra cover yeah yeah, and I mean, I suppose to, to counteract that, we are three overs into the day, aren't we? We're, we're maybe not at that stage so far on day three to start getting a little bit funky. Although I refer you to the earlier point, which is the best chance of getting someone out Precisely. before they get yeah. in. So, yeah. Would, yeah. And there's always, I mean, Shane Warne was the master of this. Where batsman was oh, the, the bluff. Why has he put that man there? Yeah. I know what's coming. Well, it's not. You know, he, he oftentimes Shane Warne didn't really know, but he knew he needed to make something happen. What did he talk about? Creating a theatre, create something. Mm. Use the fielders to distract. Bold defensively to attacking fields. That was one of his. You know, great thinker about the game. So, yes, you know, if you look at this field, if you just walked in having no knowledge of um, that it's a different ball and so on and... and uh, looked at the field, you say, oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting, interesting field. So, yeah, we have North Ants and, and again, uh, Middlesex earlier in the game have responded somewhat, but I think we need to be more extreme with that response. Yeah. And earlier and more extreme. And as you said, there's, there's an opportunity here for Luke Proctor and Northamptonshire to do so. Tremaine, it's a ball to Holden. He just turns that one around the corner. Justin Broad is in that position and was interested for a short while and far enough away to his left-hand side that Rafi Weatherall had to do the fielding down at Deep Square. He's currently doing a oh, fine leg to Deep Square at the moment for the young man, isn't he? He's <laughs> getting a few steps on the old pedometer. He's earning his stripes. But he is by the coffee van. I think that's Rob by the coffee van. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. yes, it is. It's Rob could be because of the split finger. Yeah, I think yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. Hopefully it's uh, comfortable enough to be able to bowl because I think he's going to have plenty of work to do today. Oh, it's a pill for LBW. Umpire says no. Just the way that Fernandez shaped up to that looked like that was sliding down the leg side. Yeah. 
it's quite a long way across the stumps as well, Fernandez. It didn't have a good look about it, did it, to be honest? We see the replay, which remains quite wide on the crease. Yeah, that's that's missing considerably. It hit him in front of the stumps, but yeah. look where the keeper is, Dan. Yeah, oh, no, it's a it's a tell, isn't it? It is a tell. It's a tell. I like it from Chris Tremaine, though. He's getting the ball up there. I did have a chat with him last night and spoke to him about the differences between playing with the Kookaburra ball in the UK and back home and made a few interesting points. You did? I didn't. <laughs> I'd be completely out of character if I made anything interesting at all. That'd have been brilliant. Yeah, I spoke to him. I made a lot of interesting points. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of suggested maybe if you if you tried, but no, he, he kind of spoke about this game in particular. The the one point that I thought was was particularly interesting was the fact that there was a, a tactic to bowl cross seam, and we saw Middlesex during that first innings throwing the ball in on the half volley, trying to get a little bit of um, a little bit of shine off one side, and obviously bowling cross seam does the does the similar kind of job, but. He said, it, although you might end up getting that to reverse swing a little bit earlier, potentially counterproductive in the fact that the ball goes softer mm -hmm. earlier. So therefore, yeah. you get a longer period of time where the ball does nothing. Yeah. Defended into the leg side. And I don't really think we've seen much reverse swing either. I mean, if you, if you look out, it's lush, isn't it? Mm. It's lush. The, the water table is high. Oh. There's moisture in the pitch. There's the hat trick. It's... Um, it's very, very, very unlikely to, to, to reverse swing. Um, yeah, there's no conventional swing. So that, that's sometimes an indicator of, of, of the potential for reverse swing, but I, it's very hard to imagine that. And, and um, something we haven't actually spoken, um, amazingly, we haven't spoken about in terms of the ball, we have left some, something unspoken about, um, which is um, the feedback I'm hearing is that the ball goes soft. Mm, okay. Whereas the Duke's ball stays harder for longer, this ball goes soft earlier. And that's what bowlers particularly hate. It just slows any movement down, mm. almost negates movement. A bit of a conversation between Ben Sanderson and the umpire. I can't imagine what that is. If I do this, will you give him out? <laughs> I'll hit him on the pads in front of the middle stump. There's a horrible position that I'd like to talk about here. I mean, horrible for the fielder rather than horrible in terms yeah. of it being a position, which is Emilio Gay is at um, leg slip and he is incredibly close. Now, leg slip, I think, generally is a fast wicket position because you're kind of there for the one off the face of the bat, really. Maybe off the glove if you're lucky, but it's kind of a one that's turned off, off yeah. the, but, and it's not going to reach him. Um, so he's recognize that it's got so close and that is a scary position to field yeah that's unpleasant and that angle from sanderson is going to be going to be bowling to almost that slip isn't he so it is going to come quickly i i, I employed one of them once in my short stay as a as a club captain uh -huh. and that was nothing other than to do with the fact that the bowler just kept bowling the ball down the leg side and i thought well <laughs> that's brilliant well probably going to be more used there than what you will be at first slip so that's brilliant so second keeper, essentially. essentially yeah. yeah, like it. Leg keeper. Oh, and that is that one down the leg side that's taken really well by Lewis McManus. So Emilio Gay, you know, if if that ball travels to Emilio Gay from that shot from Holden, it's going to flick off your hip. He doesn't see that from that distance before it's reached him, and. Um, you know, I hope that doesn't happen, really, because that could be nasty. He's so close. It becomes a pure reaction catch, doesn't it, at that stage? I'd like to see him with a helmet on. As Sanderson already he's bowled over the wicket, he's bowling around the wicket, trying to create something, trying to give a different look. You've got to try everything, haven't you? It's... It's testing bowler's skill. It's testing captaincy skill. It's also testing a bit of bravery as well because you don't want to look like a numpty as a skipper. You know, by leaving areas open and going for a few fours, yeah. that can look terrible. I think actually that wouldn't be a bad idea. And there is that position of Emilio Gage called into action as well, doesn't he, just to get a bit of a parry on it. Raffi Weatherall tidies up. Emilio Gage's birthday today. Is it did really? you know that? I did not know that. Oh, happy birthday to Emilio Gay. How old is he now? Oh, why do you ask me follow-up questions to these kind of things? It's what I do, isn't it? 
thought I'd made. I thought I'd provided you a nice little nugget of information there, and then you've. Can I just? Well, you you look at that, and I'll tell the the listeners that's a hundred partnership for Holden and Fernandez. As one hundred and thirty three for one is reached, right? hundred partnership. Nice little punch of the gloves between the two young left handers from Middlesex. They've played very well. So the uh, yeah the leg catcher experiment has been done away with. Nobody's happier than than myself <laughs> and Emilio Gay and probably Mrs Gay as well. Emilio's mum wouldn't fancy him being in there, I'm sure. Twenty four. Twenty four. Twenty four. Oh God, twenty four. He's been around a while, hasn't mm-hmm. he? Twenty four. Well, happy birthday, Emilio! What a nice way to celebrate. Absolutely. A few candles in the in the cake. Two hundred and sixty one candles. The cake. His mum does some baking. Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've enjoyed some of her cakes over the years, as you can probably tell. Eating, eating are up to bring some, bring some up to the box. That feels like a very cricket commentary thing to talk about, doesn't it? Chris Tremaine and Max Holden defends that one down to Luke Proctor at mid on. I think she's um, very strong, also in the kind of um, spicy, in sort of samosa world. I think, okay. I've from memory that yeah, that, yeah, that rings a bell. I think that's tickled my tongue on occasions. Oh, that's, that's lovely. <laughs> Thank you very much. Would you like another? No, fine. Thanks. That's fine. Yeah. Maybe we'll put the request in that they're not delivered during July and August then. <laughs> yeah. Or we'll get the air conditioning on over time. That's a nice length. Slightly full. That's a nice length. Just encourages <clears throat> or requires, in fact, Holden to play around his pad a little bit. Such is the nature of the state of the game. You know, we're looking for little things like that to, to feed off. But you heard the, the encouragement and the use and that that created in the field. He hits the bat hard, doesn't he, Chris Tremaine? He does. He does. One's almost just turned in Max Holden's hands as the ball's connected with his cricket bat. He's on his way back in. He's got those two catches on the leg side. That's driven, I think, off the toe that time of... Max Holden, Luke Proctor has a, well, I think you'd probably describe that as unnecessary shy at Max Holden stumps, but no harm done. Has rearranged the furniture, which the umpire will have to put back together. Chris Tremaine gets to the end of his mark. So where where are you where are you losing a fielder here then, Phil, to, to bring in another another catcher? I mean, as we, you know, the two, yeah, I'd, I'd make two changes here. Oh, and that is just around the corner. And Chris Tremaine's got his hands on his head. Justin Broad again was interested for just a short yeah. while. I think one of those we two need, fielders on the boundary gully. on the leg side. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah absolutely. And th- that would be one. Get that man catching. I think first slip is looking to go that way. Don't get too fine. Get square it because it's going to go square because it's so slow. He's too fine, I think, there. Mm. That man who's gone into uh, leg leg slip on the 45 can go square for my money. And also, I'd get rid of mid off and put him somewhere on the offside catching, you know, like a short extra yeah. on the drive. That'd be my two changes. Yeah, I think to just to strengthen that, strengthen that almost leg side cordon now isn't it if there if there was a leg gully in there that's almost yorker length by tremaine over pitched and it was a full toss in the end yeah definitely an attempted yorker i would say that you know and i said you know said just now talking about bravery of captains because some of the fields that you might want to employ they look like under 11 cricket mm. that doesn't mean they're wrong you know and um you, the, the captains will need to be brave in order to create opportunities. Yeah, I agree. And I think I think that gap in particular now is you can't just you can't see it on screen at the moment. We'll see if we can get Ben just to highlight the gap in after this delivery. Just defended down to Luke Proctor. He has another shot at the stumps, and I'm sure he won't be making friends with the umpires at the moment. As umpire makes his way back to Set the stumps back up again. Well, I think Emilio's being as helpful as he possibly can be. Yeah, the, the, as you say, that that leg gully just behind square leg, and you almost have a catcher at mid wicket, a catcher at square leg, a catcher just behind, and yeah. almost a leg slip or a leg yeah. gully at that point there. Then I think that that becomes a really exciting 
yeah. in a strange way, kind of cordon there on the leg side. Yeah. I almost feel like first slip is is redundant at the moment. Yeah. Maybe if we get another, well, when we get another kookaburra, then yeah. think about bringing it back. But right now, yeah, I, I think I, I agree with you. And and if if you needed to plug other areas, then I would take first slip out to do that. I, we don't, mm. so I'd leave him in just on the off chance. Yeah, but I think you're right. But I would hate for one to go through there. And we've just moved him somewhere up. So, you know, we only need a certain number of, of fielders in, um, involved in the game, really. Yeah. It's not nine by any means in, in terms of the way the way the areas the ball can get hit. But, uh, yeah, I don't mind this. Just, just get another catcher on the offside and I'm, I'm a happy bunny. It's not bad. Sanderson into his fourth over of the morning. Three overs, one maiden, none for two so far from the North Ant Seamer. Top ball to start. The fourth over, I think I've just seen, just at the corner of my eye, we've got Rafi Weatherall in front of us, Phil, just having a little bit of a limber up. That's gentle, isn't it? It is a, a very, very gentle <laughs> limber up. He's touching his toes now. There we oh, go. Okay. That's a bit well, more well. serious. <laughs> he bowled really well yesterday. Oh, that first he? spell, yeah. that first spell yesterday on debut really was the first time it looked like a bowler had, had created opportunities and, and challenge the batters he picked up the wicket of stone and caught behind by mcmanus there was the drop catch off fernandez by the keeper himself who it was tough wasn't it but he had to go yeah and then there was another edge off fernandez which went down but went through i think what would have been about third slip wouldn't it yeah. if there was one yeah second spell I, th I think just struggled really to get any kind of purchase out of the surface two overs for 10 but that first spell was something really exciting and North Ants fans should be incredibly excited about the prospect that they've got on their hands here 100% agree with, with all of that Dan that first five overs says okay yeah yeah, he's in the right he's in the right movie um, he's on the field you know that's well selected as well um, he's obviously shown shown promise no one's seen a lot of him um, quickly got into the England setup when he came on the scene and he's straight into the first team second game so good selection get him in Slight change in the field on the leg side. Justin Broad's now gone in a short leg under the lid. Yeah. David Houghton, who I learned a lot from in his time, brief time here, I kind of jumped in his pocket and listened to everything he had to say. And um, being the cricket man that he is, he had a lot, a lot of stuff to offer as well. And I was all ears. And one of his things on young players was, you only find out one way. You, know, you can only find out when you get him out there. Nicely bowled, nicely played. Terry Jenner, what's a dot ball? It's a nothing ball. Fuller, please, Ben Sanderson. I want to see you, Fuller. We've got to, got to make the running. We've got to try and make things happen as much as we possibly can. Yeah, I don't... I, I did have a think about it this morning and I I don't really see a way where, where Middlesex come out of this game with... Oh, that's a short ball and pulled away. It's in front of James Sales. And that is going to be four. It's a genuine sign of aggression there by Nathan Fernandez that we hadn't seen this morning. I think he'd only added a couple of runs this tally overnight. And pounced on that one from Sanderson. Hit it hard. I've been impressed. Um, you know, in, this is the only time I've seen Fernandez, so I can only judge on what I've, what I've seen here on this pitch. But I've been impressed with the way he's played the short ball. He's made good decisions about it. He's got under it when it's been short enough. When it's been at him a little bit, he swayed, kept his eye on the ball. And when he has been able to play the, play the poor shot, for the most part, he's played it very well. It's driven that time nicely, but it's Chris Tremaine in there at the covers. He does the fielding. You know, a youngster coming into the game will be tested in, in particular, his technique will be tested. In, it'll be tested all over, of course, it will at this level, with the skill levels of the bowlers that, uh, that he'll be facing, which will be a, a big step up from second team cricket and so on. But in particular, there'll be two areas. One will be the short ball and one will be quality spin. There'll be the two areas that young batters will be, be sort of most tested on. And what I've seen so far in this, in his on a slow pitch, he's played the short ball very, very well. It's another short ball that he, oh, he just gets underneath it and it's didn't gone play, through didn't, McManus. Didn't play that one so well. No, that was almost perfectly timed. Well, I think he probably did play it fairly well. But yeah. I, I think the ball did not behave in a way that he expected it to do so. But it's gone through the legs of McManus as it's got to him. Almost Yorker length, isn't it? For the wicket keeper. 
Oh, he's done well to get underneath that. End of the over. 49 overs done in this innings, mm -hmm. and Middlesex are 139 for one. The reason I think he was um, he was able to get under it last, it was a late a late duck, wasn't it? Is because he had balance. You know, if his balance is not there, he can't move down that quickly. So, yeah, credit credit to him. That's where your kind of technique and your fundamentals really can help you out, or or not. So yeah, 143 for one. So Middlesex slowly making a dent in that in that North Ant's big first innings total. There's still 409 runs behind. That won't bother them. What is most interesting to Middlesex is 143-4-1. That's the most important number for them. They're going at around, just, just around three three and over. North Ant's over eight, plus three. I haven't been able to say that many times. That's, that's great to see. <laughs> Enjoying that. So... Rafi Weatherall's first ball is just back of a length, turned not with control, but turned into the leg side by Max Holden for another single down to down to the man on the fine leg boundary, who is Rob Keogh, fielding kind of out of harm's way because picked up a at some point has picked up a a bit of a, a, a knock to his spinning finger, which we think contributed to some of his less accurate deliveries yesterday. He did get a couple to turn off straight, but very slowly. It wasn't a bad spell by any means. A couple of loose ones in there. Oh, that's nice from Rafi Weatherall. A little bit more aggression there from, from Nathan Fernandez. That ball, he was hitting that ball on the up. And I'm very encouraged by that. If Nathan Fernandez wants to, or anyone for that matter, wants to start hitting the ball on the up on this pitch, crack on. Have, have a go. And that area there, that almost drive area, is exactly where Rafi Weatherall needs to live most of this most of this spell. Interesting, he started round the wicket today. Um, yesterday, to the left-handers, he was he started over the wicket and then following a, a discussion with the senior pro, Ben Sanderson, he then went round the wicket. He started round the wicket today. So there's been some reflection, communication, whatever you, however you want to call it. Ben Sanderson's positioned himself at, at mid-on, sorry, at mid-off. So he's able to feed back to, to Rafi Weatherall and that's going to be such a help to the young man on debut. Yeah, that's a lovely length as well. Just encouraging the drive. Now, I think that length, I don't know how, how you're seeing that, Dan. I'm seeing that, that there's more aggression, intent, let's put it that way, more intent from Fernandez to take the bowler off that length than there has been hitherto. I think up until now in this innings, they've been happy to absorb that delivery with a lovely untroubled forward defence, a little bit more intent in, in the shot. Now, certainly good intent in that shot. A little bit of width on offer. Fernandez looking to come forward and pushes back, transfers his weight and times it beautifully square of the wicket on the offside. A very elegant shot with minimum effort. I wonder if there's a, there's a debutant versus debutant battle going on here and Fernandez is thinking no I'm I'm going to be the better debutant at the moment I'm, I'm going to be respectful of Sanderson and all the hundreds of first class wickets that you've got and Tremaine with with the experience that you've got as well but actually if I am going to score runs I'm going to have to try and pick on one of these blokes and it makes a lot of sense for me to pick on the guy that's making his debut at the same time yeah I've got I've got time for that as a, as a tactic well bold well played that fuller length there and a straighter line he's got his boundary so just covering up for the last ball of the over yeah, in the game, uh, I mean, I mean you ha someone playing out there is out there because they're good enough, obviously. But um, yes, transferring pressure back onto bowlers, you, know, you will hear teams particularly talk about, get after this guy early. You know, he, he doesn't come back well. If we get on top of him, he won't come back. He'll want to he'll vanish somewhere. We know that for off spinners, the idea is to make, <laughs> to make it difficult for them to get a second over. Don't, do not let them settle. Mm. The Alex Wakely classic run at the first ball which he used to do frequently and knock it for four or six down the ground just to dominate the, the offspin who's coming on to rotate the, rotate the, uh, the seamers. But yeah, there, there may have been a bit of, you know, this guy's a good bowler, um, show intent against him. Don't let him settle. Yeah, He's on debut. Let's, uh, you know, let, let's get in, in between his ears and see if he responds to that. But there can be no better man, for, for my money, to have 
um, at, at mid off as you're as a, as a bowler on debut than Ben Sanderson. Um, and that'll be deliberate. You know, he'll be positioned there deliberately by the captain for that very job. Don't worry about that, Rafi. We like that. We like him driving on the up. Let's see if he wants to keep doing that. Don't go anywhere else. Mm. You stick there. Yeah, it was certainly the pick of the North Hats bowlers yesterday, Rafi Weatherall. And I think as well, with the bowling options available to Northamptonshire and Luke Proctor, if it doesn't work for, for four overs, give somebody else a go. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's so many options in this in this side. We didn't see James Sales bowl yesterday. We, we weren't 100% sure whether he might have been carrying a, a little niggle that, that hasn't enabled him to bowl so far. Looks like he's having a bit of a stretch down at square leg at the moment. But Luke Proctor himself, the, the three seamers, Sanderson, Tremaine and Weatherall, Two spinners, Zabe and Keo. There's there's plenty of toys to play with for, for Luke Proctor. Yeah, it's an, in in this respect, it's a very very nice and an unusual position, I think, uh, in some ways for Luke Proctor to have, which is um, what you want as a captain uh, is two things. You, you, you want options, but the boy's got those, as you say, number of high quality options available to him. So that's great. He's also got 550 runs on the board, which is a nice thing to have as well. Ben Sanson looking to. Yeah, he's looking, I mean, he's so accurate, but he's looking to bowl a kind of a, a length which is difficult for the batter to get down if he wants to turn that ball into the leg side. That looks like a bit of a tack. There are three catchers now stationed for for any mistake that Max Holden might make in trying to turn the ball off his hip and get it down. It's a far easier shot when there's pace on the ball. When it's slow, you threw it early and you can carry the ball to one of those one of those waiting fielders he will mix that up with some fuller length i'm sure there that was a bit of a cutter i think and again it just carried in the air off the bat fractionally more than yeah max holden indicating to fernandez that, that was a cutter either that or he's given him a very unusual wave i think it was a cutter it looked like it didn't it the, the touch slower from from sanderson and yeah holden played that shot his hands quite a long way in front of his body didn't he in the end but it yeah. Probably explains the fact that the ball got there slightly later than what he thought it was going to. And the key is to keep the blade behind the hand when you're doing that. That's well bowled, full of pace delivery, covered up nicely. Yeah, it, it, the way that um, the way that Max plays, as, as I've mentioned yesterday, and, and you picked up on Dan, is he uh, Max Holden plays in a very similar style to to Sir Alistair Cook. And, and you can imagine Alistair Cook's hands, if you kind of visualise, hands quite a long way in front of the blade and away from the body at times. And um, would you coach that? Absolutely not. Would you coach it out? Absolutely not, because you don't end up with Sir Alistair Cook otherwise. Um, so there will, be, there will have been coaches, I'm sure, uh, when he was at Bedford School and in his Essex career who will have thought about tinkering with that. Um, but um, thankfully, no one did. The key is don't let the blade get in front of the hands. That's the key thing there. Weatherall to continue second over. That's a nice delivery. That's pitched and gone away off the wicket. It died before it got to Lewis McManus, who's now thinking about getting a little bit closer. It's marking his position. I think he might just creep in even even closer. It looked a nice delivery, that. Yeah, it did. As you said, it just shaped away, didn't it, from Fernandez? He left the ball well, and he's left the ball well throughout the entirety of his 74-run stay at the crease so far. But I'm sure... Raffi and Northants be pretty excited that he's getting a little bit of movement. Reflective of what we saw yesterday, he was the the seamer that, that could get a little bit out of this pitch and, and this cricket ball. So nice to see that he's that he's starting so well today. I mean, no one no one has got more movement than than Raffi Weatherall. Okay, he's only in, into his ninth over now, but we can only comment on what we've seen, and no one has got has got um, has got more movement. Having bowled his first ball, which kind of was four and a half stumps and went away, then just got a bit straight, didn't he? Just let Fernandez get away from him with a single down to fine leg. And that's a little bit of, you know, a little bit of inexperience, I guess. The first ball of the over pitched on sort of four fifth stump and went away. Okay, that's encouraging because that's not happened very frequently. Yeah. Right, I need to get the next one in the right area. With Crikey, that, I'll fold it on the pads and he's got away from me. Yeah, with that field set, though, I'd argue and say that the seamers are being asked to bowl very straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
fourth and fifth storm almost isn't the no no that almost isn't the line absolutely but as you said that one that got tucked down to rob keogh at fine leg was a touch too straight there that's that's perfect perfect line perfect length and perfectly defended we're obviously concentrating on on raffi weatherall because a home homegrown home produced seamers are, are a rarity particularly uh, in northamptonshire's history so it's very exciting um let's not but not, let's not underestimate the job that nathan fernandez has done for middlesex 75 not out on debut and he looks a good player he got his opportunity as a result of sam robson picking up a thumb injury in their first round of games good selection absolutely and uh, so far causing a well may cause a future headache for middlesex and their selection as to who they do go with at the top of the order does sam robson walk back into the team i suspect he might may well do or how do you then keep fernandez into that top six as well yeah nicely played down the ground just a little fuller but i don't yep yeah, it won't surprise you to hear me so i don't mind that um nicely driven for none up to up to mid on speaking of, we, we've spoken a bit about debutants karen there and ben sanderson are both playing their hundredth first class match here today yeah that's that's nice isn't it mm. yeah crikey I, I mean it's i should know this i would have thought ben sanderson played more than 100 games he seems to be around forever He's always had two spells in the professional game. Started his career at Yorkshire, and uh, Yorkshire, and um, they just had a, an embarrassment of riches there, and they had to make some 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 gaps. Really, they had to move some some players on, and um, I think they got got that. I think they would now concede that moving Ben Sanderson on was not the right decision. And then Ben spent a couple of years out of the game. Short ball. Which you know, which is crazy, mm. absolutely crazy. Um, but stuck at it, and um, yeah, we were lucky enough to to be the beneficiaries of of, um, of Yorkshire's Yorkshire's decision not to re-employ him. So, is there a, is there a Phil Rowe discovery story here? I, I won't talk to you about the Jack White one. I think we'll save that for for when Jack White is back on the field. But is there? The, well, the man, I, I have a I have a bit part in this, but the mm. man who deserves credit. For, for this really more than any well for he'd probably called ben sanderson actually <laughs> so let's start with that um that's a definitely a cutter it's just hard to bowl that it just gripped in his stayed on the fingers too long and gone down the leg side but we can see ben sanderson trying some of his white ball skills out which we talked about yesterday and bowlers will increasingly need to do that yeah so ben ben came down and bowled in the winter um in our winter nets and uh, a few times and um yeah i mean I, with no disrespect to any of the other bowlers who were there because they're all fine bowlers you just thought this guy's a this guy's a first class bowler he really is the, the issue that that we had i mean we would have signed him immediately basically the issue that we had was we had absolutely zero zero money probably less than that and um it just we just couldn't find the money to to spend on on ben sanson at all um he knew that he knew we liked him um a lot but um we said look you know you're gonna have to go and trial elsewhere mate because we can't we, we'd love to have you but we can't do it we don't want to keep holding on to you you, you go go and yeah. trial elsewhere and the man really th then who's really responsible for, for ben sansley and the up at north ants is kevin sharp who at the time was uh, looking after the second team at worcestershire and then went on to be head coach at worcestershire and then director of cricket um for a while a short while um now yes yeah, so, so i i then had this, a second team down at kidderminster playing against worcestershire and ben sanderson is playing against us and uh, it was a very good a very good fixture you know two good bowling attacks um both worcestershire attack and and our own was decent and i rang rips on the second evening and said look ben sanderson's playing for worcestershire and he is by far the best bowler in this game and every other seamer in the game was a, was a, was a staff seamer other than Ben. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there were three seamers on the on the Worcestershire staff. We had four. Uh, so there are eight staff seamers in that game, and the best bowler in the game was was not signed, and that was Ben Sanderson. 
and I said, we've got to, we've got to do something here. You know, we, I don't know how we make this work. We've got to do something if they're not going to sign him. And he said, well, it's likely they're going to sign him. And I said, well, they'd be crazy not to. Mm. So I spoke to Sharpie and said, look, Sharpie, um, are you going to sign him? Just it's between you and I. And he said, he's my recommendation. There's no question. But we think we're going to get promoted to Division One. And uh, Stephen Rhodes was head coach of Worcestershire at the time. And uh, Kevin Sharp said, you know, I think Bumpy wants more pace going into Division One than, than Ben offers. And I said, will you, will you do, when you get to that decision point, if you don't sign him, will you not ring anyone else? Will you ring me first? Mm-hmm. Give me first refusal because we will do something for him. We yep. won't mess him around. We'll do something for him. And we get to November of that year. Phone rings, Kevin Sharp, Phil, you know, I wish I had enough to make this call. We're not going to sign him. I said, thanks, mate. I'll, I'll ring him. And uh, we put together the worst package in, in in world sport. It was everything that we could afford, and it was it was shocking. It, it was okay. basically a pay as you go right uh, basis. Um, and we said to Ben, "This is the right derisory. It's everything we can do. If we could give you a penny more, we would. Yeah. This is the best we can do." And he said, "Yeah, I'll, t- I'll take it." And good on him. You know, he was earning decent money working. Um, you know, playing league cricket, playing minor counties cricket, and uh, working with his uh, with his family in the building trades. He was earning decent money. He had to give that up in order to take basically nothing. Um, you know, sort of bed and breakfast really from North Ants, but he wanted to be in the professional game, and the rest is history. So a very brave move from Ben Sanderson. A uh, great bit of work from Kevin Sharp, and we were you know we were in the right place at Kidderminster at the right time. That was a long answer, wasn't it? It was a good answer. Did you like that? I did. Any any bit of insight, any little bit of nugget that that's just not necessarily open and available to to public, the public ears or, or eyes or domain or something. I think just provides so much more value to to to, to the listeners and to, to what we're talking about and to what we're watching as well. So thank you for sharing it. I knew you'd have some kind of input in this in this <laughs> thing. I feel like there's a there's a thorough stamp on on every corner of Northamptonshire at the moment. It kind of answers the question, what the heck was I doing for 15 years, really, doesn't it? Sign, signing cricketers by the sounds of it. Something. Watching cricket, that's what I was doing. Watching cricket and talking about it. That's kind of what I'm doing now. Back over the wicket now, Rafi Weatherall. Oh, OK, the plan nearly... Oh, no, it's going to be leg by. I thought there was some glove on that, but no, there wasn't. Just off the... off the. Uh, I got very excited about that. <laughs> Rafi Weatherall over the wicket. Um, into the thigh pad. I thought it was turned off the glove and just evaded the man at leg slip, but it was given as as leg by. So I'll get back in my box. It was a glimmer, wasn't it? There was a glimmer. It was a glimmer of light for for Northamptonshire. Nine, it it nine did bounce, didn't it? The ball did it bounce. Did, yeah. not, you know, not unconventionally, but it, it did bounce. Oh, he's timed that very, very well, has Fernandez. That's a fine cricket shot. Wow. So, as we've talked about a few times, the plan here, amongst other plans, the part of the plan is ball hit ball, see if the batter is able to get the ball down. And Fernandez said, yeah, I can get it down. And guess what? I can time it so well that the two men you've got out there on the boundary, one at, at uh, long leg and one at uh, f- sort of just forward of square on the boundary, had no prayer of stopping that. Beautiful timing takes him 79, 160 for one. What's Rafi's response going to be? He's gone for leg buys and now for four square of the wicket. Well, he's going to start with a okay. with a change of angle, isn't he? So he's, he's altered, he's coming around the wicket. Leg slip goes into conventional slip. So, yeah, so the line will alter hopefully in order to reflect that plan, which it does. Well done. So he's bowled a kind of, you know, in the middle of summer, that ball gets driven back down the ground, but that's the length we need to be. Well bowled, Rafi. It's not easy, you know, he's come from in one ball bowling around the wicket, looking to bowl into the thigh pad, which he did successfully, albeit one of those went for four. Okay, back over the wicket, slip comes across. Can you alter your line without going width? Mm. And he did, right bang on middle stump, good bowling, good control. Just knocked away comfortably into the leg side. We've seen that shot. That's probably been the most frequent shot in this match, would you say? The ball that's been sort of back of a length, knocked in comfortably in front of square 
for a single. Yeah, I wonder. You can get a wagon wheel up on this on on NV Play, so should certainly be able to. Well, I could. I as you're as you're looking for that, Dan, you'll you'll find it. I'm backing you. You'll find it. There's going to be a change at the David Cafel end. Ben Sanderson comes off, and Chris Tremaine will will replace him. The breeze is similar i think it's probably slightly less breezy than it has been but in terms of direction it's pretty similar it's still there's still a considerable breeze there it has been quite blowy at times it's coming across the ground as we look from the lynn wheel stand it's going from our right to our left to remain tied around the wicket one slip two catches on the leg side bang on the money yeah so i was just trying to find so on on the nv play website uh, where the ECB records all of the, the proper scores in cricket anyway. Um, you do get quite a good bit of an analytical package to go with it, and there's a there's a wagon wheel available. And I thought, well, now you've made that point. I wonder how many of Emilio Gay's um, 260 came through mm -hmm. that that area. And on the onside, so obviously it's it's split off into into spokes as you can yeah. as you can see here. We've got 133 of that 260 that have come from what would be fine leg, square leg, mid-wicket. Okay, well, that tells the story, doesn't it? That's a lovely shot. Oh, that's out. No, it's not. He's got back. So, beautiful straight drive from Fernandez. Tremaine did really well to get a flick on that. Max Holden did really well because he turned and dived and got his back back. And we're just going to see that on replay now. It all happened very quickly. That's normally out, but Max is comfortably back. Well done. Didn't back up too far. At that speed, that's out more times than it's not. Mm. But Max Holden did very well and dived back in. Wants to change his gloves now, I think, as a result of that. He was face down in the dirt, but uh, his wicket is intact. Tremaine encouraging the drive again from Fernandez, who obliges, pushes it with good control to mid on no run. Got a lovely message, lovely message just come in from Nathan Buck, formerly of this parish. Hmm. What a fine man he is. Very, very lovely to hear your tones on the stream this morning. Tuned in to listen for the first time all year. He's covering himself there. I reckon he's been listening more frequently than that. But um, great, uh, great to hear from you, Nathan. Hope all's well. Hey, Nathan, you'd have enjoyed bowling on this one with this ball. <laughs> I sense a slight, <laughs> slight tinge of sarcasm in the tone of your voice there, Phil. Yeah, you wouldn't be alone either. How, Hopeful, how many well. bowlers? How many bowlers do you reckon would be licking their lips at the prospect of? Approximately. Yeah. Single figures, maybe, maybe even less. I'm, I'm looking for the nutters, mm. really. Now there will be, and then there should be. Let's let me try and answer that one more sensibly um if the alternative if the alternative is i could bowl with a cook with a cookaburra or i could bowl with with a dukes you know how many are going to vote for the cookaburra no is the, is a short answer to that that if it's uh, do you want to bowl with a cookaburra or not play well then it should be 100 percent you know? yeah because it's a privilege to be out there playing well and you respond to what the conditions are and if it's tough then you know, get tougher. If it's testing your skills, get more skillful. So um, I wouldn't want people to be, you know, spending time on the physio table rather than getting out there and trying to work out how they're going to get wickets for their team. That was the coachy answer, wasn't it? It was. Sorry, I'm just midway through asking a question to um, the North Hans analyst. So okay, you, you carry on for a moment. Are you going to share that question? Um, I will do, but I, I just want a little bit of, of confirmation okay. before I prepare to make myself look a little bit silly. There was a TV show. I think I, I'll get this wrong. It's something like Inside Yorkshire. It's sort of a documentary fly on the wall type thing. We're going to see. Are we going to see a bowling change this end? No, we're not. No, Rafi Weatherall is going to continue. And uh, they had a practice match um, at, um, at Wheatwood, just up, um, just up the road from Headingley. And there was a bit of grumbling about the about the surface they'd got. Um, the batters, I think, were a little bit grumbly about what the... It was in a sort of a warm-up type game. Mm. 
maybe an, maybe it was a intra club friendly something like that it wasn't a inverted it was a proper game but it was it was a contest game you know it was bat against ball and, and so on that's nicely bowled again by Rafi Weatherall I'm enjoying his work I really am it's really good to see just back to that story quickly and um Andrew Gale was the no no it wasn't Andrew Gale it was um it was Jason Gillespie was the mm -hmm. coach of Yorkshire and he got the lads together and said uh, I'm hearing too many grumbles about this surface if you're telling me if you're telling me as batters that you can only play on flat wickets that you're in the wrong profession because that's what I'm hearing that you can only play on flat wickets do not grumble about the surface go and show me how good you are and that would be my kind of kind of response to too many grumbles about about the about the kookaburra ball from a bowling perspective is you know, almost get on with it you know this is what you've got to work with get on with it yeah precisely we spoke quite a lot yesterday didn't we about a period of figuring it out i'm sure there's a more articulate way to to describe that point that i tried to make but everybody is learning yeah and that's not to say that that one of these seamers isn't going to unearth a a skill or a tactic or a, a plan or a mindset and all of a sudden you think okay well may, maybe i've discovered the right key to the right door here and absolutely i can be successful and this is yeah well played max holden as he brings up his his 50 his second 50 of the season got one in the first game of the season at home against Glamorgan, and he's backed that up again with one at northampton which is i think his second favorite ground in the world certainly enjoyed his time his time with us i mean it's this is not the same point and but it's a, it's kind of in the same vicinity is the way that spinners have responded to t20 cricket you know particularly yeah. leg spinners but everyone was saying well this is the end of spin there's no more spin no spinners won't be able to play this game beautifully bowled by rafi weatherall it found the edge of max holden's bat he didn't push it at max holden and that combined with the low bounce meant that it it went to ground before it reached the waiting catcher at first slip but it was a moral victory for the bowler again round the wicket that's bounced sorry it's not but it's pitched and straightened on the left hander and he had enough about him not to push at the movement just played the soft hands the ball went down but you know good signs again from from Rafi Weatherall who you know just to repeat the point it's worth repeating he has got more response from this from this uh, ball than any other seamer in this match and that's quite high praise for a man on debut He's been fantastic. 55 overs old now of the ball as well. Just oversteps on that one, doesn't he? But he's no, he's been he's been a pleasure, a pleasure to watch so far. Three and a half overs, none for 15 in this spell. The, the only wicket to fall for the middle sex was that one of Mark Stoneman, which was caught behind off the bowling of Rafi Weatherall. He looks quick as well, doesn't he? And I'm I'm sure he will get quicker. Yeah, I mean he's at the he's at the right level, isn't he? You know, in that he's not express, but um yeah, he's 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 quick enough. He's he's you have to pay respect to it. And as you say, he's not going to get any slower. That's for sure. Straight on the money again. This made me chuckle. Nathan Book is one of the one of the funniest men that mm. we had in our changing room. And uh, Nathan Book suggests um, now that he's retired, I've started a petition for the Kookaburra to replace the Dukes fully. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Quite enjoyed that, Nathan. Try selling that concept to you, mate, Ben Sanderson. <laughs> Be interesting to see how many signatories that, that petition gets. I'm not convinced he's going to need many pieces of paper. And again, the, the last ball he over tucked away into the leg side for a single. But yeah, good encouragement again. A yeah, nice pat on the back from, from the captain to Rafi Weather, who looked a bit... Looks a bit down on, on himself there. He doesn't need to. I mean, he's, his line has not been quite as consistent, it would be fair to say, as he would want it to be. But actually, you know, his job is to get wickets, and he has asked more questions than anyone else in the game. So, so good on him. He'll get more consistent the more he plays, the more comfortable he feels, and so on. But uh, it's, it's early days. He's bowled 11 overs in the game, one for 49. But his numbers don't tell us the full story. He has been the standout performer, I think, with the ball. Absolutely. Chris Tremaine to bowl from the David Caperland. Just squared up. It's holding a little bit as it 
ball squirts itself out to point. Got catches in now. Those catches on the leg side have just, just moved slightly. We've still got Justin Broad under the lid. We've got Karen there at a silly mid on. He's right foot is pretty much on the cut strip and I think I think we're going to end up with a bit of Rob Keogh from the Lynn Wilson centre end he's going through his trademark long warm up at the cover so looks like that finger injury that split finger is not causing him too much pain short ball from Tremaine and that's pulled away by Holden down to Rafi Weatherall it's going to be a single added to the score It was cool for cool for a helmet. I don't know where that came from, but I suspect that means that we're going to be. Yeah, I think that was the keeper. We're going to be getting spin at the next over from the Lim Wilson Center end. Very polite, wasn't it? My helmet, please. I yeah, like that. Yeah. Well, manners cost nothing, do they? Well, that's good. It's not always been the case, that Helmet. Oi. Or hell my. <laughs> Short sure, again and well evaded by Fernandez. You'd have to say well batting, wouldn't you? You really would. Well, some would. <laughs> some would. <laughs> Very good. Anybody with, with a proper vocabulary wouldn't, but some would. Middlesex just don't need to do anything different here, do they? No. Uh, I, don't, I think I, I got halfway through saying earlier, um, I don't see there being a scenario where they overtake Northamptonshire and put Northamptonshire back into bat again and cause any kind of stir that way around. Short again, an uppercut that time from Fernandez. That's a lovely shot, wasn't it? Just waited for it. The ball almost just held up out of the surface and he guided it over Emilio Gay. If we get a re we are going to get a replay of that. Look how late he makes the decision to play it. Mm. It's banged in. I'm getting under it. Actually, no, I'll, I'll ramp it instead. Yeah. That tells you quite a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Very well played. Good balance, good decision making. Yeah, he looks a good player, this kid. Very nice shot. Moves to 84. Okay, I've seen enough now, though. Thanks, Nathan. Next, please. I think he might be out here for a little while to come yet, Phil. I think he might. I think it'd be Northants who, who certainly have to, well, not to say they haven't blinked first already with, with the field placements, but it's certainly going to be them that they're going to have to do all the running here. And whether that does come from a, a change of bowling, we'll see how spin goes at the, at the next over, but is there a, a change in the field coming up that, that might just cause a little ripple in in the Middlesex ranks Yorker from Tremaine and well dug out good by cricket Fernandez. wasn't it good very cricket. good cricket we talked a bit about Yorkers uh, yesterday and um, I know um, Toby Road and Jones tried a few Yorkers some of them he got right some some not so much but it's a it's a why not you know that's a great option we had an analyst during our time Richie Barker who uh, did a fantastic job behind the scenes no one knows really the value that, that Richie added, unless you were in the inner sanctum. He, he, he worked very hard and he was a very big advocate of a Yorker in Red Bull cricket. He'll have had some numbers to back that up. I hope, I hope Richie's listening. And if he is, I hope, hope you're well, hope you're well, mate. He was our first analyst back in the day. And um, I wonder how much that job's changed. Oh, entirely changed mm. yeah yeah they're not the same those two those two roles that, that uh, are not the same no it's uh it's a profession now uh, that's not to say that richie didn't uh add enormous value because he because he did and uh, as i say there, there were very many things that he brought forward for a, a consideration and one of which was we should bowl more yorkers in, in red ball cricket i think it's a good tactic i think something that that maybe has been a little bit underused in in these round of fixtures or or this one so far. Rob Keogh is going to bolt. The Middlesex batters just had a little bit of a, a comfort break as the substitute fielder makes his way off the ground. Short leg stays in place to catching mid-wicket. Looks like Chris Tremaine is going to be in at a catching cover of first slip. Extra cover. Backward point. Rafi Weatherall's at mid on Luke Proctor will be at mid off Chris Tremaine isn't going to be at a catch and cover he's going somewhere else he's going on the brimful at 45 there is there is no reason for us not to have a man on the drive catching on the drive here I think that was we'll, a double negative I think wasn't it 
Well, now you've said that, and I, I think when you look at this and the way that the ball has behaved, I'm I'm struggling to see right now where that wicket comes from. Yeah, yeah. We did see Justin Broad. Oh, well, it went through the hands of Justin Broad late last night at short leg. It's not a bad start. Rob's just asking for maybe Karen there just to go a little bit squarer, straighter even by the looks of it. Oh, that there is spin. Him up. There, there we go. Spin. There we go. That's where the wicket's coming from, Phil. Get the man on the drive. Okay. I think we should have a man on the drive. I'm not going to get on my soapbox about that. Nicely floated oh, delivery and defended. That's beautifully bold, isn't it? Just pace off, wasn't it? Just up above the eye line of Max Holden. Beautiful. How do you feel about a, a fielder on the drive there, Phil? That might be <laughs> might be a good option for Rob Keogh and Luke Proctor. That's a great idea. About there. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. Well picked up there by James Sales, who... Wow, his legs nearly overtook his shoulders, I think, then. That was impressive how he stayed upright there, wasn't it? Very, very impressive. Again, well bowled by Rob Keogh. I saw Rob Keogh posted a picture of James Sales this morning, sat in the physio room with the, you know, the compression air pumping, I guess, trousers. Oh, I don't yeah, know what yeah. the technical yeah. term is for them. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's that a loose shot. That is a loose shot. Now, that is a very unholden like shot. It's a very unholden like shot in this innings in particular. The two previous balls were moon balls from Rob Keogh. Um, there was more to it than that. They were good. They were well yeah. bowled. They were high skill. And then they got over the ball and they dropped. They were very, very slow. And I wonder whether the the false shot from Max Holden was kind of like, oh, I should be scoring off that. I can't keep patting that back. He got a little bit of width and played a loose shot at it. Well, he's he's approaching three hours at the crease now, Max Holden. As you said, he's very capable, and I'm sure he's had innings that have eclipsed that kind of number, but it's a mental test, isn't it, for a batter? Particularly when the scoring rates are considerably lower than what they might be used to. Driven down the ground by Fernandez. So the, the, the point that I, or the question that I raised oh, yeah. anyway, yeah. I have had a, a bit of a, a response now. Um, I was looking at, at wagon wheels. Just, I mean, why wouldn't you look at the wagon wheel? And I've, I've, I, what I wanted to double check is obviously I'm looking at this logically. And I would, I would look at this logically as if the bowler is coming from the bottom of my laptop screen yeah. and heading up. Yeah. And I think the thing that was interesting was the fact that actually Nathan Fernandez hasn't scored a run straight down the, the ground okay. in the V. Is that field placement that's restricted that from from doing so? Uh, yeah, okay. So so I think there's a few things um, that spring to mind there. Because he has struck the ball down the ground. And he has hit mid on and mid off reasonably firmly. I think it's lack of pace mm. that, you know, that the ball has not come onto the bat. Therefore, it leaves the bat slower. Therefore, the mid on and mid off have got more time to get across to the ball. And um, also the outfield's quite slow as it would be at this time of year. So I think those things combined... Yeah, I think it follows up that point that you made probably about 15 minutes ago about how many times have we said or seen that shot just turned off the hip for a single yeah. and yeah. again, just highlights it doesn't 84 runs and, and not a single one of them have come down the ground from Nathan Fernandez. And that, that's not me trying to say that this 84 hasn't been good because there hasn't been a shot down the ground. But Yeah, it would what? be. I mean, I know, and I know this is not a criticism. It's just an observation from you. There's no, there's no implicit criticism in that. There was criticism of Alistair Cook that he couldn't play down the ground. True, uh, and actually, you know, he did. But his strong areas, particularly where elsewhere, in that kind of area, where Fernandez has just let that almost past him, mm. and then ins ensuring that he misses the point field, he almost let it past him, and then very skillfully. Why play the ball down the ground when you can play that kind of shot as well? Exactly. Though, and as you said, I think I think he has. Yeah, I think he has. He just not pierced the yeah, field. The, yes. the, the pitch in the outfield is not is not helping the matter. But yeah, he's a mighty fine for eighty eight. He's on eighty eight, not out of one hundred and eighty nine balls on debut. Let's not forget the middle sex as well. But also that point takes me. It sort of reinforces my earlier point. Was let's get mid off out of the way and get him somewhere where he might catch. I will be honest. That was going to be my follow-up. Ah. 
that was going to be my follow-up point. But I just thought, well, if there aren't runs being scored down there, or at least not several runs being scored down there, there may be an opportunity here to move that. 100%. 100%. I think, yeah, as I said earlier, I'm not generally a fan of leave mid-off open because that'll encourage it because it, I don't think necessarily that the game happens that way at this level. But in this situation, why not? As it is, mid-off and mid-on will stay in place. Well, mid-on is incredibly wide, actually, now almost bordering a mid-wicket. About there is where mid-on is. <laughs> thanks, uh, thanks for that, Nathan. End of the over, 179 for one, 59 overs gone. Chris Tremaine, 13 overs, four maidens, none for 30. Rob Keogh, 10 overs, five maidens, none for 23. Stream powered by Daffabet here at Northamptonshire. And we have had an email come in from Andy Dan. Uh, is that a name that... Uh, just just because I assume you know everybody in Northamptonshire. I, I don't I don't know okay. that name. Or if I do, I apologise. I don't recognise it. Wonderful to be able to watch Northants from the comfort of my seti. But listening to Phil's insight is an added bonus. Thank you, Andy Northants fan from where the river is called the Neen. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much, Andy. If you'd like to get in contact with us throughout the course of the day, you can via email stream at nccc.co.uk or via Twitter or X as it's now known. Um, at North Hans CCC as well. So any comments, questions, thoughts, feedback, opinions? Have I missed anything out on my list of things there? What else could you send? Money. Money. Yeah, money works. Um, you can do that via those means. Love. Best, yeah. best wishes. Yeah. Salutations. Rob Keogh. All of the above. From the Lynn Wilson end. Shorter from Rob Keogh, and that's nicely turned into the leg side by Max Holden. He's going to pick up a couple of runs, maybe even three. And they do come back for a third. So Nathan Fernandez will be on strike against Rob Keogh. I think for the first time this morning or this afternoon now, even as it's 12 minutes past 12. Yeah, Rob Keogh de deliberately bowling very slowly. And the problem with that is if you do get your length wrong, the batter's got so much time to judge that. It's nicely bowled, and that one's just offered to straighten, but it's happened so slowly that you can adjust off the pitch. Generally speaking, with spin, I'll come back to that because Rob's racing through his overs. Oh, that's nicely bowled, nicely played in terms of leaving. Yeah, generally speaking, with with spin, you know, it, people, people may be surprised, but professional batters can cope with the turning ball. What they, what they prefer less is the turning bouncing ball so it's bounce which creates more of the problem than, sure. than it is sideways movement and unfortunately with the softness of the ball and the time of year bounce isn't really on offer to the to the spinner a couple of runs added there for nathan fernandez brings up the 150 partnership between these two that is very flighted from rob keogh but the line all wrong and it's going to add another oh that's a harsh buy because that was very well i reckon that's almost a wide you know i think i think i'd be giving the umpire a little bit of a stare on that one i think but one run added to to the score nathan fernandez now on 90 on the sweep this time but as the fielder just stationed around the corner so are oh, we going to see double spin rob keogh gets away with it no we're not chris Tremaine's taking his sweater off Carry on. I haven't seen safe say warming up at all. He's currently doing what you might call the opposite of warming up, isn't he? Yeah, moving very slowly with his hands and his two hands. Away. Did pick up four wickets down at Hove last week with his left arm finger spin. Another one that highlights that option that Luke Proctor has available to him. One Rob Keogh, right arm, traditional orthodox off spin. Safe save, left arm finger spin. And a bit like when the Middlesex bowled Nathan Fernandez um, earlier on in the game, it's a good time for safe save to get some more red ball overs in, really. Chris Tremaine into Nathan Fernandez, who's on 90. Plays that one down the ground and back to Karen there, who's just stationed off the cut strip at silly mid on. How was how was uh, 
Chris Tremaine spirits wise when you spoke to him last night? Uh, seemed all right. Good. Yeah. Pretty, pretty boyish. Very, very Australian. Nice to talk to actually. <laughs> he, 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 yeah, he's a, he's a really interesting bloke to chat to. And uh-huh. not that I got the pleasure of speaking to him for too long. I didn't want to take up too much of his time. I've never spoken to the guy. I can't, I've never met him, never spoken to him. But um, I bumped into an old colleague of mine uh, recently who uh, who said, oh, I'm glad the county have got Chris Tremaine back. And I kind of you know, sort of raised an eyebrow sort of privately thinking, oh, you're not that close to Northampton. Mm. That's an interesting area. Cricket, he does like his cricket, this guy. But I, I said, oh, yeah, what, what, what makes you say that? He said, well, he, he drank in my pub, in, the, in my local pub <laughs> a couple of times. And um, last year he was staying locally, drank in the local pub and um, was was a good bloke and said hello. And we, yeah, we, we, I said, I like my cricket and blah, blah, blah. And he said, uh, that was that. And off he goes. He said, and then uh, I got a message on my phone a few weeks ago and uh, t- 10 days ago. And it said, uh, hello, mate, it's Chris, Chris Tremaine here. I'm back in, the, back in the Shire. Let's meet up for a beer at some point. And I thought, that's a good guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that speaks volumes, doesn't yeah, it? Really nice to hear that. Something else that I think you'll be impressed with as well. I think after his stint here last year, he was off after Scotland to play golf for for a while. So, oh, okay. Obviously, you as a oh, as did a, he go with Alex Hales? I think mm, quite possibly. Yeah, I don't I think, know. I think that's right. Yeah. Ended into the leg side. I was just mentioning, obviously, as a as an informed golfer like yourself, <laughs> I'm actually off tomorrow morning to uh, with a few friends to. To, to North Devon. She's standing me up on day four. I, I am, I yeah. I, that was pre-booked. 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 So, yeah. Um, and it's due to be 40 miles an hour winds down there. So, um, that could be the end of me. Dare I say it, that golf ball might do slightly more through the air than this cooker <laughs> fire in those 40 mile an hour winds. <laughs> yeah, but no doubt it will. It won't be up and down, that's for sure. Oh, Nathan Fernandez looks to his shape. Chris Tremaine up through the offside there and it's a little bit early on it, wasn't it? Inside edge, back to the Australian overseas. Four dot balls, five dot balls in this over so far. Is it the nervous 90s? Because he, he, there was more movement in that shot, wasn't there? That was... There was, but he played that shot brilliantly at the end of the last over, didn't he? he Almost did. a carbon copy he of did. it. He did, yeah. Maybe it had a bit more width, that one. I thought he just tried to create a little bit of room there. I'm clutching at straws. Yes, I am. It's turned into the leg side. Just going to be a single, I think. So he is going to keep the strike and one run off the final ball of Chris Tremaine's over spoils what would have been another potential maiden for the big Aussie. 14 overs, four maidens, none for 31. Rob Keogh is at the end of his mark already. Unfortunately, Lewis McManus isn't down the other end just yet. According to ESPN Crick Info, Nathan Fernandez's playing role is bowling all-rounder. I think that might change. I think it might change. Although I think he was a very handy yeah, yeah. left-arm spinner no, no, yesterday. I thought it was very no, impressive. No, no doubt. Mm. No doubt. Yeah. So I can see how that might have started. Yes. Totally. But he's very organised over the last couple of sessions here in Northampton. And he is going to be on strike. 91 off 201 balls. Justin Broad now. Short mid-wicket. Silly mid-wicket, in fact. Defended back down the ground to Rob Keogh. Chris Tremaine on the 45. We've got a sweeper out at deep square. Karen Nair's at mid-wicket. Rafi Weatherall's at mid-on. That's a drag down from Rob Keogh. And that goes straight to the man. I believe that's safe save out there doing the fielding. At deep squares, so that brings about a change in the field. We've got Captain Luke Proctor at mid-off. James Sales in the covers. Emilio Gay kind of hovering around the third slit area. And Ben Sanderson at backward point. Oh, oh that's, that's one nicely one bounce. bold, yeah. Does that count? Three pins? Well, I mean, if we're trying new cricket balls, why not try a few, few new yeah. laws as well? I've seen those claimed. You haven't. I've seen them play. I'd never do such a thing. Swept. Oh, and that's almost come off the back of the bat, I, I think. Have, if, 
Well, I think the, Max Holden. There's a pre-signal of of buys. I guess it's going to be. It is buys. I so, don't see how that ball gets there if that's buys. Wait, it, how does that get there? Well, unless it's turned a long way, but that would be un, unheard of. Yeah. Maybe off the inside boot of McManus's right foot, but peculiar. Quicker from Keogh and through to the wicketkeeper. I did see Luke Proctor just, just loosening up the, yeah. the shoulders slightly from yeah, me too. at mid-off. I think we're going to see the captain before lunch. We've got 40 minutes to go before the break. Flight to delivery and all. That's really well taken by McManus. It's a big shot for Fernandez, isn't it? It is. It is. Looking and, to go um, aerially over the offside. You do wonder. It's only 19. You do wonder whether the, the 90s are, are doing their thing here because he's played a couple of, not terrible shots by any means, but a couple of false shots. That has turned, actually. It looks too full, I think, yeah, to really turned. create any massive jeopardy. Well, so Tom Lungley is talking to the scorers, I think, on the uh, walkie-talkie. I'm not sure what that was all about. he got one left. Uh, I think over had been called. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, it has, in fact, one left. Glad somebody's watching. It's gone straight through to McManus. Clearly, the umpire's not giving the universal Sunday afternoon <laughs> yeah. signal of uh, yeah. just the two fingers up tapping on the shoulder. Yeah. Very thing, reliant yeah, some on things, your Something's happening a little mm. bit, isn't it? You yeah. Know, in terms of uh, looking for things to... Uh, Rob Keogh's bowled nicely this morning. I think he's varied his pace well. Uh, he has extracted a little bit of turn, um, albeit slowly. It's going to every, Everything that happens is going to be slowly. But he has got a little bit of turn off the middle of the wicket. There was a, a sort of a proddy for defensive shot in that over that very nearly caught, um, carried to the short leg. It wasn't a chance. And it, had it been caught, it would have been caught well on the cut strip. So that would have been a remarkable bit of fielding. But uh, it did carry for a bit. And then there was the the very flamboyant sort of off drive that um, turned past the outside edge. And we haven't been able to say that previously. So that might encourage a thought of, of turn from both ends. But before that happens... The captain is on from the David Capel end. Yeah, good move. Skiddy, skiddy bowler, misleadingly quicker, I think, than what we what we see through our through our screens on the live stream. He's bowled five overs, one maiden, none for eleven so far. Very, very quick shoulder, isn't it? For Luke Proctor. Yeah, he's um as I said yesterday, he's been sort of underutilised due to, um, at times, perhaps um, other bowlers being successful and then not getting the ball because of that, which is fair comment. Sometimes maybe a bit of reluctancy on the captain's part. And sometimes he has, well, he has struggled with a bit of injury, particularly side strains and I think an ankle injury at points as well. But yeah, he's a handy bowler. And that was a back of the hander, I think. It was. That's rolled along the floor. To Lewis McManus. I like that. Yeah, I, I like I like that. Why not? I just think at the stage Absolutely. We, we we've got to try something outside of the, the box. And if that is a back of the hand ball, if it is a field placement, whatever that might be, yeah. It's got to be worth looking at. Quick ball. Still no great bounce off there, was it? But that's exactly what you'd expect from the North Hans captain. I played a lot of club cricket with a with a guy who will be well known to uh, local cricket um, listeners. A guy called Richard Dalton. Who uh, two things to say about Richard Dalton? Well, three things. One, he's a great guy. Secondly, um, the most naturally skillful cricketer I've ever played with, and I've been lucky enough to play with a few who have played some Test cricket and so on in my time. Um, usually picked as a fielder in those teams. But um, we had none of them more naturally skillful or cricketer than Richard Dalton. But, uh, but the point I'm making is, as a captain, would not be afraid to do remarkable things. Things that you might never really think about. Fields that he would set to take advantage of limitations from a, from a club cricketer and so on. So, yes, it was, a, it was at a club cricket level. Yep. But, wow, you know, he, was a great, um, he was a great tactician. And as I say, not afraid to almost do the unthinkable. And that's the reason I mentioned that, and Richard Don, is is that's the sort of captaincy that's that's required right now. What you don't want to be doing is sitting down on the balcony after day four and thinking, you know what, 
we should have gone white ball skills. Do you know what? We should have had a ring field of catches, mm. all of them 15 yards from the back. Do you know what? We should have gone double spin a lot earlier. All those things that you might think about afterwards, it's about having the presence of mind and the courage to do them at the time. Cut away, shorter ball. Bit of width offered by Luke Proctor. That's nicely played by Nathan Fernandez, who moves to 96. Yeah, I don't like six ball boundaries. <laughs> it's not quite a soapbox issue, but um, it really does um, leave people flat, doesn't it? You know, join, join the dots up there. Mm. Uh, bowl, by all means, bowl a back of a length. Nothing ball to, to join the dots up. Leave Fernandez on 92 at the non-strikers end, thinking about it. Um, he's only 19. He will have an eye on the scoreboard, no doubt. Don't give him a cut ball at that stage. Yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a free hit, wasn't it, for the youngster? Rob Keogh on his way. Justin Broad still under the lid there. Yeah, there's no better time, is there, to to kind of do something a little bit out of the ordinary or to try something that might not have been tried before. So many runs on the board. Hard to score. Nicely rolled by Rob Keogh. And Max Holden just transfers his weight down, crease that time. Back to the bowler. Again, solid in defence. So, what would be your? What would, I know we've just had a bowling change with the captain himself bringing himself on. Is there a? Is there a funky, tactical? Word plan that you've you've come up with for this scenario? There's so little on offer that you've you've almost got to use your fielders as 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 decoys in a way. So I'd like to see some some funky fields. I'd like to see a lot of men, almost like a ring catching field, some something almost ridiculous. Because why not? Um, I'd like to see some. I'd like to see double spin uh, for for a while as well. Um, I'd like to see all the bowlers practicing the white ball skills for a while. Why not? Because yeah. something's got to happen in order to get a wicket. Turned into the leg side. And that's yeah, and that comes from a guy who is renowned for saying, bowl your best ball, hit the top of off. You know, that's that's red ball cricket, but this is not normal red ball cricket. Yeah. So um, by all means, challenge the top of off, but don't be afraid to bowl your variations. Don't be afraid to get fielders in very unusual positions. It's a bit of excitement, as I don't think that was far away from Justin Broad. Fernandez on 96. Sure, there'll be a little reminder from a couple of the North Hans fielders that he's as close as what he is. That's short from Keo, and that's pulled away. And that is going to be Nathan Fernandez's first first class 100 on debut for Middlesex. A hundred of 208 balls with 14 fours. Helmet comes off. A nice round of applause around the ground as well. Middlesex balcony out in force on their feet, applauding the young man. Yeah, as they as they as they should be, and a, and a second hug, as well from uh, from the more experienced uh, Max Holden, who uh, not that long ago would have been exactly where Nathan Fernandez is. So well played, young man. He has played beautifully. Um, he's done everything that's been required of him. Yes, it's been a nice time to to make your debut, but you've got to get them, and he has got them. And it's been a test of patience. It's been a test of of, of some other technique that you know that he might not have necessarily had to utilise as frequently for as long. Uh, concentration, decision-making, how to play the short ball on a slow pitch and, and so on. He's, he's answered all of the questions that have been asked. And uh, yeah, credit to him. It looks like, um, looks like Middlesex have, have, have got one there. And uh, it's, it's been a pleasure to watch. A young man on debut. It's always good to see young, young players coming through. He's come through the Middlesex ranks, I understand. So well done for the Middlesex coaching staff for getting him in. They would have had other options including, you know, bringing, it, bringing other batters in, more experience, but well done, good selection. And he has taken that opportunity. So, uh, yeah, great to see. Yeah, fantastic work. 64 overs done, 198 for one is the score. What's, it? What's going on here? Phil 
Yeah, so, um, yeah, he's bringing Slip very, very close. Um, I think I... Okay, so there is a conversation here, isn't there? If we there can, can we get it through the effects, Mike? So, yeah, umpire Rob White is, is, is getting involved, this, and I think he is... I think there's a suggestion that Emilio Gay can't go as close as he wants to go. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm making this up from... 70 odd meters away but mm. certainly rob white did intervene there when emilio gay initially went to take his position he started to be able to hear that conversation it just ended there didn't you with emilio gay shouting to luke proctor where do you want me yeah but there was definitely a, a fairly long conversation between say the umpire and emilio gay as to how i i think it, i think it, the question was how close can i be yeah i, I think, think that's right i think that's right short ball and makes max holden plays that well to James Sales. Yeah, so now Rob White's going to confer with uh, with Tom Lungley. Either Tom Lungley is asking what's going on, Rob, what, what's what's the issue, or Rob White is saying, this is what I'm doing here. Whatever's happened has resulted in Emilio Gay throwing the helmet back to Lewis McManus and going deeper. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting one. I and mean, all of that suggests to me that there is a limit on how close that slip fielder can get, which yeah. is news to me. The, the, the image that I've got in my mind of Trescothic yeah. is off a spinner. So I think yeah. that kind of becomes a little bit misleading for myself anyway. I don't uh, yeah. recall Trescothic under the lid off a, off one of the Somerset seamers down at down at Taunton. I'm sure he probably would have done or may have done, but that's say that image in my mind is off. Yeah. Is off one of the spinners. I've seen Joe Root under the lid on his knees to a to a seamer. I think mm. I might have made that up. I've yeah. seen him on his knees under the lid at slip. Um and, and the thing that's in my mind as we talk about slip is actually is actually, you know, if there is a limit, I mean and we make we're making an assumption here. Yeah. But on the assumption that's what the the conversation was about how close slip can get even with a helmet if there is a limit on how close slip can get to a scene that even with a helmet how can we have a short leg well how could the keeper go up to the stumps it doesn't make any sense to me no it was an interesting conversation unfortunately we we didn't quite get the the full the full <laughs> picture did we so we are kind of trying to fill in some gaps that that have been left by emilio gay and rob white for us somebody can tell us that that would be helpful it would be helpful or we're gonna to have to ask Emilio and Rob White just to speak up next time we might be able to get them through the through the effects Mike two runs added to the score that one's turned through the leg side and through those two fielders yeah so another conversation between the two umpires shot did bring the 200 up for Middlesex as well off 65 overs it sounds sorry it sounds I can't hear them it looks to me as though Rob White is in total command of the laws of the game there and mm. supplied them properly. And he's kind of, this is not good English, but he's catching Tom Lungley up on, uh, on what was, what's transpired there. That, that looked to be, from judging by the body language, it was, oh, okay, mate, yeah, I know, no, yeah, I see that. I think. Rob Keogh is going to continue from the Lynn Wilson end. I think he's bought really nicely there, 13 overs, five majors, naught for 34. But I think today he has bowled better than he bowled yesterday. He's varied his pace nicely. A couple have gone a bit leg sided, but otherwise he's been there or thereabouts. Oh, why have we not got a catcher there now? You know, we talked yesterday about would you have that fielder, and we said no. But actually, we also mm. said there is no reason not to today. But short leg has come out, and to. Um, Justin Broad has come out into a catch in very short extra cover. There's a slip. They're the only two close catchers. As the first, that was the second ball he over. The first ball he over was tickled away down to the man at 45, but it went exactly where leg slip had been previously. The question we don't know the answer to is would he have played that shot had leg slip been there? I've seen it done. 
A very floated delivery that time by Rob Keogh. So, yeah, you've got to use what's available to you. And, you know, flighting the ball extremely, as, as he has done, is, is available to him. And he's taken that opportunity. And he's done it again. Encouraging a drive. Very few balls have been driven off the off spinner in both innings, really. Because um, De Kerr's bought quite a few overs, predominantly from this end, I think. And he was very rarely driven. And we've seen very few drives to the off spinner. Yeah, I think De Kerr's bowled well, certainly in that second spell, bowled quite a lot quicker and quite a lot flatter, didn't he? Which would have made that yeah. drive ball quite difficult. And as you pointed out, fantastic fielder off his own bowling. If you're going to drive Rob Keogh at the moment, you're going to have to do all the work, all the running. Yeah, that's nicely bowled. I don't understand why we've lost short leg. Good over by Rob Keogh. I don't understand why I've lost short leg, Dan, because one of the half quarter chances, let's call it that, this morning was a was a was a cat well, it wasn't a catch but because it didn't reach him so mm. the ball almost carried to short leg only two overs ago but didn't carry to him but last night it did carry to short leg yeah and he didn't manage to hold on to it and now we don't have a short leg that's the sort of thing that on on the balcony on day four you're going to be thinking why on earth did i take short leg out yeah well middlesex still trail by 351 here just gone past 200 that over before off luke proctor 201 for one the score and it, it probably is my impatience more than anything else. But similar to the short leg and similar to the other fielding positions that we've that we've kind of spoken about, it's, it just feels like an opportunity just, just to leave them in there. Agreed. Well, yeah. It doesn't really matter if Northamptonshire, in, in my eyes anyway, from obviously an incredibly unprofessional viewpoint, um, if there was a, an expensive 20 minutes with the bat, so to speak, it's not actually going to affect the, the state of the game a great deal. That being said, although those chances that have, all those half chances that have been created have kind of fallen to those short catches, it's not exactly been an abundance of them. No. It could no, be no. 20 minutes of funky fields and nothing happens anyway. So, but similar to that whole Kookaburra Dukes argument and experiment. If you don't try it, you're never going to know. I t totally. No, I think your main point here is, if, if not now, then when? There's still 350 deficit for Middlesex to uh, to deal with. And, and and you can, with impunity, do that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm slightly surprised. Well, I'm, no, I'm surprised. There's the short leg. Another slower ball from, from Luke Proctor. Two out of the three balls this over so he's you know he, in that respect then so you've got a, the captain recognizing that i need to bowl unconventionally here but the fields have have been perhaps too orthodox or maybe not funky enough and certainly that short leg fielder to rob Keogh, who's now vanished is is interesting i mean it must be it must be difficult to to reinvent the wheel, so to speak. Um, Luke Proctor and North Ants would have played so much cricket yeah. and there'll be a blueprint on how to play county cricket. We know, you said, bowl your best ball. We know where the fields are going to be. To suddenly kind of rip that up on a on a Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon and go, wow, we're just going to do something completely different. Subconsciously I, I must be hard. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that's right. I think that's absolutely fair comment. And I, and, I, and I buy that. I think there will be um, ex-players in their 60s, 70s, 80s who will have played on uncovered pitches, who will have played a lot of three-day cricket when results had to be manufactured and funkiness was part of being a captain, who would, would actually have something to offer mm. to, uh, to the modern-day modern captain. But I think it's fair comment. Oh, that's out. Nathan Fernandez has fallen. We said, we've said a few times that the, the, the slower bouncer, the ball dying when it gets to the batter, is difficult to control. And Nathan Fernandez has got it for the first time, got in a real pickle. Didn't quite, I think he might have lost, lost sight of the ball almost. Didn't quite know where things were and how fast it was coming at him. And in the end, just periscoped it really off the toe end of the bat. And Lewis McManus took a very comfortable catch it's a sad end to a very good innings almost 
slightly comical in in that sense, but it is it has be, it has proven the short ball, the dying short ball, if I could call it that, that's dying by the time it gets to the batter has been difficult to control, and uh, and so it has proven and it's led to a, a wicket, the first one of that nature in the game, but it has caused problems throughout. But let's congratulate uh, Nathan Fernandez on debut, the 19-year-old, 103, a partnership of 107 with Max Holden. And uh, he will remember, hopefully, when he gets over the disappointment, he'll remember far more good things from that England than, than, than the end of it. And he's done his team a very good service. So well played, young man. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And not just, just another milestone, another record just to tick off in this game. People have had maiden first class hundreds, highest career bests. And yeah, a fantastic hundred. And dare I say, with his long career ahead of him, that might end up being the strangest way that he ends up getting out as well. But yeah, what a peculiar bit of cricket. The slower ball bouncer that never well, never really got anywhere, did it? And yeah. Lewis McManus did well just, just to keep watching that the whole way through and ended up being a pretty simple catch for the wicketkeeper. Spoke yeah, about you, you don't want to be dropping that one, but it was <laughs> it posed its own questions, mm. didn't it? Because it was coming so slowly. That, and that's what caused the dismissal was it was coming so slowly. And um I think to some degree, I know this sounds ridiculous, but to some degree, uh, Lewis McManus would have been a little nervous as the ball was in the air because it was it was probably spinning a wee bit as well yep. off the toe end of the bat. Um, yeah, I mean, you'd hope that your mum could catch that, but um, I've seen those dropped, actually. Yeah, I, I reckon my mum would probably drop that one as well. <laughs> but an unconventional delivery. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'm completely it. right. And. Yeah. As you said, it doesn't have to be kind of a full trifecta of, of oddness with white ball skills and field settings and bowling changes, but just contributions here and there could could just kind of upset the apple cart here for the middle second. New batter, though, is loose deploy. And... He got his big move from Derbyshire. In the winter, didn't he? Finished well inside the top 10 run scorers across both divisions mm -hmm. in the championship in 2023. So brilliant signing for Middlesex to entice him down south. Yeah, I've always seen him as a, as a, um, a very aggressive player. Um, fast hands, good bat speed, good hand-eye coordination. I haven't seen enough of him you know, to, to sort of really comment greatly about, about about his technical game might be tested here a wee bit i guess but um yeah there are all been I, I understand there are a number of counties interested in that signing so uh middlesex was was chosen i guess the, you know sometimes when we try and sign players the lure of london the mm. lure of playing at, at lords that must um that must be on players minds so there is no better place to play your cricket it's it yeah it's quite a carrot isn't it to dangle in front of a in front of a professional cricketer to play your home games at lords each week well there's one out there now max holden who um as i said before was a cambridge cambridgeshire boy and actually james kettleborough who came through the bedfordshire system as a, as a youngster um both were connected to us and connected with middlesex and um, there's no question here about poaching or any of that that's not what i'm saying at all they were both and it was all above board they both spent some time with their uh, respective um, sort of native counties. And they both spent some time down at Finchley in the winter and at Northampton in the winter, and that was absolutely fine. There came a time when it was sensible for everyone that they made a decision. And in both cases, they decided to um, to play their cricket for, for Middlesex as, uh, as academy cricketers. And uh, you can totally understand understand that the law, there's nothing wrong with Northampton. I'm very, you know, I'm very proud Northamptonian, I'm proud of the ground and the improvements that have been made. But, you know, it takes some beating to think about playing a career at, uh, at, at HQ, doesn't it? Walking out uh, your home game at Lords. So um, I can totally understand why those decisions were taken. Yeah, first look at Loose Deployer. I mentioned last year, 14 matches, 21 innings, 1,236 runs, high score of 238 not out, averaging 82 and a half, 400s and 450s. Well bowled, Luke Proctor. That has hurried deploy. Now, it was his first ball, um, so it wasn't relatively quicker than anything he's faced, but I think it did hurry him. And that's Luke Proctor has the ability mm. to do that. 
he really does. He hits people on the shin, particularly earlier in, early in the innings, because he is slippery. He's quicker than people think. And also the timing of his release, his front foot isn't fully grounded when the ball's out at good pace. So you, you get trapped on the crease. You've got to be awake. He must be quite a difficult bowler to actually start against. And particularly, yeah. I mean, Luce Deploy has been sat up there with his pads on for, for quite a while, isn't he? To come out to start against Luke Proctor. It's been quite a challenge. Yeah, you've got to get your motor going, haven't you? Get yourself going quickly. Those 1,236 runs last year came at a strike rate of 66 and a half as well. So, yeah. I think you could politely describe Luce Deploy as busy. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a fair comment. That's what, I, that's what I've seen when I've seen him. I think that point's probably proven by the three shots that we, or at least two of the three shots that we've seen from yeah. the three balls that he's faced so far. Yeah. So, yeah, so look, it looks it's early days here. Uh, it looks like Deploy is saying, well, this is the way I play, so I'm going to play this way, and, and, I'm, and I'm good enough to play this way almost no matter what, and I'm going to play that way. There's a lot to like about that mindset. From a North Ant's perspective, it's kind of, well, don't blink. You know, if he, if he bashes you a few times off the top of the bounce, don't worry about that. That's because that's our best chance of getting him out. Let's not go safe is the point I'm trying to make there. Just because someone's coming at you, let them come at you. Three catches now on the leg side in front of square. Proctor responds by bowling very straight. Exactly the right line. Nicely defended back down the ground. So, yeah, so we've got a, a short mid-wicket who's short in both senses of that word in uh, in Nair. We've got a very straight silly mid-on just in broad. And we've got a fielder sort of hanging around between them level with the stumps at the bowler's end. So he's kind of an unorthodox mid-on, very close mid-on. It's nicely defended up to mid-off. No run end of the over. So Luke Proctor is on the board with the ball. Nine overs, two maidens, one now for 21. An important breakthrough. Brings Northampton one wicket away from a, a first bowling point. You know, it's early, very obviously it's the second round of games, but you, know, you, you ignore bonus points at your peril. In, in this game has been my experience. They uh, they have to be taken when they're on offer. And North North Ants now bowled 69 overs, so 41 more overs available in which they can achieve hopefully more than one bowling point. The first one's given at three, and then five, seven, nine, four. No, that's not right, is it? The first one, <laughs> what have I said there? Three six nine, yeah. Three six nine, three bowling points available. Okay, so one spinner is off, Rob Keo, and he's being replaced by Safe Zayed. There are some foot marks. The darker colour you can see on your screen is is where the bowlers have followed through. So there's some some rough there for Safe Zayed to aim at. It won't be particularly dry, rough, but nonetheless it, it's rough. And safe save responds by bowling the first ball into the middle of the pitch. That was stiff. And it was turned away into the leg side. So this will be an interesting matchup now. Deploy, who's already, it's very early, it's got a run yet, but has already shown intent to, to strike the ball. That's the way he plays. Safe save yet to really bowl one ball, so he needs to get into his spell. And uh, we'll deploy almost take the fight to save save that would be his natural way of playing he thought about pulling that ball that was a drag down or thought about pulling it and then realized that if he tried to pull it he'd be through the shot too early so he corrected himself and pushed it up to mid off again just looks like he's shaping up for that leg side doesn't Does. he and absolutely yeah at the moment quite happy just to knock that back down to luke proctor at mid off Yeah, that's fuller from safe save there. But just in the body language, you can see that Deploy wants to put back to ball. Advances down the wicket, knocks it up to mid-on. 
a little bit on his heels. There was always going to be a run there, I think. But um, Rafi Weather a little bit on his heels. Yeah, he wasn't the quickest to react there, was he, Rafi? Loose deploy saw that Max Holden uh, equally wasn't exactly the quickest to react there either, was he? I think, yeah, the, you know, the, there's a bit of inexperience there in Rafi Weatherall. You've got a man on zero, get a bit tighter in that mm. position because he will want to get off, he will want to get off the, off the globe. And, um, he got in comfortably at the end, but this is, this is, you know, this will help, <laughs> this will help Northampton think where we've got someone who's coming in and, and wanting to play in his natural way. Uh, and his natural way is to put back to ball, to be aggressive. He does have a range of shots. I've, I've seen him briefly during uh, at some times over like when he was at Derbyshire. Yep. And um, certainly was a man that um, wanted to strike the cricket ball. That's what he's shown so far. Well, if Northamptonshire aren't lucky enough to remove him before the lunch break, well, I'll show you some highlights from Loose Deploy's uh, performance in the European Cricket Network. I don't know whether you're familiar with that tournament and competition uh, uh, only that i'd kind of catch up with some videos of italy mm. would that be because, yeah. because um, gareth berg is the italy head coach potentially potentially right. yeah so he so loose deploy owns a hungarian passport or has possession oh, okay. of a hungarian passport and his brother plays for the hungarian national team okay so through that link loose deploy did play in this european cricket league network and I'll, I'll show you some highlights and some stats and we'll maybe talk about ah, that okay post post break if of course he is still at the crease and north Hans haven't removed the middle sex you're teasing me there new boy well it's there's gonna, there's to, gonna be something to look at oh it's definitely something to look at does the word smash feature regularly <laughs> Nicely fielded, Rafi Weatherall. He was a little bit slow, as I mentioned, off the mark earlier, but very alert to the potential for two there. I think he's a good athlete deploy. Mm. Quick across the ground. Holden's very good between the wickets. And, and that's good to see Rafi Weatherall is on it. I'm certain he was one of, if not the highest run score in the first edition of the SA20. Okay. Loose deploy. Yeah. He's gone for big money in the 100 in the past, hasn't mm. he, as well? Yeah. Slower ball by Luke Proctor, beautifully played by Max Holden. You know, and sometimes with a slower ball, you see the batter falling over to the offside as they overbalance. They they get a good bat on it, but their momentum sort of takes them across to the offside. And Max Holden was absolutely stock still after he played that ball. It's good balance. The way that Luke Proctor's bowled here pre-lunch. I think that inspires the other seamers to do a similar similar skill set, a similar plan after lunch with the success that we that we have just seen. Yeah, I would hope so. I, I would hope so because he's been willing to try things, hasn't he? Which is what we've been asking for. So, yeah, I would hope so. I mentioned earlier, you, you said sort of what sort of things are you looking for? And I, mm. and I think I said I'd like to see all the seamers using their, their white ball variations, because why not? And um, certainly the captain has, has very much done that. He's bowled a couple of cutters, he's bowled a back of the hand, he's bowled full pace bounce, he's bowled a slower ball bouncer. He's, tried, he's bowled a couple of attempted Yorkers, so uh, he's been through his repertoire. Yeah. So it was a, a you know a reasonably uh, loose first over from safe save. Let's hope that he can tidy tidy that up i'd like to see the ball landing in the rough this is a good matchup for for the game let alone for north ants because deploy is going to attack and does so and again i had the feeling initially he'd like to hit that ball to the leg side but it stays on the wicket makes that shot impossible but fast hands good bat speed tried to flay it through the offside So is he so is he South African or is he Hungarian or is he dual passport or is he is he English quite a while? What is he? Oh there we go. That's bat and pad. Pushed very firmly at that ball. That was a bit jabby, I'd say, in defense. 
no short leg. That could easily have gone to short leg. It just went back down the pitch. So I believe, and ESPN Crick Info is normally my font of knowledge, and it, all it says here is born January 12, 1995. It doesn't give me a location, which is which is tough. Um, made, sorry, made no. his debut in South African domestic cricket. So that would lead me, lead me to believe that he is yeah, that's South my, African. Yeah, that was my understanding, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And then possesses a Hungarian passport as well, so was able to register as a non-overseas player for Derbyshire. So a maiden from safe save. It was uh, it's more interesting cricket though, wasn't it? Because we've got a guy who's really he's using his feet there. He's backed away to try and create space. He wants to hit the shorter ball away through the leg side. The lack of pace hasn't allowed him to do that. That's only going to build frustration. A man who wants to score, wants to foot back to ball. He's currently on two, and he will feel that maybe maybe missed out is too strong a, a term, but he will feel that he should have been able to score off some of those balls that he's faced. We don't have a short leg to save save to the new batter. I think that's a miss, if I'm honest. There was a bat pad there, and a nick onto the pad. It did go forward rather than sideways to where short leg would have been, but that's just a fluke, to be honest. Nicely bowled Rob Keogh, replacing the captain at the David Capel end, starts very nicely. I've got my I've got my wish for double spin, but it you is going to be the, the one before lunch, I think. Just some real tempters here for yeah. Max Holden, isn't it? it is. Would you like to add any more to 65 before lunch? That's right. Yeah, have a go. Yeah, from a Middlesex perspective, you'd hope that Max Holden is not going to throw it away now. But there will be plenty of people around the country who won't be able to resist the loopy offering and try and smack one down the ground. Have you put you, you're that man, are you? I, I would be well inside <laughs> that camp. Yeah, you certainly wouldn't be alone. Uh, people tend to think that professional cricketers don't make those poor decisions, but absolutely, let me tell you, they do. Mm. <laughs> I've seen a number of times, absolutely, they do. A little bit flatter from Rob Keogh. I've been pleased to see the, the way Rob Keogh is bowled because we were worried about his finger. Last night he was looking at it and a fellow spinner, Tom Brett, who's a good friend of Rob Keogh's, fed in that there was a an issue with his spinning finger. It looks to have been well looked after overnight mm. because he hasn't really shown any signs of it yet this morning. And as a result of that, he's bowled nicely. But this is the one to commentate on. This is the... And the over before before lunch as well. Deploy is not the sort of guy who's going to knock six back down the ground, is he? He's going to want to score. Oh, that one kept low. I wonder if that did hit the edge of one of those rough patches. It certainly misbehaved. It shot through a little bit. Deploy did well to get a, his back down on it. Yeah, you used the word busy, didn't you? Mm -hmm. It's a great. That's just a great word. He is like exactly that. It's a bit of a cliche now in cricket commentary, isn't it? It's oh, is it? I, I like. I still like it. It's a word that David Ripley used a lot during his. Let's be busy. Yeah. Busy. Let's be busy. Because it doesn't say let's be reckless. It doesn't say let's play big shots. It just says let's have some intent. Yeah, and the police certainly showing that. Almost looks as comfortable in attack as what he does in defence. Yeah, he? that's a very good. Uh, I think that's a really good observation, if not more so, actually. Two balls of the over remain. That's well bowled. That looks like that's turned a wee bit. Safe save, rushing through, trying to get create an opportunity for another over. Deploy <laughs> reads the script, slows things down a wee bit. Nicely bowled by safe save. So he's getting into his work. Rob White is thinking, do we have another one or do I fancy some spaghetti bolognese? 12.59 12, 12. according to my watch. So 
but I don't necessarily believe they are for me. Yes, we're going off. Tom Lungley took a slow walk in. The, the, the time is sort of evaluated once the standing umpire reaches his position. Mm. And uh, before he did that, the clock ticked over. And so that concludes the morning's play. It sees Middlesex advancing on to 206 for two. Not out men are uh, Max Holden on 65, Luce Deploy on two. But he's been very busy for that too. It's been a hard working two. Uh, and the one wicket to fall this morning was debutant um, Nathan Fernandez for 103. A slower ball bounce by Luke Proctor got Nathan Fernandez in a bit of a pickle. He ended up periscoping off the end of his bat to uh, a very grateful McManus, who took the catch. Absolutely. Well, we'll take a little break as the players go off for their lunch. See you in about 40 minutes and we'll see how the afternoon session transpires.
happy and um a quiche roasted Ooh. vegetable quiche get me that's quite yeah, that's pretty, quite fancy that <laughs> quite fancy it is for me yeah it is particularly when no one's watching you know the, <laughs> so now i went for the the slightly healthy track and it was very very nice from the mm. coffee van the, i don't know the name of the business i've put my put my um coffee cup in for recycling now but um yeah very nice if anyone's on comes to the ground the coffee van over in the uh in the corner there next to the members pavilion is very nice maybe we need to maybe we need to invest in a pair of binoculars for the for the commentary box i think that well firstly i think that feels very crickety it does and secondly it would certainly help us find what the name of the coffee van is as well but situated over by the floodlight near the spencer lounge i'm sure plenty of people will know exactly what, what we're talking about but good coffee good quiches uh, to be, i have to say some of those cakes are pretty stunning as well but yeah I haven't quite slipped down that route just yet looks like phil we're going to get our first look with the ball anyway james sales in this game lovely i look forward to that i literally literally have just received a message from his dad hmm. and uh, he was because I, I messaged him, did you manage to watch it and he, he got into the ground when he when james was on 99 so, oh brilliant yeah i think uh, he would have a lump in his throat and a tear in his eye there is james sales and Max Holden defends the ball back to Chris Tremaine, I think it is now, that's taken up residency in that short mid-on fielding position. I think we said yesterday he probably hasn't found himself at, at short cover that often, I suspect. It might be a one-of-one -one moment here <laughs> for Chris Tremaine at, at silly mid-on. Yeah, it's interesting that we've got Chris Tremaine at silly mid-on and, and safe Zayeb. But um, deep backward point, you might have thought that might be a, re a reversal of that. But Safe Zabe is getting getting loose, which is uh, encouraging. I thought he bowled, a, you know, a, he bowled a couple of overs um, before lunch. The first one of which was um, not memorable. But he did in his second over get his line right, and he, he, he did extract sharper turn than we'd seen so far to the to the incoming uh, batter deploy who looked as though he wanted to try and get on top of the bowling. So that'll be an interesting contest. Absolutely. Slight delay there as a few of the season ticket holders come back from their lunch. Nice and full from James Sales. Yeah, fresh off his maiden first class 100 James Sales and fantastic innings it was. Took a little while just to settle in, didn't he, with, with Emilio. Emilio took the almost the, the father figure role in that partnership, which as we learned earlier, Emilio's just turned 24, which sounds a little bit silly to say out loud. Short ball from Sales, and that's just bounced in front of McManus and possibly even turned off the outfield on past the wicketkeeper. Rafi Weatherall tidies up, fortunately avoids those two maroon helmets that are situated on the outfield just behind Lewis McManus. That's a couple of runs added to the score. 26 extras. They're racking up a bit, aren't they? It's looked good for 26 as well, isn't it, Sundries? <laughs> Played well. Turned off the hip into that area that's been pretty well policed throughout the course of the game so far from both sides. Single one more added. And loose deploy now. Two off 25. Going to face his first ball of the afternoon session. Max Holden's now on 66. Very busy, hasn't he, for, for two off 25. I think in another world that could quite easily be 25 off 25 without any great Absolutely. change. Absolutely right. Yeah, he has been busy. He's been looking to take the game. And there we go. That is flashed away harder. I don't know how close that was to Emilio Gay at Gully, but Emilio certainly didn't move, and that's raced away for four. 213 for two. I, I would argue there's not been a ball hit harder than that in the game. Incredible, superb bat speed. Wow. He's flashed that, hasn't he, through he has. the offside. I did see Rory Kleinvelt on my way back from lunch, and I did mention to him, I said, if you fancy popping up and having a chat for... 20 30 minutes or something be very welcome and he did give me a bit of a nod and said yes so i'm hopeful i'm hopeful that we'll be able to bring you a conversation with 
Northampton Shears' new bowling coach, Rory Kleinfeld. That's well, that would be great. Afternoon. He's a man worth listening to. Well, I'll just sit back in the middle and let you two just have the conversation. and Just, just chat rubbish for a while. That'd be lovely. So that's good. It is going to be safe, safe to continue. Um, it wasn't just a couple of hours before lunch. It was part of a spell. And he did, as I say, he did extract a bit of turn, and it turned more sharply than anything else. There have been some balls that have turned. Rob Keogh got a few to, to hold and turn, but they turned slowly. And the, but uh, Safe Save did get a couple to turn a little bit more sharply. Oh, it's a slog sweep. That's gone high into the leg side and is going to beat the fielder down in that area. It's going to be a four. I don't know whether that was a one bounce, but umpire just wanted confirmation from Justin Broad, who I think is... Unfortunately for him, fielding down on the boundary with shin pads on, which I'm sure is only going to do one thing, and that's going to slow him down. But well, that's an aggressive start, isn't it? Weird? Isn't it? First ball. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a big shot. It is a shot he plays particularly well, so it's definitely in his repertoire. It's not outside of that. But first ball after lunch. Now he's gone the other way with a reverse sweep. Got an under edge. He's gone to first slip. Well watched by Emilio Gay. So 75 overs done. So they've got 110 to play with with regards to batting points, bonus points. I wonder whether that's in their mind post-lunch. I would say it will be in their mind, yeah, for, for, for sure. If, if um, either of these two were going to be the, the natural aggressor, I would have thought it would be deploy. But Max Holden, not afraid to, to back himself. He, he is hitting with the spin and with the wind and to the shorter boundary, so a lot in his favour. But first ball um, mm. from the spinner after lunch is, is is clearly a sign of intent. Let's see if Deploy is in the same vein. Nothing to work with there. Flatter ball from Safe Save. He kept one, or one kept a little bit lower, didn't it? Just maybe that penultimate over before lunch. As Deploy turns that one into the leg side for a single. Gets down the other end. Yeah, Max Holden, I can see, he's just looked across to that uh, sort of mid-wicket fielder now. He was at square leg. He's now mid-wicket. And does he want to go further in front of square? Yes, he does. Shuffling along. Oh, it's squared. Holden up and it's a leading edge that falls safe. No fielder close. No fielder under the lid. No field nearby, and it lands safely on the square, just in front of James Sales, I think it was, who's just taken his hat off. He's going to continue or bowl his second over from the David Capel end. So I'm wondering, yeah, so Northampton sort of as the morning progressed and then early, early in the afternoon session as we are now, have slowly um, dispensed with sort of the, the catching fielders that were their first thing and um although there are a couple in for, for james sales there were no no close catches other than slip no no close catches in front of the wicket for safe save and, and yeah you kind of wonder why that is um there are more than one ways of skinning a cat maybe by drying up but perhaps north Ants think that's their best chance of getting wicket is by restricting runs and causing frustration we know that deploy likes to score wants to score kind of has to score really um but Max Holden has then taken the aggressor role. So it, maybe uh, Max has taken a bit of pressure off off the, the, the new batter, the new batter for, for the innings and the new batter for, for his Middlesex career. This will be a nice... This, I'm going to enjoy this this uh, this matchup with Deploy because he is he, undoubtedly he's the busiest batter we've seen in the game so far. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. He's come out and shown... Some serious intent so far, and I mean Max Holden's shown plenty of intent post lunch as well, which has yeah. been which has been nice to see. It certainly feels like it's a it's a little bit of a change, doesn't it, in in application from Middlesex after the break? Yeah, and so early in the session, you know, the first ball from the spinner to slog sweeper. That's you know, it's remarkable, really, in the context of how the game has panned out so far. Nice. <laughs> Aiming for that that hip, wasn't he there, James Sales? And the has just dropped it into the leg side for a single. Didn't look that comfortable playing that shot, did he? It was a bit awkward, wasn't it? I think James Sales here has just added another extra little bit of pace into this North Ants bowling attack that we that we haven't seen yet. I think he's clocking in a little bit quicker than Rafi Weatherall. I'm sure that'll probably wind him up, no doubt, that he's only a little bit quicker. But 
maybe similar-ish kind of paces, to be fair. But on a pitch that's a little bit variable with the ball coming through, staying low, holding up, then I'm sure that extra one or two mile an hour and he's going to be useful for the for the bowler to create a bit of indecision for the batters. Short ball. Again, just bouncing in front of McManus, who takes a long stare at that kookaburra as it's on the grass in front of him. Would, would you like to do the honours and do the, the Richie Benno score update? Two, 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 two. There we no, go. no, no, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Cannot do that, that man justice, that is for sure. Erase that. Erase. Sorry, sorry, Richie. Erase that. Short ball again and Q ended almost into the offside. James Sales just rushed Max Holden on that one. Good bump. Good. I was, going, I, was, I was in between a bouncer and a bumper there. Bumper? Yeah, I was halfway between and I stopped myself. It was a good bouncer though. It was a good bounce. It was good in terms of height. It was good in terms of line. They're the two things you've got to get right and he got them right. And it, yeah, the, the, the softness of the ball means that shot is difficult to, to control. And um, it has caused, the short ball has caused difficulties, but not in the traditional sense, not in terms of being hurried up, but in the opposite sense, really, having too much time and finding it hard to keep the ball down. And that was, the, in fact, what led to the demise of Nathan Fernandez, who had played the short ball really, really well. But the one that he got out to was <clears throat> certainly on the way down when it reached him and he couldn't really control it. It's got in a bit of a pickle. But this is the matchup that we're all waiting for. Zay of the left. Slow left armour to deploy. It's a big stride forward, isn't it? It really is, yeah. And a firm push. I think it'd be fair to say a firm push at the ball. We should have. We should. I'm going to say it. We should have a short leg in. Because he, because deploy is pushing hard at the ball. Mm. And even though it's a soft ball, I think the way he's pushing it, if he does nick one, it will carry somewhere. Oh, and he has nicked one off the outside edge this time. And it beat the right hand of Emilio Gay. He's given up for any interest in chasing it. It's raced away very, very fine for it. It went quickly. I think it might have carried past his right hand. I'll have something to say about his position as well, which I'll come back to. So it's quite a wide ball. It was nicked. Well, did it carry? Did it go across his foot? <laughs> and a hard chance. It's hard to tell, isn't it, based it's on that replay? Quickly. It was very low to him by the time it did yeah. get there, whether yeah. it did or didn't. And he is he is very close as well. Yes. So it would have been an absolutely remarkable catch. Just uh, Now look at this. He's changed his position. So look at his right foot there. Yeah. He's on the return crease. And the ball that was edged, his right foot was about a foot outside the return crease. Yeah, he's certainly come a little bit narrower, hasn't he? So that's what, what I said earlier. That's, I've got something to say about his position. Mm -hmm. You've got to have your right foot on the return, Chris, which he now has. He was too wide earlier. Whether that would have helped him to catch that ball, I, you know, who knows? Yeah. It's a full toss from Zabe and a top edge down towards Ben Sanderson on the sweep. So it's going to be one more added to the score. I like I like this from Safe Save. Certainly asking a few questions, isn't he, with with the batters, getting a little bit of turn. Yeah. And I think James Sales is complimenting him quite well. Clearly providing plenty of pace. That shorter ball, back of a length tactic here and quite happy to go even shorter than that at a decent pace as well. It just seems to be working together in partnership. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that, as a captain, that's what you want. You want you want to try and get the right partnerships going together, don't you? We talk about batting partnerships, but bowling is also a partnership. You know, back your mate up. James Sales has started quite brightly. He's bowled nicely so far. He's gone for eight, but he's bowled pretty well. Oh, that's a nice cricket shot. It's just lent on that one through the covers. Justin Broad's going to do the fielding. You mentioned about short leg. Uh, that extra helmet is out on the field and Broad does have a, the shin pads on, so I think it can be implemented quite quickly if required or when required or when deemed required. Chris Tremaine's just had his wardrobe brought out to him and might be onto his second or third jumper now for the Australian James Sales, <laughs> quite keen to bowl that one whilst uh, the jumper was firmly over Chris Tremaine's head and eyes. Short ball, pulled by Max Holden. Pulled well, actually, but straight to save, save. 
I used to find that frustrating as a bowler. You know, you're walking back to your mark, you're thinking about the previous ball, you're thinking about where you're going to bowl next. At least you should be thinking about what you're going to bowl next. You take the ball, you give it a polish, and you turn, and turning is part of your, your run up, really. It's getting you into rhythm. And then some clown is putting a jumper on. He's lost his run up there a little bit. Touch, but well bowled. That's interesting. There was definitely a little soft shoe shuffle, a few strides short of the crease, and um, and yeah, decided to continue and, and bowl the ball. He bowled a pretty good ball. My advice to youngsters who lose a run up is stop, go back and start again. He did the opposite and did it, and, and succeeded actually. So good on him. Shorter on the offside this time, and. Holden drops it, runs it out to deep backward point. Adds another one. He's just moved on to 76 now. Quickly added those runs to the board post lunch. Emilio Gay, at, well, that, that is a, a gully position, isn't it? And we've got Chris Tremaine catching at a short mid wicket. Covers just off the edge of the square. James Sales seems pretty happy just to test out the middle of the pitch at the moment. I'm, I'm just trying to wonder, you know, I'm wondering why we have dispensed. They've kind of just dribbled away. I haven't, I haven't seen a kind of a, a clarity of, okay, we were going this way and we're now going this way. It's kind of like the, the close fielders have kind of dribbled away one at a time mm. and now we don't have any. And I don't know quite why that is. Slower ball. Well bowled, well executed. It was very good. Top ball to finish the over. 232 for two. Holden on 76. Deploy on 15. Safe save to continue. So the question is going to be about the new ball, isn't it? Because it's due at the end of this over. And I did hear over the lunch break a view expressed from <coughs> certain parts of the Northamptonshire dressing room. Mm that uh, it's not worth taking the new ball. Interesting. It will be interesting to see, yeah. That was only one view, by the way. Yeah. It was only one, yeah. an isolated view. I won't name that. That wouldn't be fair. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether that view is shared by the captain. Nicely timed. Down to Rafi Weatherall at middle and I suppose as that ball just gets older and older and older gonna get softer gonna keep lower it's not exactly like it's been easy to score against as it regardless of the age of the kookaburra anyway so that's slightly irrelevant but does it deviate and does it misbehave a little bit more the older and the softer that it continues to get does it get to a point where it gets so old it it becomes unusable though never really see that in professional cricket because it never really let to go that far but no. would a hundred over old kookaburra still be in one piece 120 i guess um if it gets so soft you'd think it would go out of shape wouldn't you yeah when it gets that soft you, you would imagine but then would you be obliged then to take the new one or would you have to ask for another 120 over old kookaburra? Oh, that's a great question and it's a question I was actually thinking, not, not that specific question, um, but I was thinking about um, you've got to get a stock of used balls. So they will have been working hard in the Nets pre-season to, to get a batch of new balls and get them to various conditions. And someone's yep. got to manage all that process. And uh, it can cause issues, actually. The umpires um, should, don't always, should inspect the spare balls. So you mm. provide the umpires with a box of new balls, and then the bowling team can choose for, from, from that. And they're the new balls for the match. And then you provide them a box of spare balls of various ages. That's the way That's the way the cookie crumbles. So that's yep. what goes on. And um, as I say, the umpires should <coughs> inspect the batch of um, spare balls to make Speaking sure that... Which, this could be really well-timed. Yes. Uh, to make sure that they are of the right age and condition and so on. And they generally just say, oh, you got some, where are the spares? They're on your table. Thanks. That's basically how it oh, goes. Okay. Yep. Apart from one umpire, uh, Jerry Lloyds, um, who would go through every ball to make sure it was the right year of manufacture. 
and really enjoyed bringing the box back to rips with three or four balls in saying, these are the wrong year. <laughs> 2017, it's 2019, David. He was meticulous. He did it with a smile on his face. A very funny man, very good umpire, a good cricket character. But it can be, it's not straightforward getting a, the right, getting, you know, 16 balls, 12 balls, 16 balls available at the right, yeah. uh, at the right age. Nicely pushed. Nicely placed, doesn't it? Just split those two fielders. Rob Keogh, I thought, um, I think, and I might be forgiven in saying, but I think he might have just twinged something at the end of that morning session. I think there was a moment when he was on his knees and giving himself a little bit of a twist and a stretch. Okay. You know, you mentioned the, the back uh, pain that Diddy suffers from. So I wonder whether, whether he might have, I think it was, if it was off a bit of fielding, I think. Yeah, he has had a bad back for a very long time. And has sort of regular checkups and treatments and so on. So I know he does, as we've said before, he does an elaborate warm-up yeah. routine. It's not for the cameras or for Instagram <laughs> or whatever that's called. It, it is really for his own well-being. I'm guessing we haven't yet taken the new ball. Or I, have we? Or I have we? Don't believe so. I know Rob Keogh was looking very closely at the ball there, as though, <laughs> as though to say there's something wrong with it. Or perhaps he was just inspecting the new one, but I didn't see. No new ball. Well done. Who, who where's that come James from? James, maybe. Okay. The font of knowledge. Thanks, James. Oh, it's there's that fielding area, isn't it? And yeah. Max Holden's just pushed it through the onside. Lives to fight another day as it evades, I think, Chris Tremaine in there at short mid wicket. It was a bit of a, I think it was a back of the hander or a, it was certainly a slower ball. It looked to drop on the, on Holden. He was very early on the shot, unable to keep it down. And yeah, I mean, that fielder has been closer at points there, to be honest. Short ball. Picked up by safe save. How long do you have to keep going with this old ball then to make it worth the the experiment with the old ball? If that does that make any sense? Like, is yeah, there any point yeah, yeah. to bowling with it for five overs and then just taking a new one, or do you have to stick with it for 10, 15, 20? Short, very short, in fact. And I'm not quite sure how that's got to Karen there, but well, yeah, conventionally, the re you know, there, are, there might be a number of reasons why you would persevere with with the old ball conventionally um, and one of those reasons would be that you're concerned that if you do take the new ball it's just going to go faster off the bat and actually it's more difficult to score off the existing ball let's call it the old ball so whether that's whether that's a factor we do want to bowl some spin um, it is turning a wee bit obviously you can once the 80 overs is up you can take the second new ball at any point and so you don't need to take it at 80 overs. Yeah, it's like the captain, vice captain, and you know, overseas just having a little bit of a conversation. I have been sent, I've been sent a photo, Phil, from Alex Berry, courtesy of the photographer here, Kyle Andrews, um, with, a, with a picture of said Kookaburra. Okay. Appreciate it. It won't really be able to get on the stream, so that won't help, but I'll show you in just a second. Oh, it's a big edge that time, and it's somehow gone past McManus and Karen Nair. And we're going to add another couple of runs to the board, but as it stands, it feels like quite a good idea here to, to stick with this old ball. Well, I mean, what I do see is Rob Kerr warming up, so that makes perfect sense. Oh, crikey. That was my response when I saw it. Crikey. If that is... If that is the match ball, that is that's like a dog ball, isn't it? That was my first thought, as if it's been attacked by one of the players' golden retrievers. Nice <laughs> reverse sweep there from the Middlesex batter, loose deploy, and he's going to move into the twenties at three. Yeah, but so, so um, in terms of the decision not to take the new ball, um, it would have been in the balance, I think, and they've convinced themselves that they're not going to, and therefore Rob Keogh is going to come on, so it's double spin, so that. That answers that question. 
Yeah, James Sowers has, has looked good, hasn't he, in that it spell has, from yeah. David Capeland? But I think with the with the interest here that Safe Zabe is creating from the Lynn Wilson Centre, and I think it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it, to to go double spin with this now eighty two over old Kookaburra. muscled down the ground and not picked up cleanly by Rafi Weatherall. So another single added to the score. You know, I, the one thing you will be looking at as a captain into, you've got a slow left armour and an off spinner. You've got a strong breeze coming across the ground uh, in the direction of the shorter boundary. So one of the things you will want to look at very closely in terms of which end those two guys operate from is the rough. Um, the two left-handers in, so, that, so we're looking at rough outside the uh, left-handers off stump. Where is it greater? Because one factor will be, I want my off spinner to bowl. So he's being hit to the longer boundary. Uh, therefore, from this end and the off spinner bowling at the, uh, sorry, the left arm bowling at the other end. But um, the rough will really probably dictate more than anything else. So hopefully those things have been factored into, into the equation as Rob Keogh comes back on at the uh, at the David Capel end. Mm. He bowled a lot last year from the Lynn Wilson Centre end. I'm, I hope that you'll verify my point there. Yeah, and yeah. I, I suspect that probably is his favoured end with yeah. the breeze that traditionally blows across the ground from right to left or from west to east as we look at the ground. But I do remember, and I can't exactly remember the battle that it was for Kent in that Kookaburra game, but he did serve up an absolute beauty of a delivery from the David Capeland. Might have been to Jack Leaning. Um, to went through the gate. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was Jack a Leaning. beauty yeah. from yeah. the David Capeland. And, yeah. and I, I wondered after, I wonder why he doesn't bowl a little bit more from the David Capeland. But obviously with the, the, the rough and the breeze, it makes a lot of sense, doesn't it, from the Lynn Wilson Centre. My memory of his nine for against Glamorgan, career best, mm. in tandem with Graham White, who got wickets in that game as well, was that I think the majority of those wickets were taken from the David Capeland. Somebody with a better memory than mine might correct me on that. That's my memory. Nice start. Right on the money. Well fielded. Good save. So good energy. Good energy at backward point. I think I do think, you know, I'm not being critical. I'm just commentating. It's not a criticism particularly. There's a few chances, half chances that North Ants haven't taken that could have put a different, com slightly different complexion on things. There was this very sharp chance to the keeper early in Fernandez innings. There was the drop catch by um, Justin Broad at short leg. Yep. There was the you know, quarter of a chance just, just earlier um, to Emilio Gate for a slip. A couple of balls have carried into areas where we had had fielders and uh, they've drifted away. You know, if, 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 then it could be 244-5. Yep. And we wouldn't say they've been unlucky, you know? Yeah. So I'm not saying they have been lucky, but it's just um, the nature of the game, the way it's unfolded. Down the ground that time. A bit of muscle from Max Holden. He moves to 84. Straight down the ground. Lovely shot. So he certainly come out with a little bit more intent than what he had before the lunch break. I think, um, I think the thought that I had overnight was you can certainly take wickets with this kookaburra ball and you can be successful with it but i think your your margin of imperfection reverse sweep this time and that beats safe save dive at backward point but your margin of imperfection becomes so small in mm -hmm. the fact that you can't really take a wicket with a half chance if that makes sense that that's kind of how i how i've kind of pictured it to my old i was convinced myself last night with it Every slight opportunity that might have gone to hand if that fielder had been there, you kind of have to be there every single time, don't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragged down from Keo that time, he just checks his spikes and then loosens the footholds and just allows Middlesex to bring up their 250 with that single into the leg side. And, 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 and in terms of, um, you know, we're playing for points here. Um, had we taken those chances, then we would be looking currently at five, maybe six wickets mm -hmm. and, and therefore maybe two bowling bonus points. At the moment, we have zero bowling bonus points. So are those chances important? Absolutely, they're important. Yeah. You know, absolutely hugely important. But they're not, they're not chances as in, 
oh, it's it's been dropped at second slip, for example. It's it's very much a case of, well, if that fielder that had been there five overs ago had still been there, yeah, or yeah. it's 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 that. And I think that's where I convince myself that it's it's that kind of pure perfection for whatever might be 80, 90 overs in mm-hmm. order to to be successful with this with this kookaburra ball in this game at this time of year. And that again is whipped through the leg side, but aerially, it's a despairing dive at mid-wicket. I think that is Chris Tremaine. Possibly wasn't far away from it. Just holding up in the pitch ever so slightly more after the break. Uh, You know, and again... um... These things are important. I don't want my six foot four Australian fast bowler in that dynamic position at short mid wicket. I've got other fielders that I would rather have there. Reverse sweep and well picked up by Karen Nair, who's he read occup- that well. He really did. It occupied the cord in there. It looks like Karen Nair and Emilio Gay have just, just switched positions for a bit. Emilio fancies a a graze in the outfield at big backward point for a while. And again, the reverse sweep, and there is Emilio Gay doing the fielding. At least deploy moves to 25. Yeah, you've got to be on it, haven't you, as a captain? You have, you've got to get everything right. All of it. it puts a real, a real onus on getting the right field in the right, in the right place at the right time. As should always be the case, obviously. That it's just like... that chances come along so few and far between with the cooker ball that when you miss one, you might not get another one for another session or two. Looks like that's turned quite sharp. Turned and bounced, and bounced as yeah. well. Yeah. So, so really looking like he's trying to drive this into the surface. So he's just floated that one up and ended up being a, a low full toss for the Middlesex batter who is going to not pick up four. Brilliant bit of fielding down in front of us by Luke Proctor to save one run. It's a long old chase down into that corner at the moment. The other thing I like about it, it was a great chase, wasn't by the captain, really well fielded. The other thing that was great there was James Sales' game awareness. Was he he ran in support of his captain because oftentimes that fielder will slide, knock the ball back inside the rope, and then have to kind of gather himself, work out which way's up, and stand up and get mm. the ball back in. And in anticipation of that, James Sales made a yeah hundred yard run. 100-yard sprint, and in the end, it wasn't required. But I love that. I love that intent. That's the standard I like to see. Rob Keogh to continue from David Capel. And one slip, Karen there in at first. And other than that, you'd say it's pretty spread and pretty orthodox. That shot in the previous over did bring up the 50 partnership as well between Max Holden and Luce Deploy, which seems to have come from absolutely nowhere. Nicely flighted by Rob Keogh and treated with the respect it deserved by Holden. He's just defended that back to the bowler. Nicely played, opens the face and runs it out to deep point. Obsessed with the old ball. Are we looking for bold and LBWs here? Yeah, I kind of think I, I'm, I, hmm. I think Stumpin is 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 in the game um, as as both these players have shown a willingness to to strike the ball. And I think caught mid on mid or they're not quite orthodox. They so deepish mid on deepish mid off is is an option because the ball is is so soft and that photograph tells us <laughs> tells us that if uh, if we were in any doubt that actually you really do have to absolutely middle it to get it. If you're going to go aerial, you have to middle the ball. Whereas with a harder ball, you probably don't have to get all of it and you're going to meet, beat those fielders. But with this ball, you have to middle it. So I think that's a, they're, they're my opportunities, I think. Maxi Holden has got a leading edge on a couple that have sat in the pitch a wee bit and gripped. It's like Rob Keogh and Luce Deploy just coming together there with the tackle similar that would have been at six field last night, I think. Franklin's Garden, but Sorry. yes, I'll, get, I'll take the point. I'll take it back. Oh, yeah, it's the football ground, isn't it? it is. Yeah, that would have been a red card, I think. Oh, well, I was close. I tried. Yeah, well, you, I mean, literally, you were close because it's literally just down the road. Yeah. So 
Yeah, the, I mean, I'm being pedantic there, but <laughs> it's an opportunity to, you know, to let you know. Ah, oh, thank you. A great win for the Northampton Saints last night at home to the Bulls. Puts them in now the, the semi-final away at Leinster, which will be tough. So is that, I think I said yesterday, I'm not, not the biggest rugby fan of all time, hence my faux pas with the, the name of the ground. But is that equivalent of a, of a European Cup yeah. domestic competition, is it? Or a World Domestic Cup? Mm, okay, yeah. So it is called the European Cup, but South Af some South African teams are in it. Right. Reverse sweep, timed well. Emilio Gay is going to do the work and it's only going to be a single. I think I can't answer I can't answer the follow-up to that. Fair enough. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's the nature of it. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's important stuff. Yeah. And good stuff. Very good stuff. Chris Tremaine still in there at short mid wicket. Defended to the Australian seamer. Oh, that's nicely bowled. Well bowled, safe save. Got over the top of that ball, which encourages the ball to drop with a bit of topspin. And it did drop and it did bounce and turn. Very nicely bowled. And it has a tendency to kind of undercut the ball a little bit. Bowl a little bit flat at times. And that one sat on the pitch and turned a wee bit as well. It's bowled really nicely. Five overs, one maiden, none for 24 in this spell. 12 overs. All together, four maidens, none for 39. It's quicker, wasn't it? And just dropped it down. The ball didn't really bounce, to be fair. No. It wasn't far away from just rolling straight along the floor there. You know, that it's difficult sometimes to play those shots because you can be slightly off balance and you can end up just chipping the ball to, to mid-wicket there. You've got to really hold your shape and keep your balance, which he did well. Uses his feet nicely and Chris Tremaine just puts enough doubt in the mind of the Middlesex batters not to take the single. End of the over, dot ball to finish. 258 for two. So I'm wondering, you know, are we, as Max Holden will be wondering, are we going to see another Centurion? Max Holden on strike now as Rob Keogh will continue from the David Capel end. Max Holden on 90, Lewis deployed 27. And yeah, these two, as you said, um, when the 50 partnership was achieved, that's going to crept up on us a wee bit, hasn't it? Yeah, the run rate certainly increased, hasn't it? Is that the, is that the, the, the park band going on? I can just about hear through the effects mic as well. I can hear brass band. Mm. It is Sunday. Abington Park has a bandstand. The wind is not... Uh, so Abington Park bandstand, I think, would be pretty much over the Spencer Pavilion from, right, from okay. where we sit. so But not very far. It's, it's pretty uh, close On to... On the other uh, side of the road. Yeah, that's right. Quite a long conversation here, isn't there, between overs. I'm quite sure what the plan is. The umpire Rob White maybe just taking a wander in and asking Luke Proctor and Lewis McManus just to hurry up. Felt like an age, didn't it, between, it did. between those overs? <laughs> I like the way Rob White has... Um, has tried to move the game forward and he's mm. been clear. Yeah, he's, he's operated as the senior umpire of the, of the pair. I've enjoyed his interventions. He was very quick to talk to Middlesex about <clears throat> deliberately throwing the ball into, into the rough when they could have otherwise kept it up on shorter throws. That's more appropriate. He, was, he got stuck in quickly on that. Learned very nicely. He's a very mm. amenable guy. It's not demonstrative. It's not all about him. But he, yeah, that's his job. He's, sometimes umpires don't get involved in things like that when you have, well, come on, you know, we know what the directive is. Yeah. Kind of do what you need to do. And he has done that and done it very nicely. So good on him. Ah, that answers the question I was about to ask. Where's Wendell gone? Yes, I can hear him. I can't see him. He is uh, He's back over on our left. Just by those cinch hoardings. I got him. Interestingly, he's bought his kit as well. He's walking around the ground with his wheelie bag. That's brilliant. Do 
He's getting loose. He's actually getting his warming up. He's getting loose. I'm desperately trying to hear what, what he's saying. Yeah, good luck. I think the gist of it is, well, bold Rob Keogh, why am I not on at the other end? <laughs> I've got variety. Oh, that was wide. Trist. Max Holden on 91 threw his hands at it. Thought I might be able to pick up four cheaply there. It did, it did bounce and turn a wee bit. Another day that's feathered through. We're getting excited because not many balls have passed the bat. He's chased that, isn't it? It's almost as if uh, Wendell's just just started to maybe just just talk the Middlesex batter into a shot there, isn't he? I'm sure. I'm. I can't help but feel that as you can experience with our live stream commentary here, that that wouldn't be distracting in the, in the middle. I think he has got up people's noses mm. in the past. Yeah, I think, I think that has happened. And I can't specifically tell you what the incident was, but I think he has. And I think I've, I've witnessed it, you know, from the, from the balcony in my coaching. Day. And, and I think Johnny Bairstow might be one of those people really? who he's, he's kind of rankled. Yeah. And uh, what you don't want to do is give, give any encouragement to Wendell. <laughs> any reaction, any shake of the head, any acknowledgement that you're hearing. Oh yeah, okay. Be because that will only fuel mm. flames. He's got a fairly short fuse, hasn't he? The the England wicketkeeper. He does. I expect he may well have doused those flames with various flammable substances <laughs> during that during that interaction. I'm quite curious the fact that he has come in with his kit bag though. Sooner or later, I think we'll see him shadow batting over on that side. Save, save to continue. Well, perhaps he's, um, it's too early for club cricket, isn't it? I was thinking maybe he's, he's got a, an afternoon game of cricket on somewhere or maybe he's had an outdoor net somewhere, but there won't be many outdoor nets available at, in, in club grounds because it's been so wet everywhere. It's possible. Yeah, I suppose we've had three days of, of really nice weather here in Northampton, haven't we? And, and a nice breeze as well. So those artificial surfaces might have dried out a touch. Reverse sweep and nicely played. Just going to be two, though, as Emilio Gay swoops around from deep backward point. Deploy adds another couple of runs to his tally. And you look up and he's on 30. And actually, it hasn't panned, Lewis deploy, Lewis innings to date hasn't panned out the way that I thought it would. He came in with a lot of intent. That's a poor delivery, a flat fall toss, and it's helped around the corner with a, a backward, sorry, reverse sweep paddle by deploy. He ha yeah, the innings hasn't quite unfolded the way I thought it would. I thought we would see m bigger shots, more, more of them, and he's kind of played fairly... Um, orthodoxy, really. Very full that time from safe save, almost Yorker length, and Deploy digs it out back to the Northamptonshire bowler. Five balls gone in this over. I think safe's been more effective when he's bowled a little bit slower. When he's got quicker, he's got fuller. Reverse swept again, missed this time. End of the over. Good dot ball to finish. 88 overs gone now. And 264 for two is the score. Ben Sanderson doing some limbering up at the far end. Rob Keogh to continue for now. I think I've just seen Rafi just roll the shoulders over as well in front of us. So 264 for two. Yeah, Rafi, I caught up with... Um, Luke Sharples, who coaches in the in the player pathway here at North Ants and does a fantastic job in in doing so, and uh, quizzed him a little bit about about Rafi. So I think I kept saying Buckinghamshire, and that that, 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 lo and behold, that is incredibly accurate. He he did uh, he was put put forward by Buckinghamshire Cricket, um, the the managing director of Buckinghamshire Cricket um, at that point. Um, formerly worked here in the player in the player pathway and uh, so the relationship is very good there and that's helpful so that would have been the recommendation and he came into the academy and then quickly rookie contract and here he is a little bit of width on offer knocked away with comfortable ease for another single 
which brings Max Holden on to strike on 92. As I said, 15 is in the first game of the season, currently on 92. He'll be absolutely desperate to convert that to three figures. He's taken on the captain at mid-off. Quick single, got home comfortably. It's a good run. That's been a common theme, actually. They've, they've been quite happy to take on Luke Proctor, haven't they? Yeah, they have. And actually, he's 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 thrown the stumps down twice, hasn't he? So mm. um, you better make sure you're in. He was comfortably in. It's good, good overs under the belt for the two spinners, and they're both bowled quite nicely. A little bit full again. Slower, slower delivery from Rob Keogh. Half driven, half pushed out to backward point. Justin Broad will have covered some ground by the end of this game. Certainly will. He's operating on the currently on the deep cover boundary, but he, he's also out there from the other end, which is then on the leg side boundary. And he has covered, he's fielded a lot of balls. <laughs> Another sharpish single taken. So long as the call was quick and the response was immediate, it was never going to be a problem. That's the important thing on quick singles and, it, and both those tests were met. So the single was achieved without problem. Max Holden retains the strike. He'll be happy with that on 94. I think Justin Broad will be uh, possibly pondering the question to himself as to why he is wearing those shin pads at the moment. I think for the half an hour that we've had post lunch, he's been Stationed well out on the boundary rope, isn't he? Not uh, really required. Absolutely, yeah. That's um, and and I think it's a fair question, not only in terms of why I've got these shin pads on, is why am I not at short leg for the for the spinners? Mm. <clears throat> we only have one close catcher, uh, which has been the case for a while, which is slip. There's been a couple of balls edged, close to slip. George Scrimshaw has come onto the field as a very short-term replacement. I think someone wants a comfort break. It's Chris Tremaine, isn't it? He's certainly going into That's right. Chris Tremaine's postcode on the outfield here. wonder whether that is a case of Chris Tremaine getting himself ready for, for the new ball. Can't be a million miles away now, I wouldn't have thought. It's... Yeah, I would agree. Exciting, wasn't it, for for a while for the spinners? Oh, Max Holden got himself in a horrible pickle there. It looked like he was setting off to come down the wicket and knock it into the leg side. And I don't know, maybe the ball drifted or maybe got his studs caught, but he nearly fell over. That would have been a calamitous end. Normal service resumed and a very straight bat. When you think about the, the wickets that, that have fallen wouldn't be that big of a surprise if there was a calamitous end to it. To no, an innings, that's really. right. Yeah. Ah, oh, well fielded. Well done, Rafi Weatherall at mid on. So when you go through, obviously Justin Broad was, was trapped, wasn't he? LBW by Ryan Higgins in the second over of the, the game. Emilio Gay. <laughs> Rob Keogh likes it. Nobody else. No. Uh, Emilio Gay essentially ran himself out for 261. Yeah. Uh, Luke Proctor looked like he was trying to go down the ground and got a toe inside half of the bat and got caught by Tom Helm. Karen Nair, inside edge. Rob Keogh wasn't best pleased with his LBW decision. That's a good run. Save, save, caught in the deep. Stoneman, absolute peach of the delivery from yeah. Rafi Weatherall. Yeah. And then obviously Nathan Fernandez, the one wicket that we've seen today was the slow ball bumper that just never yeah. really got there. So it So two got out wickets, would you I, say? Stoneman and, um, and Broad. Broad, yeah. Yeah, I would say so. Two I, got outs. Karen yeah. there would probably be there or thereabouts, I suspect. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I think, yeah, I think Chris Tremaine has gone off the field in order to pick the second new ball, which he's just shown to the umpire. The umpire's shown to the scorers. 
the umpire throws to Ben Sanderson and albeit 10 overs later than it was available quite right to have a look at spin for a little bit longer the new ball is taken Emilio Gay just taking those helmets off now as George Grimshaw stays on the field for a short while good to see him on the field and in whites the new signing from Derbyshire has made his way just slightly down the Midlands hasn't he for pastures new in Northampton he's an exciting cricketer I think everybody at Northampton would be pretty keen to see him with with ball in hand whether that's red or white two slips in not much else going for the for the catchers right now but fingers crossed they eh, feel fingers crossed exactly oh that's nice isn't it more of that please ben lewis mcmanus will be the happiest man to see <laughs> to see that he doesn't have to bend down to catch one but although it was a, a comfortable leave it's nice to see ben tennyson again starting pretty much straight on the straight on the money What have we got here? We've got a deep backward point, two catches, extra cover, mid off, mid on, mid wicket, two men on the leg side boundary. It's too easy, that single. That's been a thing in, that's come into the game over um, fairly recent years, I guess, is, is leaving point open. A lot of teams do that. I just think it's so slow now that the ball is going to go there quite often rather than sort of going back down the wicket towards mid off extra cover. It's just going to sit and then run squarer. And um, whilst that fielder on the point boundary is there for a, you know, as a, as a boundary limiter, I think it's too easy to rotate. Yeah, I was just checking. I, my, not, my, my thought was that Scrimshaw started his career at Worcestershire, which he did. They've turned out a few good fast bowlers down there over uh, in, in a very short period of time, haven't they, Worcestershire? And very few of them are still at Worcestershire. I was just about to say, unfortunately for Worcestershire, they lost a couple of them over the winter, didn't they? Both both went to Knox, to not Pennington and Tom. Yeah. Scrimshaw had gone earlier up to... Uh, Dar to Derbyshire and then obviously on to Northamptonshire. I think Pat Brown has gone to Derbyshire. He has, yeah. As well. So, I mean, is that five, four or five there? At least four. So. Yeah. Sure. I should, I should be able to count to four, you'd hope, but no, I probably can't. But that's a lot of young fast bowlers, as I said earlier. They're, out, they're a rarity. Oh, hello. What a beautiful delivery. Well, you're supposed to nick that, Max. Have you not read the script? When Ben Sanderson bowls one of those, you're supposed to nick it and walk off shaking your head. I'm not supposed to miss it. So Ben Sanderson round the wicket with the brand new Cookaburra ball. Yeah, and that's bounced and left him. And he does sort of twitch. He twitches mm. at that one. Oh, just fractionally full of that catches the edge. Good to see, though. In, yeah, interesting, interesting signs. I'd like to see that backed up with with another couple that do a similar or behave in a similar way. I'm sure Tremaine will be excited to get this new one in his hands. And then I think, well, from my perspective here, look and see what Rafi Weatherall can do with it. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, as I said earlier, I, I caught up with uh, Luke Sharples, who um, will have done some work with, with Rafi in his short term in short time with the with the academy before he moved up to the professional ranks and he was telling me that uh, he's a very good athlete good fielder good attitude just, you know, just good, good young man and we've seen certainly the physical side of that already um stock delivery we've seen him take the ball away from the left handers he's bought exclusively at left handers um because all four of the middle six matches yeah. have been are or have been left-handed um and he has taken the ball away from the left-hander but he also apparently stock ball is away from the right-hander swings it late apparently so that's a that's a good attribute to have he can obviously go both ways at decent pace yeah how long have we got to wait until a middle sector right-hander comes to the crease um next next yeah yeah i think last year that 
Middlesex top order really struggled here. I remember Stoneman, Robson, Peter Milan being dismissed pretty cheaply here. And a lot of those runs this time out last year were scored by Brian Higgins in the middle. Yeah, he's a man in form, isn't he? So um, as and when one of these two is prized out, the next man in and comes off a double hundred in his, in his last outing. It's a long way down there for George Scrimshaw, isn't it? It is. It does incredibly well to get down and stop that one. Getting huge applause from his teammates. And talking about people who don't find themselves in certain positions very often, George Scrimshaw, your extra cover will be a rarity, I suspect. I guess Luke Proctor's got a little bit of a headache with the fact that Rob Keogh has got that finger injury, so therefore can't necessarily be in the firing line that he would be normally. And the positives of all the bowling options that he's got also may end up not necessarily being a, a negative option, but gives you a few fielders that you might need to put in places that you wouldn't normally put them. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah fair comment. Nice, very aggressive, uh, positive, rather than aggressive, positive running between the wickets from the two Middlesex batters. There was probably always three there, but they, were, they set off with that intent the whole time. And James Sales is absolutely rapid. He will have initially thought, I can keep that to two. But such was the intent of the running that it was always going to be three. And I like to see that. Those things add up. Look after Mother Cricket and she will look after you. Tremaine round the wicket. Very comfortably defended. Top of off ball. Very comfortably defended, as you might expect from man on 95. Absolutely. But it doesn't look like a brand new ball in that sense, does it? Because that was very, very, very comfortable. I've got a question for you. Excellent. I think I think it's quite a good one. But I will say it out loud and then you can decide whether it's any good. And I'll, <laughs> I'll deliver it after this Chris Tremaine ball. It's loosely connected to the red round thing that's been used over these first two rounds, loosely connected. Okay. However, it, it's it's a slightly more logistical and, and personnel-related question. Chris Tremaine's come over for Northamptonshire. Visa issues, that which you spoke about yesterday, because he hasn't been recognised as a test cricketer yet by Australia, that he can't qualify for a visa longer than a month. Two of these games in this month are going to be with this Kookaburra ball. Mm -hmm. And I think... Without bringing the scorecard up, did he take one wicket down at Hove? Or was yeah, he one I think, wicket? I think so. How is it? It must be difficult for a county to to plan for that. Would it have been for an Australian overseas of someone with his his skill and, and calibre? Could there have been an argument to have bring, brought him over for rounds three, four, and five, or at a different point in the season with the Dukes? rather than with the, with the Kookaburra? Good question. So I'm going to say that's a good question. Thanks. <laughs> well, that's it. That's all I'm going to say about it. Because I think in an ideal world, I'd know my answer. Okay, yeah. Well, let this, let, I'm, I'm happy to work off the back of that. What do you think? Well, in an ideal world, and with the benefit of hindsight, which is a terrible thing, and I don't, I don't, like, don't like hindsight, but with the benefit of it, you'd say that another month in the calendar would have been a more successful month to have brought Chris Tremaine over for Northamptonshire. Not to say that he's bowled poorly. I think he's done a brilliant job with the with the ball and with the, the, the facilities that has been given. But logistically, you could potentially have used that month slightly differently. Yeah. That's an argument, isn't it? And it's a valid argument. I think... I think look at it sometimes i like to look at things the other way and then see where you get to so let's take the opposite of that yep which is um you you don't sign him for the kookaburra games where he plays all of his cricket um the wickets because and and the weather isn't as it's been so the wickets are soft because of the weather I think the ground staff have done a very good job in, in around the country and getting wickets ready as good as as good as they have uh, as good as they've been actually 
and no no criticism of ground stuff at all. That is 100 for Max Holden as he punches that ball off the back foot to the vacant point boundary. That fielder had come in to stop the single. Short and wide from Ben Sanderson. That's a rarity. Nicely played off the back foot by Max Holden. And uh, well done, young man. Yeah, very popular, as I said, I've said a couple of times, very popular during his time uh, with North Ants on loan a few years back now. And um, good to see him returning to form in the Middlesex side last year. And he started the season very strongly, 50 in the first game at, uh, at Lords, And now he's backed that up with 100 here at, uh, at Northampton. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of Max Holden's. He's a good guy. And he's a very good player, good young player. And, um, yeah, congratulations on, on that. And, and now, Max, enough. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's get Ryan Higgins in and out. That'll be great. But well played, Max Holden. Yeah, it's been another, another good innings, isn't it, here at Northampton over the course of these three days? well deserving of that hundred so yeah so on, on that question of, of chris chris tremaine so to take the opposite view is you don't sign him for so the wickets are harder because the you know these this is now what if what if the wickets had been hard, harder um no one could really have imagined the the wet weather we've had it's kind of unprecedented so the wickets are a bit harder wickets are, are, are um, getting people out is not as difficult as it's been with the with a Kookaburra ball, um, and you don't sign the guy, you, you sign him later to bowl with a ball that he's not used to bowling with, and he doesn't bowl very well, you then look absolute muppets. Mm. If you've had the opportunity to sign him to bowl with the ball that he's grown up with and played all his career with, and has just been the best bowler in Australia with, I'm not going to sign him for that, I'm going to sign him for this other ball. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. What, you know, um, I think, as you said, you weren't back in two horses at all. I'm not going to accuse you of that. I don't understand what you were saying, the benefit of hindsight and so on. But um, I think it's probably the right decision to go this way. Because the ball is so important in the game, if you've got a guy who is, and which he obviously is, rightly can can be called an expert with the with the Kookaburra ball, why would you not sign him to bowl with that ball? Yeah. Um, now, we know that that hasn't, yet worked out doesn't mean it was a bad decision at the time it means it hasn't worked out that, is that a, is that a decent response yeah I, I think it's i think it's a perfect response I don't, I don't necessarily think there's a there's a right or wrong answer yeah, to it to be honest it's... yeah yeah Ooh, half an appeal i think it's it might be a question from a man that's watched three days of kookaburra cricket phil i think <laughs> oh, that's a good, it's a good question and um i guess though you know the, the other thing is um i don't know this by the way and i really genuinely don't know um when um when jack white's injury uh cropped up when it was d diagnosed when the club was aware he might you know might be struggling for a couple of games or so i, I don't know any of that so i'm not privy to to, to any of that but did we need an extra seamer on the staff absolutely mm, yeah oh 100 percent agree with that point oh that's a different sort of release there from ben sanderson he was slightly interested in that ball for quite a long time i think deploy played across the front pad a wee bit he's he's an interesting guy the way he shapes up deploy because initially he looks very bottom hand Mm. but then gets real fast bat speed as well, which is those two things don't always go, excuse the pun, hand in hand. Oftentimes you'll see a, a strong bottom hand grip and it's kind of like punchy, but he flays the bat as though it's as though the bottom hand is loose and the toe speed of the bat, which is the important part of the bat to be moving quickly, yeah. moves very quickly. So it's, it's, a, it's a very individual style that he's got. Yeah, so I mentioned before lunch, didn't I? And I think, I think it's been long enough that i can bring up this hungary versus turkey oh yes ecc t10 God, i forgot about that was from that today? october <laughs> it was actually yeah only about half an hour ago um from october a uh, player of the match loose deploy in this in this particular game so sorry it was hungary against who turkey are you making that up no no oh, there's, there's actual highlights on the internet um His best, there was 163 not out against Turkey in a T10. Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, the 
strike rate through the 14 matches that he has played in the European Cricket Network, T10. His strike rate is 253. And there are, if anybody's interested, seven and a half minute long highlights on YouTube of that innings. That's astonishing. You can imagine turning up for Turkey, couldn't you? And do you know much about this uh, this Hungarian side? I got this this lad called Deploy. I think uh, I think he's all right. Oh my goodness. Wow, he is flailing the ball to all corners. Where is it? Where do you know where the game's played? I think they're out in Spain. Oh, oh I think yeah, they're yeah, all out in Spain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, oh dear, that's a knee-high full toss from a. I don't know what sort of bowler that is. To be honest with you, he's the guy's bowling at about 35 miles an hour, but the keeper <laughs> four paces back. So I don't think it's the highest standard of cricket, but you still got to hit him, and boy, is he hitting them. The ball is hitting the bat. It's a nice to hear a new ball hit the bat, isn't it? Because it's a proper cricket sound rather than a... <clears throat> it's more of a yeah. crack off the bat. That's good to hear. And yes, that is the extent of excitement. <laughs> it's the sound of the ball on the bat that's getting uh, getting mentioned. But yeah, I think Deploy... Um, I don't know what he's doing playing in that cricket. Enjoying himself is, as, one, is one thing. As I say, his brother his brother plays for the Hungarian national side. So I think he was I think he was quoted afterwards because as you could imagine, with cricket being cricket, has some of those comments to to contend with afterwards and going, well, what are you doing playing this? The, the yeah. So on and so forth. And and he said, like, I don't really get the opportunity to play cricket with my brother. It's quite nice. I'm sure the 165 not out of 40 odd balls was probably quite enjoyable as well. But yeah, yeah, I'm sure to take the field with your brother in an opportunity that you maybe don't normally get is probably is quite a nice thing to do. Well, at least he got some runs. He's, he couldn't be accused of getting a duck against Turkey <laughs> or getting stuffed by Turkey <laughs> or any other wild fowl related. <laughs> jokes it wouldn't have been a pheasant experience had he done so <laughs> no i like that one i'm warming to your thought chris tremaine is trying his socks off here with the second new ball it's now into its fourth over of life he is running in from the lynn wilson end and he is bashing away at that top of off length as hard as he can And he's being met with a very, very straight bat from Max Holden. Yeah, the sound of exertion coming through that effects mic on every delivery from Chris Tremaine. And if anyone wonders if bowling fast is hard, <laughs> you might want to send Chris Tremaine a message after the game and get his, get his thoughts. But he's doing it uncomplainingly. He's doing it very professionally and wholeheartedly as you would expect him to do. But in the history of overseas players in the in the English domestic game, it's not always been the case. There's been a few daisy signings. As That's in some, a great nickname. That. Some days he does, some days he doesn't. But um, Chris Tremaine is certainly not one of those signings. He is a wholehearted, fully committed man and a very skillful bowler. Absolutely. And that story that you told before lunch with the the chap in the pub, I think, just highlights how good of a bloke he is as well. Yeah. It's nice that because um, yeah, I was fully expecting that story to not end well for some mm. reason. I thought, oh, someone's going to tell me a bad story. I don't want to hear it. Oh, no, it's a good story. Yeah. That, was, that was a nice surprise. Oftentimes, people are willing to share the bad news, aren't they, more than the good news. It was just, this bloke's a good bloke. Uh, it's nice to, to hear that. Yeah, well, I think... Like from my experience, having the privilege of being able to make content with a few of the lads here and, and others around the country, 
Wow. Fair enough. Then. Okay, so this was more in keeping with the way I thought um, Duploy might play. It's taken a while. He's shasted down the wicket and uh, picked up Ben Sanderson over mid-off for six. I think, um, you know, maybe maybe there was a point that I was throwing out there was that they weren't going that way earlier because the ball was so soft it made hitting over the top difficult. I think he got most of that, to be honest. But with the older ball, that's probably not going anywhere near that distance. Yeah, I think he got plenty of it. And he can trust the fact that that's not going to deviate a huge amount through the air or off the pitch as well. The other thing, just quietly, that six has helped massively. They've got 11 runs away from a, from another potential batting point. Yeah. See, they've got they've got plenty of overs. They've got 15 overs left in order to get as many as they possibly can. If we see more of that, it's not inconceivable to think that 350 might not be possible. I in, think they'll be thinking 350. Yeah. In, um, in these next 15 overs. So. Absolutely. That's nicely turned off his hip. Not an easy shot to play that for a guy with a strong bottom hand grip, but he, he managed it very well. These things fascinate me. How is he how is he able to swing the bat as fast as he does with such a strong bottom hand grip? That's a that was a rhetorical question. Mm. I think you took it that way. I did. Well, no, I'm mostly because I didn't have an answer for you either. I think it probably goes back to that that, that other uh, thing that you were talking about yesterday and the day before. Slower ball from Sanderson nearly induced a false shot. You can see there that by the time Holden had finished that shot, he was on the edge of the wicket. He'd gone across to the offside. Kind of got stuffed with the slower ball. So a very small, very minor moral victory for the bowler. Yeah, as you said a couple of times, it's a, it's a skill game, isn't it? as opposed to a technique game it is. and yeah a fast hand speed with a strong bottom hand grip is is a skill it is indeed you're not going to be able to, well it's unlikely you'll coach it richard levy whose game i know far better than, than lewis deploy um hit the ball incredibly hard had a strong bottom hand grip as um as most people will know but he had a, such a short hitting area you know, he, he would start accelerating the bat a, about five inches behind the ball and finish five inches the other side of the ball, and the ball would disappear absolutely miles. So I kind of got that. But deploy his toe speed mm. is, is enormously quick, and the, he kind of um, delivers the bat in an arc a bit like Brian Lara in terms of the range that the bat moves through. So maybe it looks strong because it's at the bottom and it's maybe a bit closed and maybe it's looser than actually it might appear to be. And I mean this, I'd love to have a chat with him about it, yeah. where it's come from, what coaches have said to him, what it, limitations does it give him, What? why has he not changed it, what benefits does it give him and so on. By that time, he's probably lost interest. We've got Chris Tremaine banging the ball in. And running down to third man off the back foot is deploy. I think he's going to pick up four for that, and he does. That's a quick bumper from Tremaine. And loose deploy, he brings up 50 with that shot, has had all the time in the world to play that wherever he wanted to. He has indeed. That was a lot of energy and a lot of effort that's gone through the crease line there with Chris Tremaine and just almost sat up for deploy. Yeah. He's guided it perfectly and brought up another milestone in this game. Another 50 for a Middlesex batter. 50 off 76. <coughs> Excuse me. And he's another boundary, far less convincingly that time, as he tried to run that ball behind square on the offside. It did go behind square, but a lot finer than he was intending and ended up as a thick edge. There are no fielders pretty much behind square. Uh, the, the man out on the boundary at point is very square. Got no chance of cutting that off as it goes through about fifth slip line. Raced away for the four, the new ball racing away across the outfield. It's all drying out. So back to back boundaries. I was just wondering when Deploy turned up to play for Hungary 
against Turkey mm. and saw the quality of the bowling, whether he thought it was Christmas. Yeah, I mean, 163 not out of about 40 balls. Do you know, for a, for a cricket player, that sounds like about the best holiday to Spain that you could possibly have, you know? Mm. Fancy a, Possibly. Fancy a, fancy a trip out to Spain for the weekend. Oh, oh, and by the way, you will, you'll you finish 163 not out of 40 balls as well. And you go, oh, I've got a feeling that most cricketers going on a holiday to Spain would think the best trip is not taking your cricket kit <laughs> rather than playing a T10 against Turkey, to, to be honest with you. But he's done it. He's strapped them on. And he can only really lose in that situation, can't he? Yeah, of course. And he didn't. He succeeded. So good on him. Oh, well fielded, well fielded, well fielded by Rafi Weatherall. I thought for a second that was Rob Keogh who'd got himself into the ring. but uh, And that's full credit to Rafi Weatherall because he moved really quickly across the ground, dived, got enough of a hand on it to prevent the run. Really good. And it was the intent with which he attacked the ball which caused the batters to decline the run. Really well fielded. I think the way the, well, where the fielders have been position throughout the day has been been quite interesting as well phil and again this is another question that i have no insight in i don't really know the answer to either but bowlers have workloads don't they they do i suspect fielders probably don't but the actual personnel in various different positions for northamptonshire seems to have been a bit of an ever-revolving door throughout the course of this game with the exception of uh, proctor and sanderson at mid off mid on Everybody feels like they've had a little bit of a go in almost every position going here. But Justin Broad's coming off the boundary now and at cover. Karen oh. Nair's had a stint in the slip cordon and he's now back out at mid-wicket. Emilio Gay's been out at deep backward point and he's now back in the cordon. And Save Save, who's been in on the square, is now boundary riding again. And I know Rob's obviously got that finger injury, which I think probably explains as to why he's patrolling that boundary. And James Sales, I would guess, is carrying something as we've only seen him for such a short spell. Yeah, four overs, wasn't it? Yeah. And he's patrolled the other boundary as well. So, but the rest of it just feels like it's a bit of a bit of a bit of bit, been a bit of a revolving yeah. door, really. Yeah, it has. I just saw um, the captain, Luke Proctor, put his arm around. Chris Tremaine, as, as Chris Tremaine was pulling his jumper on, and I think he was saying something like, mate, that's a fantastic effort. Good on you. Have you got one more? <laughs> and I'm not sure what the response was, but we might see a change pretty soon at the Lynn Wilson end. Ben Sanderson does what Ben Sanderson does. The ball's a lovely top of the off ball, and it's nicely defended yet again by Max Holden. I'll put the word only in inverted commas, but it, it's only been a three-over spell from Tremaine and Sanderson. Mm -hmm. You'd like to think there might be another one, but that's not to say Chris Tremaine hasn't put everything and more into I, these. I three think overs. he went flat out yeah. for some of that. It was like a give me three fast ones, and then you try and get another one out of them. That's what a captain would generally do. That's what I would generally do. Mm. Basically, lie to your bowler. <laughs> I think it's only three. Mate, you're bowling fantastic here. I'm sniffing. <laughs> I'm sniffing a wicket. You don't want to leave without a wicket. Take him with you. What do you mean you've no interest in bowling for the rest of the game? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Why are you not making eye contact with me? Why are you suddenly interested in your shoes all of a sudden? I felt someone was knocking at the door then, Dan. That's why I, knocked, I, looked, yeah. I looked around. I thought, yeah. what have we got a visitor? Oh, that's beautifully timed off the back foot by Max Holden. Well fielded. Combination fielding effort there by Chris Tremaine, who actually fielded the ball. But the run was put into question from a great dive by Justin Broad, who wishes he hadn't now done so because <laughs> he's landed, I think, awkwardly. I hope he's okay. I don't think his shin pads helped him there. But anyway, between the two of them, they prevented a run, so it's a good effort. That could be amongst the worst appeals I've ever seen from Ben Sanderson. <laughs> he just thought, I'm just going to make a noise. Yeah, you never know. It's hit the pad. I'm just going to make a noise. You never know at this stage. I'm sure for a lot of them in the field now, it's starting to feel like a very, very, 
very long day, isn't it? Yeah. One wicket we've seen today. Obviously, only two in the innings completely, but just the one wicket. And they certainly bowled their hearts out so far during the day and not had, well, that stating the obvious, not much reward. No. I've got a stat for you. Yes, please. Shall we? Sign me up. We'll see this one from Sanderson. Nicely tucked away into the leg side. We've said that a few times, but from deploy out to the mid-wicket boundary. So the stat is as follows. It's a, it's a rogue stat, really. but And this is not, let me just caveat this. This is not a stat that is intended in any way as critical of the Middlesex bowling attack, because I think it is a very fine bowling attack. And um, let me say that absolutely <laughs> clearly. I think it's a very fine bowling attack. And in some ways, I'm glad that it is because it helps me make the point. The last ball of the over, Sunson bangs it in. Max Holden tries to turn it around the corner, does so, but off the top edge. They scamper through for a second run because the ball goes very fine. That's the end of the over. It brings the 300 up for Middlesex. In fact, it brings the 302 up because I missed the 300. And the second batting bonus point for Middlesex with still 13 overs left in order to turn that into a further batting point should they reach 350 in that time. So this is the stat. Okay, so first game of the season, Middlesex were at home to Glamorgan. Um, they bowled 138 overs in that innings. And the Seamers took three wickets in that 138 overs. First innings here at Northampton, home of cricket. They bowled 152 overs. And Seamers, again, took three wickets. So my maths are that in total, and not all of these overs were bowled by seamers, but in total in those two innings, 290 overs have been bowled by Middlesex, of which seamers have taken six wickets. Mm. That's quite a dramatic stat. It is. It is, and I think quite telling of the situation over the course of those first two rounds of fixtures. I mean, I've just... I've just had a quick run through the, the other games that are going on around the country at the moment and tell me I'm wrong if I, I'll give you a little run through, but I suspect a lot of them, are, if not all, are going to be heading towards a bit of a draw. Um, we've got Kent Trail Essex by 144 runs. They're 386 for eight. That's a beautiful wow. square drive. Of wow, how well has that ball been timed? Jeez. I mean, yeah, Tremaine is bowling as fast as he can, I think, right now. Really, real effort ball. So there's plenty of pace to work with. But that's been, there's no follow through on that. He's punched that square of the wicket as, as deployed, and the ball has raced away. We've seen very little to nothing go across the carpet to the boundary for four so far during this game. James Sales wasn't, he started not very far away from that. Correct. Can't have had much more than about 10 or 15 yards to cover. And must have been three or four yards short of where he needed to be when the ball did cross the rope. So, as I say, Kent Trail Essex by 142 runs. 388 for eight. Ben Compton, I think, has just gone through 150. And Essex made 530. He turns them out, doesn't he? He really does. Yeah. So that one there, you'd say, they've avoided the follow-on. Yeah. Feels like it's going one way. Hampshire, Lancashire. Hampshire 367 all out, Lancashire 406 for six, uh, lead by 39. Again, you'd say it's going one way. I think Keaton Jennings got a big one, 172. Say so very glad I took him out my fantasy team over the over the weekend. Well done, <laughs> well done to me. Who did, who did you bring in? Uh, Loose deploy. Oh, okay which I felt slightly guilty for knowing that he was coming down to Northampton, yeah, I have right, to say. Right, so. I do have Rob Keogh in the side as well. Mm. And Chris Tremaine. I'd love to see a Chris Tremaine Pfeiffer right about now for the sake of my fancy team, Phil, I have to say. And obviously, and, the state of the game. Yeah, yeah in that order, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nottinghamshire, Worcestershire. Nottinghamshire bowled Worcestershire out for 355. They're 18 for no loss, so they lead by 62. So there's chance that one there could be shaping up for an interesting day four. 
Uh, mm -hmm. Somerset Trail, Surrey by 63. Summer, Surrey all out for 428. And Somerset 80 for two in response. And then that game at Edgebaston, 698 for three declared. Durham a 369 for six. So they still trail by 329. Long way to go to wow. avoid that follow on. Yeah. But again, four, 14 wickets in hand, basically, for Durham. And I guess uh, Warwickshire have bowled a few overs there, really, as well. Uh, 108 overs so far. Yeah, so enforcing the follow on is no guarantee there at all, is it? No, no. Um, Rushworth's bowled 14 overs. Hannah Dalby's bowled 19. Craig Miles, 14. It's a fair old effort. And then Division 2. Glamorgan lead Derbyshire by 281 at 242. Yeah, 242 for six currently. Glamorgan. Chris Cook in his testimonial year. He's in the runs. Yorkshire lead Gloucestershire by 350. 287 for three. Should we see if any of the England boys have done anything in second innings? Joe Root's 50 not out. Harry Brooks currently seven not out. So that one... It's not going to be far away from a Yorkshire declaration, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Need as much time as possible, aren't they? Uh, Sussex up at Leicester, 550 for seven. Again, the short ball causing some problems. Initially, I think Deploy's plan was to let that, to sway it and let it go past across his chest. It didn't bounce and ended up kind of gloving him and it ran away on the offside. Yeah, Sussex lead Leicester by 213. John Simpson's 151 not out. Jack Carson's walked out and scored 11 off three balls. Okay, well, that so tells us... Tells the declaration us, yeah. is looming, That's I suspect. on the agenda there, yeah, absolutely. We've got a catching cover. Oh, hello. Lovely. Bit of bottom of the bat from, from Max Holden there. Ben Sanderson's line's been pretty good, hasn't it? And the effort and skill um, shown by Christopher Tremaine has been very, very good. 18 overs, four maidens, none for 50 for Tremaine. Sanderson currently in his 20th over. Just two maidens, but he's only gone for 44, as usual, very miserly. I don't think anybody would have the audacity to fault the effort of either of these two seamers or, or any county seamer over the first two rounds. They've certainly worked their socks off, haven't they? Yeah, absolutely. Some of the spells they've had to bowl, the number of overs in the innings. I don't know, have you clocked Raffy Weatherall getting loose at all in front of us here, Phil? Or has I've only just really decided to take a... A look over the the table. I think he'll be due, won't he? I can't. I mean, I would imagine that Tremaine has has, has done his his stint. I would imagine. Oh, well fielded. Well done, James Sales. Nearly a, a nearly a run out opportunity. He attacked the ball so quickly. The batter set off thinking that two was. If they ran positively, if two was on, and uh, James Sales dissuaded them from that. It was a bit of a slip in turning from Max Holden, but uh, regained his footing, got home comfortable in the end. But I can't, yeah, I can't see any warming up going on. Not massively. Justin Broad's just gone out to deep midwicket on the leg side, which led me to another point. It's the fact we haven't really seen Northampton try a short ball tactic, have we? I mean, it wasn't successful for Middlesex. It, it did a job at restricting the run rate, but we haven't seen Northampton really apply the pressure with that and certainly haven't seen the field placement that Middlesex employed. No, no, not not in the same sense. No, I agree. No, well, we absolutely haven't. No, I think your point is entirely right. We haven't seen it in that clear three men on the catch, one man hanging around um, just behind square on the leg side. We have seen a number of short balls, one of which got a wicket, and others of which have caused some problem, I think. Um, and, and as I said before, not in the traditional way in terms of being hurried. So Chris Remain is going to continue from the Lynn Wilson end. Not in that traditional sense, but it's been lack of pace um, that has caused, caused problems. I think I say it's early time. Uh, 
it's early for me to to, to make this suggestion. Um, but a couple of the short balls that Deploy has received, not been totally convinced that he's been absolutely uh, in, in control there. Mm. So later in the season, faster pitches, harder balls, maybe he might um, he might be asked some further questions there. The one thing, you know, if I am sensing a weakness there, and it's it's only a question, that's all it is. But if, if that question is, yes, there is a slight weakness, the one thing that he does have in his credit is he possesses enormously fast hands. Yeah. And to be a good hooker and puller generally, you need to have fast hands, fast bat speed, and he has that. Oh, he's been stuffed. Oh, Tremaine thinks the world is against him. <laughs> For the second time in reasonably quick succession, he has caused a false shot, a thick edge from Lewis Deploy, and both times it's just rolled along the, the carpet all the way for four. And uh, life's tough as a fast bowler, no doubt. It certainly is. Pretty productive area, isn't it, over the last couple of overs? I think in general, uh, hopefully I'm not being biased here. I try to be as, as objective as I can. But I think in general, Northamptonshire bowlers have created more false shots there have been more movement more false shots thicker thick edges and so on than we saw in the northamptonshire batting innings i don't know how you feel about that dan it just feels that way to me um we've had the drop behind we've had one that edged over got close to first slip um <clears throat> emilio gay off the spin of uh of keo i think it was oh no it was actually off zabe wasn't it yeah um a couple of thick edges there off um, Tremaine in quick succession. I think there's a lot of merit in in what you're saying there. And I think obviously having had the benefit of watching every delivery during the course of these three three days or three days so far, this contest between the two, I wouldn't argue with you. I think if you looked at the scorecard, however, I think it actually paints a slightly different picture because like for like, pound for pound, you'd say that Middlesex based on pure numbers, are in a much better position than what Northamptonshire were. 314 for two. I say much yeah. better. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. actually a bit of a stretch, isn't it? But 314 for two. Um, actually, Northamptonshire were 190 for two when Luke Proctor departed mm -hmm. for 70-odd. 276 for three when... Shot. That's a lovely cricket shot. Yeah. Karen Nye departed as well. So... Not that I think either of those two things that I've just said are really going to affect the outcome of the. No, but just in terms, of, you know. Oh, not, I agree. Yeah. Obviously, not in terms of the wickets, half but in terms sure. of yeah, in terms of movement, I think is what I'm trying to say. In terms of getting this thing off the straight, well, there's not much in it. And you might say, so what? They've only lost two wickets, which would be a fair response. Mm. But I'm, I'm looking for encouragement. You know, I'm looking for a positive sign that, that the North Ants. As a coach, looking for you know the guys coming in off the uh, tea time, being able to say with some conviction that actually we've actually bowled pretty well here. Lovely pull shot from uh, from Deploy had no problem on the short ball there. It was banged in by Tremaine and pulled beautifully in front of square, just for the single. Nicely fielded on the boundary by. Justin Broad. So just to back up your point that you've been making. It was safe say if you fielded that. Yes, thank uh, you. James, James obviously listening to the live stream. Yeah. I think he might be the number one fan, I think, the Northampton cheer analyst. So yep. great to have you along for the day, James. <laughs> what does James say? Because he's got the numbers, eh? He, he's recording every ball in terms of what happened to him. He does have does the numbers. Does he support my contention? Well, he's provided me with a, with a bowler matrix. And I'll assume that if I'm not allowed to say, he's quickly going to tell me to shut up. But as I haven't actually had that message come through yet, I'm going to crack on with it anyway. Um, in terms of the, the forward defence shot that's been drawn into play by both sets of bowlers, 25.6% of deliveries um, brought about a forward defence from the Middlesex seamers. This is seamers only. Yeah. And then from the Northamptonshire bowlers, seamers, 33.2%. Can I just stop you there for a second? Push I think that's a really good proxy for how well you've bowled. Mm. So Northamptonshire, eight basis points higher on that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the leave, 
Northamptonshire were able to leave 13.9% of the seeming deliveries from Middlesex, whereas Middlesex have left 9% of those from this is good data. Northamptonshire. The play and miss, that's the one where I would say is slightly the other way around. 3.7% play and miss from the Middlesex seamers, 2.7% from Northamptonshire. And then the full shot one, 3.9% for Middlesex and 4.9% from the Northamptonshire Seamers. So okay. excellent point, Phil, and well backed up. I love that. Oh, my word. Down the wicket, hit hard and up over the offside, carried all the way over a wide extra cover by the time it got to the boundary for six from Lewis Duplo. I don't think he got all of that, to be, to be honest. It didn't sound like he middled that. No, it sounded very toey, didn't it, over cover? Taking the risk early, early in the over, the first ball of the over, six down the ground. Ben Sanderson will not enjoy that. No, not at all. Well, at least deploy has got his eyes on that 350, hasn't he? He's got 10 overs, just inside 10 overs now to go about getting that extra batting point for, for Middlesex, which, as you said, could become crucial later on in the season. And it's not, well, not very far away now, really, is it? 27 runs off 10 overs. Yeah, they are very I mean, they're, doable. They're going to struggle not to get there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice place to be in that because the bonus point, you know, it's hugely important. People might say it's only one point, but, you know, you do that over a course of a season, that, that adds up to quite a number of points. So it's nearly a victory if you take one more yeah. than you might do. Um, each time you play, it's virtually a, virtually a victory by the end of the season. Um, it's nice to be able to bat in the knowledge that actually we'll just get there. That's a nice place to, to be rather than we have to do anything particularly about it. Yeah, of course. I'm not convinced there's a great deal Northamptonshire can do here to stop Middlesex getting that extra point either. Almost feels like a bit of an inevitability, doesn't it? And uh, Wickets, as you said at, at the start of the day, will certainly slow the scoring rate down, but one's fallen all day. It, it would require something quite drastic and quite wild to happen for, for a few to fall now. I think, I'm going to say this, I think the most likely way that Ben Sanderson is going to get a wicket is caught extra cover off a, off a cutter. There we go. Yeah. If that now happens, do I win a prize? Sure, what would you like? I can offer you a tray ball mint. Yeah. That's what I have available to myself at the moment. That'd be great. Perfect. If it doesn't happen this ball, then you owe me a tray ball mint. You can have the one that you're going to give me. <laughs> That's Liz Truss economics there. <laughs> Play. Oh, God. It's a long day when we start talking about that on the live stream. <laughs> but instead of bowling a cutter and getting a wicket, as he's supposed to do, Ben Sanderson, tune in, young man, he bowled a slower bouncer and it was helped around the corner by Max Holden for a single. Which brings Deploy on on back on to strike and Ben Sanderson would love nothing more than to knock his middle pole flying back he's come down the wicket to him twice in this spell and in for six back over his head or thereabouts fast bowlers don't like that he bowled him a cutter into the middle of the pitch knocked it up to long on for a single Northampton cheer for that delivery had one two three four five six men on the boundary Je ne comprends pas. Is that from your, inter your interrailing last summer? I am actually learning French yeah. at the moment, although you wouldn't know that from... I struggle. I struggle to pick up that. What, I, what, what, was, the, what was that? It was, I don't understand. Oh, okay. That would be my... That would be the first phrase I think I learned whilst I was learning <laughs> a new language. <laughs> in fact, in my head it was, I don't understand. Someone who knows about French will tell me otherwise. Mm. I've got to do some French actually today to keep my streak up. People are being sent away, are they? The, there are two bibbed gentlemen who have entered proceedings. Tom Lungley, the umpire, is demonstrating something. I'm not sure quite what. I thought he was sending one of them away, which would have been a bit harsh because he had a helmet in his hand. I think the way all the players moved there kind of felt all fairly orchestrated, didn't yes, it? Yes, it did. With the, the mass movement over towards the the heavy suite and the player rooms. So I'm sure that must have been a 
a signed off moment from from the umpires for those to have a drink. I mean, they're, they're, we're rattling through overs here. There's only, as it stands, 37 overs remaining in the day, and it's only just 20 past three. Obviously, that's a minimum. I'm not falling for that one twice. <laughs> not in two days, anyway. I, I'm not going to rule it out that it won't happen later on in the year. Um, we are going to have a change of bowling, though. Chris Tremaine, who has bowled five overs, none for 26 from the Lynn Wilson centre end, is going to be replaced by Safe Save with his slow left arm. So... Safe's going to get a little bit of a trundle with the newer Kookaburra. With some relative success, I think would be fair to say, with the older Kookaburra earlier on today. He's bowled 15 overs, four maidens, none for 47 so far. So, so I think I think Safe's bowled nicely. He, he bowled a pretty poor first over, but, he, you know, that anyone can do that. But since he's got into his work, I think he's bowled nicely. I think in general this is, rather than specifically to either in general, and I would have said this outside of this game, um, although this game has proved my point, I think I'd like to see him manage his pace better during his over. Rather, than, I think he, I mean, in short, let me make that into English. I think he bowls too many quicker balls. He goes to that too quickly. Um, not, not to the degree that he once did mm. when he first got into the side when he was about seven years old. He um, he would go low arm very quickly and try and fire it in. And um, because that's how it had success in, in youth cricket. But yeah. uh, increasingly, he has used more skill guard flight and uh, keep going, I would say, keep, keep going that, that way um, with the odd quicker ball. As long as we don't start talking about release points, it's a bit of a touchy subject, I think, with the selection of spinners for... England overseas tours, wasn't it, over the winter? Was it? Tell high, me more. I've missed High that. release points from oh, okay. Tom Hartley and Shoah Bashir, which Rob Key quite enjoyed during their oh, okay. pre-tour camp. And that's mm. well over-pitched by Safe Save. And nicely placed through the covers by Luce Deploy, who's going to move into the 80s. We have seen the success, haven't we, from the spinners, whilst that pace has come off and, and flight's been offered. Maybe more of a technical question. A bit of a taller spinner could drive the ball or drive this ball into the surface. Maybe just to see if it would react in a slightly different way. It's obviously we saw that we saw the picture from the last one. It barely had a seam left. Probably hasn't got a great deal to really grip into, but might not be the worst idea to just to see if that if that did something a little bit different. So yeah. I'd, I'd... Why not? Why not? Yeah, we're in that area, aren't we? and we've been there for quite a while of why not rather than why. Um, the personnel, I don't think we have nat naturally the personnel. Rob Keogh is a tall guy, bowls from a high release point uh, to drop that one in. Bingo, we both got it in. Um, it comes over the top of the ball very nicely, Yeah, uh, Rob Keogh, that's nicely bowled. So there's he's completed his action, much better save save there. Got over the top of the ball with his fingers rather than around the side of the ball, which is what happens when he fires it in. So, who's going to bowl those balls? Because Rob Keogh tends to come over the top of the ball, over the front of the ball with his fingers yep. to get drop and bounce and turn. And uh, it's a different skill, you know, to come around. The zone. Oh, no, I think he can do that, but it's not natural. Sure. Not natural to him um, to, to, to fire it in there. I mean, you're almost talking about kind of cutters, I guess, in that. Is that yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and again, why not? I would, I would say it's... What have we bowled now? 102 overs as the scoreboard ticks over. 332 for two, Middlesex. Um, I would have thought that Justin Broad might have had a, a short bowl at some at some point. With the keeper up, just to see if that pace, if anything at that slow pace, you know, he's a very much a military medium bowler. Yeah. And now the answer to that question, I think, it'll, is there going to be anything more in it for him? He's likely to be absolutely not. Let's have a look at it. Yeah, of course. I think he was a little bit expensive down at Hove last week, wasn't he? he? Was, but yeah, yeah. again, that, that shouldn't deter Luke Proctor from just chucking the ball to Justin Brown and saying, well, have a go, see what happens. What's, yeah. what's the worst that's going to happen for a couple of overs, really? We need to get a wicket in the next eight overs to get a bonus point. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, I yeah. also am a strong believer in your frontline bowler should get most of your wickets. But I think, you know, we've bowled 102 overs. So at some point... Possibly 
Yeah, you know, or the spinners were bowling well. I'm thinking maybe before the second new ball was taken. Sure. You know, two or three overs of Justin Broad. If that goes for 16, then, you know, you've not lost a lot, have you? Yeah, well, Luke Proctor has thrown the ball to, in our opinion, our, the best bowler for Northamptonshire in this innings. Rafi Weatherall is back into the attack. First, no, sorry, not the first bowl from the David Cape blend. He did have two overs from there yesterday evening as well, didn't he? But he did. He replaces Ben Sanderson and starts on the money. Max Holden just drops the ball into the offside. Quite helpful that Max has decided to take the jumper off so we can see the name and number on the back of the shirt. Just <laughs> that does help, doesn't it? Differentiate between himself and loose deploy, which I'm sure is probably easy for, for the Middlesex faithful, but from a distance, they're fairly similar in stature. And defended into the onside this time. Wow, that sounds like a nice cricket bat as well, doesn't it? It really did, didn't it? That's hit the middle of the middle of the middle. It sounded lovely. I think there's been a few of them that have mm. made their way to Wantage Road over the over this fixture. I'm sure professional batters don't get bad cricket bats. No. Oh, they, yeah, absolutely. And then the test players get the best word, I think. Mm. Yeah. Lovely shot, but mistimed. Good looking shot. That's a whole nother story that with regards to grading Willow and how the price points ended up where they where they are. And from what I've been able to understand from various different people that I've spoken to, bat makers, pretty much all done visually. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Well, does it look does it look like a pretty piece of wood? Yes, well it's a grade one bat. <laughs> Certainly for retail anyway. Right. Nicely played again by Max Holden. I don't know whether the player would have the opportunity to go to the workshop and almost pick the clefts out, if that makes sense, and kind of go, this sound slash looks like a good one, make a bat out of this, or whether it's a case of that they turn up and there's an array of cricket bats that they go, yeah, okay, well, I'll have this one, that one, and, and another one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in terms of the retail side of it, it's pretty much purely visual. Right. Interesting, that. Oh, the oh nice to play down the ground by Max Holden. It's been a good start to this over again by Rafi Weatherall. Every ball so far, all five of the balls he's bowled have been on the money, either defended or that one just pushed down the ground. Half defence, half push. I think what I will say before all bat manufacturers will never speak to me again, I think the more you spend, the more likely you are to get a good one. Yeah. But that's not to say that there aren't some absolute belting cricket bats in there that are graded slightly lower for sure absolutely because yeah. they've got a bit of a knot on the back of it for example yeah. or a bit of heartwood down one side yeah short ball well bowled yeah. up into the armpit of loose deploy he plays that well just drops it into the leg side he kind of rode yeah, that he nicely played it well he? In, he played it well in the end didn't mm. he i think there was a slight indecision but in the end he had enough time to to adjust and did got it down very quickly Uneventfully, uh, he, he won't be thinking t twice about that. But initially, I felt he wasn't in a great position, but he, uh, he dealt with it very well. But again, another another good over from Rafi Weatherall. Should this game continue the way we think it well, it might well continue and end in a end in a draw. You know, the the the, the big talk will be about the ball and uh, the lack of opportunity for wickets and so on, and that's understandable. And um, I think you know, unfortunately, the the very strong debut performance of, of Rafi Weatherall and Nathan Fernandez might be lost in the in the headlines about uh, about the experiment with the Cookborough board. And that would be a shame. The two young men on debut have performed extremely well for their respective counters. Yeah. That's nicely bold, safe save. I think there'll be plenty of good people out there preparing to focus on the positives from these two rounds rather than the the headline it's almost a headline isn't it really with the with the ball and the opportunities i think there's a lot of good stories as you said not just here but all around the country harry brooks 100 last week was a headline i don't want to bring it up for middlesex fans again but sam northeast was a headline mm -hmm. ryan higgins yeah. in response was a headline the, the yeah. score overall was a headline can they all be headlined they could be <laughs> How big's your newspaper? Single down the ground. Just evades the dive at short mid-wicket. 
on the square. Chris Tremaine back in that position. Jesus, feet oh, this time. Nicely bold, wasn't it? I think Safe just saw him coming there, oh, didn't he? And beautifully bold. Now that that's a good sign. So let's say he did see him coming. Um, 99 times out of 100 uh, in his career so far, Safe so able to fire that ball in. Mm. That one he held back beautifully and nearly caused problems, but didn't. But it was a nice response. That one a little bit quicker and. Max Holden on the back foot, punches it down to long on. Score is now 338 for two. And the band played on in the background. They did. They've, they've got some puff in the lungs over the road, haven't they? Nicely played again. Deja vu cricket this time. Loose deploy runs the ball down to long on. Holden now on 110 and... Loose deploy on 86, 104 overs done and 339 for two on the board. Where do you stand on, I mean, don't, where do you, what's your view of brass bands? Uh, there's you're, probably, you're a young man. They're probably slightly before my time, mm -hmm. or I say slightly, I suspect by possibly a few decades. I will always be someone who's incredibly impressed with, with a skill like mm -hmm. that. Nice. Anybody that's got a passion for something, I don't really care how unique or nerdy or whatever it is. If you're passionate about what it is that you like, yeah. I've got time for you. Yeah, ditto. I like that. And I'd rather speak to somebody that's incredibly passionate about stamp collecting or brass yeah. bands yeah. or model trains than somebody that just kind of floats and flicks between a couple of Absolutely. things. Absolutely. And ser seriously, uh, that's exactly where I sit. I guess you don't want someone from brass bands blowing their own trumpet, but <laughs> other than that... Did you ask me that question to ask to tee yourself up for well, that? I didn't, Rowie. I promise you I didn't. I kind of wish I had, but I didn't. It's <laughs> <laughs> awful. Was it truly awful? Uh, it, was, it was one of the whiffier ones, for sure. Oh, well. Only because I feel like you've set yourself no, no, up for no, it. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. It dawned on me as you were talking about it. I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> at this or one. Play your own trumpet. See if he yeah. notices. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three hundred and forty for two. Sorry, Phil. Carry on. Is James got any stats on that? <laughs> <laughs> Nicely played by Max Holden. Turned into the leg side. 341 for two. Have you um, had a chat with, uh, in your time so far, this this year had a chat with Rafi Weatherall yet? Not particularly, no. I, I did the end of season awards last year. The, the What do you call it when you when you host them? It's a, MC? Yeah, that's it. That's it. I did that completely out of my comfort zone. Nothing oh, I've ever go. done before. Good on you. Um, it, it was all right. It was all right. I don't think I did a terrible job. Good man. Has that found the gap between the two men? Oh, that... it has in the end. Sanderson's oh. done his absolute best to pull that back as he recovers from almost a snow angel position on the field there. I think he's quite <laughs> enjoying a little bit of a lie oh, down. We're going to see in the replay. Sorry, Ben, we've got a replay of it here. It Gets oh. a hand to it and then just kicks it over the line just to make sure. But nicely timed shot, wasn't it, by Deploy? The outfield has sped up, hasn't it? It has, yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yes. um, I was then told during that day that, oh, Rafi Weatherall's just signed his first professional contract. Um, it's in your notes. We'd like you to let everybody know. So that was pretty much been my interaction with Rafi Weatherall. Okay. Um, nicely timed again. Jeez, that's come off the bat well, hasn't it? And Safe Saves picked that up nicely. He's moved back from the fielding position out on the boundary into the into the hot zone i can't see the screen so loose deploys 91 now. how many balls he faced he's faced 110 eight mm. fours and two sixes and there's been a lot the odd bit of violence but it's been it hasn't been completely violent has it as no. i thought it might be at one stage uses his feet that oh, time that's and a cricket shot there's a little bit of that violence just advances on <laughs> rafi weatherall <laughs> punches it down the ground for four and moves to 95 
I think as well, at lunch, he was two off 25. That's right. Yeah, that's right. So we can do some calculations there, can't we? We could. But he's got a lot quicker since then. <laughs> that was a cricket shot, wasn't it? it Advanced really down was. the ground. Rafi Weatherall had a choice. He could have brought his length back. He could have gone slower. He stuck with his length. There's nothing wrong with that particularly. But he got pumped back down the ground. It was a beautiful, beautiful cricket shot. And I think Deploy is probably in the top four positions for how hard the ball has been hit. The four of his boundaries have absolutely flown to the fence. Oh, I'd, I'd say he's in the gold medal yeah. spot. He is. Again, gives himself room and down think... the ground. And that's gone all the way. And Luce Deploy brings up his 100. 101 off 112 for the Middlesex number four. Takes the helmet off the Middlesex balcony, loves it. Luce Deploy loves it. What a knock. Is that the best 100 that we've seen in this game? Um, Most fluent, for sure. Most fluent. Fluent. It's, it's, certainly it's the quickest, right? Yeah. And he has hit the ball harder than, than anyone else. Um, on a number of occasions. Um, I, I particularly enjoyed Emilio Gay's oh, innings, yeah. to, to, to be honest. I think I'd take some beating for all-round batsmanship. But in terms of counter-attacking, if I could call it that, it's not quite not quite typically counter-attacking. But um, he's scored at a rate that no one else has managed to score at, that's for sure, uh, and credit to him for that. Um, he's taken good options, largely. He's taken some risk, as we've seen. But every time he's done that, he's executed pretty much perfectly so uh yeah a very fine innings no doubt yeah also with that six down the ground brought about the 150 run partnership between these two and the bonus point and the bonus point and the cuddly toy and the cuddly toy bit of candy floss that was a decent strike down the ground wasn't it i kind of you kind of knew it was coming didn't yeah. you you know the four that got him um in reaching distance of 100 in in one hit and you kind of thought i think he might fancy this He's clearly a man who can put bat to ball, in particular when it, when there's little on offer yeah. in terms of deviation. But um, as I said, every batsman who's played in this in this game has had the opportunity to, to and, and no one's been able to do that. Yeah. And sometimes it's been inappropriate for them to do that, of course. But uh, he had options the way he played his innings. Yeah. And well done to him. Holding that time, trying to open up the leg side. Doesn't get all of it, but... Picks up the one down to the sweeper on the leg side. So just actually, we could just do the quickly do the numbers on that. So he was two off twenty five, right? He was, yeah, two and off twenty five, and he's now one hundred and one off. One hundred and twelve. One hundred and twelve. So that's seventy five and twelve is eighty something seven. Yeah. So he scored basically a hundred off eighty seven. Yeah, that's good striking on a slow pitch with a, with a soft ball. Yep, on a relatively slow outfield. Yeah. And with one side of the ground that's, without using the word relatively again, but relatively large as well. It is like, it's a lot of grass there, isn't there? Mm. Yeah. So, sats don't tell the story, but they tell the story there of a man who's played uh, different innings to anyone else who's, who's, who's applied themselves so far. And when he came in, it didn't actually materialise. When he came in, I, I think I said... He's going to play the way he plays. He then went into a shell a wee bit before lunch. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. Well, he did. I, oh, my word. That's gone a long way. There was cries of catch. That's going to be a one bounce for Karen there. Must have been nowhere near it. Is He was just jogging over the rope there to cut, retrieve that. It's a big shot there down into the deep mid-wicket region. Yeah, Rob Keir getting getting loose or maybe just staying warm. I think he might be getting loose. And um, yeah, back to um, the point that I was making. I think on, on day one, not the point I was making, you asked me a question about um, important things that Northampton need to do well. One was first innings runs and the second one was was take wickets with the old ball. This is not quite that situation now, but it's it's kind of staying competitive with the old ball, mm. um, not letting the game get away with you with the old ball, which includes the ability to take wickets, of course. And um, I think Middlesex are now sort of pressed go from both ends, haven't they? Yeah. Hold and, and deploy. Well, they've both gone past that milestone. It's an opportunity to just up the ante a little bit. They trail by 191. It's just run off the face of the bat by... 
today, but I think that probably proves there is still just a little bit of turn out there. It doesn't it doesn't feel like there's a ball with your name on it, does it, right now? <laughs> <laughs> Unless your name's Cookaburra. Yes, no. precisely. Yeah. I think that is T as well, Phil. It, it is, and I think um, North Ants will feel very happy that, that it is. They need to get off the field and, and regroup because that session has been uh, clearly won significantly by uh, by Middlesex, who who leave the arena uh, for, for a cup of tea, a well-earned cup of tea on 362 for two. They trail by 190 still, that's worth mentioning. Max Holden, 117 out, and Lewis Deploy, a sparkling 102 not out, the two not out batsmen, the partnership between the two, 159, and it's all happened pretty quickly. Yeah. Once Lewis Deploy decided to put his foot on the accelerator and play the way that we know typically that he chooses to play, then uh, Northampton didn't really have too many responses to that. That's not a surprise, and that's not a criticism of Northampton. It's because you know, the, 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 the conditions don't really give them that opportunity. Um, but nonetheless, he struck the ball beautifully, um, particularly down the ground, and uh, rotated well as well. And uh, It's been a nice partnership between the two left-handers. Absolutely. Well, on this stream, powered by Daffabet, Phil and I will take a break, and we'll be back after the interval.
Law Banks Returning to the Field, Captain by Luke Proctor, and Keith Wiggins Lewis the Mates. Hello and welcome back, everybody. The players making their way back out to the middle at Wantage Road on day three between Northamptonshire and Middlesex. We have 32 overs left in the day or more likely two hours. I suspect those overs will be done and dusted as they were last night, actually. Well within time, maybe even a couple more overs for the Northampton bowlers to contend with. Middlesex are 362 for two, trailing by 190 with eight wickets. Remaining the not-out batters are Max Holden on 117 and Luce Deploy on 102. The stream is powered by Daffabet at Northamptonshire County Cricket Club. And if you'd like to keep myself and Phil Rowe company at any point during the evening session, you can do so via email stream at nccc.co.uk whether that's questions, comments, thoughts, opinions on this game in particular, whether it's more thought-provoking, longer season thoughts and comments and questions, then we're, we're all ears. Or you can get in contact via Twitter at Northants CCC as well. And Phil, it looks like we've got the captain at the David Caperland. This is your captain speaking. It's good, yeah. Um, showing a bit of leadership, standing up. He will run in. And um, I think he will try to hit Max Holden on the shin or not hit him on the head, but bowl short balls. There are three men now out positioned on the leg side. If Max Holden does want to play a pull shot and doesn't get it down, there are three men waiting for the mistake. He hasn't made very many. As Luke Proctor starts from the David Capel end, he does bang it in. Max Holden doesn't make a mistake and picks up a single out to James Sales. Something I want to say about James Sales, actually, mm. and um, is the quality of James Sales' throwing is exceptionally high. And I like that. That shows good personal standards. It sets the tone for others. In general, the standard of throwing in first-class cricket, I think, is not high. And it's good to see a youngster coming into the game who's almost old-fashioned in his own standards. So good lad, keep it going. Slower ball next for Deploy, who says thanks. I'll knock that down to long on for a for a single and and run up the other end. And uh, yeah, in my coach, it was it, players coming into first class cricket you know, from academies generally nowadays. Um, their standards of fielding and throwing weren't as high as mm. as one might expect. Um, it generally, is there's more senior players who who have those standards. It's good to see a youngster. Is that a youngster that's through the academy focused on, I guess, what I would call the remarkable, if that makes sense, the 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 volley catch on the boundary or the, the jump outside the playing field and get the ball back in and actually hasn't really worked on, on what you would say or what I would say is the basics. I mean, from a clubby's perspective, I don't think the standard of throwing is particularly good in, in any level of cricket based yeah. on that because any bit of fielding that, or practice that I've ever done, the, the thrower's normally turned his back on the ball before the ball's even got halfway back to the wicket keeper. Yeah, yeah. They, they don't care as to where it's gone. It's not cool. Not cool. No. Yeah. Too cool for throwing school. Luke Proctor now coming over the wicket, bangs it in again, and Max Holden, wow, how much time do you want? Just knocks it off his visor down to fine leg. Rafi Weatherall, I hope he hasn't done himself a mischief there. He stumbled a little bit, got his feet in a bit of a tangle in fielding that, and he's just sort of flexing his right ankle a wee bit. He's another one who I've been impressed with in the field. Good good standards. Yeah, he's just feeling below his knee now. I hope he's okay. That did It looked fairly innocuous, but you could tell that he wasn't altogether comfortable with that. Keep it moving, young man. Slower ball this time from Proctor. You made a great point yesterday about the uh, Middlesex fielders and bowlers starting to feel a little bit leggy as the as the innings went on and like maybe that's a moment of it the grass yeah. is a little bit longer it's a little yeah. bit softer underfoot it's a little bit harder isn't it so you don't you don't exactly f float across a, a damper sapping. outfield it's sapping. Yeah. it's sapping there is one man on the single everyone else is on the boundary or thereabouts there's proctor bowls and deploy cuts this away behind square 
He chops away at it to angle it, spin it almost away from the backward point fielder and into the gap to allow himself to come back for a second, which he does very skillfully. It was a slower ball. Deploy had to make all of the running on that to control it, to time it. And as he did in part, a bit of spin as he cut his wrists across the back of the ball to get it into the gap to ensure that he got his two, which he did, which takes him to 105. The score to 367 for two. The batsman on strike will be Max Holden on 109, and it's a return in Rob Keogh, who's involved, I'd say, marginally, but increasingly well dur during the game. Currently 20 overs under his belt. Don't know if he wears a belt, doubt it. With his cricket trousers, 20 overs, completed eight maidens, not for 49, but he's bowled better as the game has gone on. And he will be better for the run, as they say in, in horse racing parlance. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe that's another way to look at these opening fixtures of, of cricket with this Kookaburra ball. Maybe it is a a precursor or an extended, I don't want to call it an extended pre-season because that kind of discredits the the competition, doesn't it? And you don't really want to devalue that. But she said those overs now under that imaginary belt that Rob Keogh is wearing is only going to pay benefit for him and Northamptonshire as the season goes on. Absolutely right. Let's see how he starts this over back after T. Starts it with a not a bad delivery, sort of bail height. Allowed Max Holden to rock onto the back foot, tried to beat Tremaine at backward point, was unable, unable to do so. I do feel North Ant might pick up some wickets in this in this session. I really do feel that. That's an outrageous shout, really, considering they didn't get one in the <laughs> Uh, in the middle session of the day. We've, when, seen, we've seen eight in three days. <laughs> yeah, there's more wickets are going to happen. That's my prediction. You heard it here first. Not exactly Nostradamus. But what is there What is there for either of these teams to, to do at this stage, if this makes sense? So, it's so easy to be pessimistic about this. It's so many runs on the board, not many wickets taken. It's hard to take wickets. Never, ever would say it's looked particularly easy to score runs out here. But the Middlesex, are they thinking, let's try and get level. We can get a little bit further in front of North Hans. Maybe we can get them in again and, and see what kind of happens. I mean, I, I would I would imagine that. And oh, wow. Blimey. Yes, it was blimey. Uh, we're saying blimey. I don't know whether the camera followed that. I was watching the live action. Uh, Luke Proctor came in from long long off to throw the ball back to the keeper to hurry up the, the single and nearly cleaned up safe Zayeb with the throw. Oh, that's nicely bowled, Rob Keogh. Turns and bounces past the outside edge of Deploy, who was pushing firmly at that ball. Well bowled. He's supposed to nick that one. You can that a couple of times now. Make my prediction accurate. Last ball of the over from Rob Keogh, a little bit straight, a little bit flatter. Deploy gets his wrist inside the ball, opens the face of the bat, runs it out to James Sales on the cover boundary, re retains the strike and moves on to 107. Yes, he does. He moves on to 107. The score, 371 for two, which sounds awful from an off hands perspective. <laughs> There is still a deficit of 181, thanks to those first innings runs. First innings, 552 from Northamptonshire. I'm avoiding answering the question. The question you posed was, what's kind of what's in it? Um, it's difficult to answer that question. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure how either team wins this game unless someone has an absolutely fluky jacksy, and uh, that doesn't look likely. I like this. We've gone um, double spin. Uh, Safe Zaya bowling from the now going to bowl from the. No, he's not. Or is he? No, I'm sure he is. I think Luke Proctor's given himself an over there just to just to change ends. I think. I think that's right because I think I was hinting at this before T that I felt the spinners could perhaps bowl from the other end, each of them from the other end, and that's now come to pass. So uh, safe Zabe will bowl over the wicket to begin with from the David Capel end. He's got four men, almost like a one-day field, in the ring, as it were. There isn't a ring, but if there was one, four would be inside it. Turn square of the wicket from deploy, picks up the single out to 
deep square leg. The four men in the ring are basically a man on the sort of gully line on the single, extra cover, mid-wicket, and a man behind square on the leg side. For Holden, mid on, sorry, long on and long off come in to the ring, so to speak, to make that six men now approximately on the single, thereabouts. This one's dragged down onto the pads of Holden, who turns it away, picks up a comfortable run. And comfortable, perhaps, is a word that we might say we've been able to use too frequently, and that is not a criticism of North Ant's skill or endeavour, but just the fact that the ball is very, very soft on a wicket which is fairly slow. It's not a bad wicket by any means. In fact, you know, for this time of year, you might you might say it's a pretty decent wicket to bat on. So credit to Craig Harvey and the and the grounds have not been able to get any pace into the wicket. It's just been so so wet. Looking for two, the two Middlesex batsmen as it's tucked into the leg side. It bisects the two men out there and uh, very good call, very good response. You know, although the game is a little sleepy, you might say there's still personal pride, there's still urgency, intent in the batting and in the bowling. Keep the standards high. Safe save bowls a slower, floatier delivery, and again, it's worked, worked into the leg side. You know, ideally, ideally, I'd like to see safe more defended more up into extra cover mid off than than tucked square of the wicket. Suggests his line is a little straight. Obviously, the batters are just edging themselves over that way to work with the spin into the leg side. Max Holden has a little run at this one. Safe save sees that happening, fires it in nicely. Max Holden makes the necessary adjustment as he's done well throughout his innings. You know, batting, it's not just about bound, it's not just about technique. It's about sometimes when you do get in a bad position, not making it worse and being able to adjust. And Max Holden has done that very well. On the, on the few occasions when the ball has done something, he's been, he's been able to adjust his initial intent. It's a sign of a good player. Yeah, he's been very impressive. Somebody that I have to be honest, I haven't really spent a huge amount of time watching, not obviously in comparison to yourself, whilst you were on the coaching staff here. Um, whilst Max was on loan at Northamptonshire. But yeah, he's been, been impressive. It's been an enjoyable watch. Spin from both ends. I suspect this is going to be a pretty set-in plan, don't you, for the for the evening session? Yeah, I, I mean, I would have thought there are two sets of bowlers here with a similar, two sets of seamers with a similar view. The Northampton seamers are obviously out on the field and they're probably thinking, keep the spinners going, Proc. They're doing a great job. Keep the spinners going. And uh, Toby... Toby, Roland Jones, and, and the Middlesex seamers are probably thinking, keep going, lads. Let's get our feet up. It's a long season. Uh, I don't want to sound like an old fogey long in the tooth. It's a long season, and um, you want to keep your bowling resources as fit as possible through that season. That one's going down the leg side already. It was helped further around for a very fine sweep from Deploy, and he picks up four runs in so doing. That's a relatively poor delivery from Rob Keogh. He, he hasn't bowled so many of those. As his spell has progressed, fewer and fewer of balls have been sort of misdirected. He's been more accurate and more consistent. He's bowled a nice flight. That one he got a bit wrong. And uh, it was tucked away with a very fine sweep from Deploy. He's not missing too many opportunities to score, it has to be said. He's now on 111. The partnership is worth 173. Don't get too straight here, Rob Keogh. Slightly shorter. That ball, slightly slower. And Deploy had to make all the running, try to cut it. It's great when you've got that bat speed because you can score off very slow deliveries. It's a great advantage to have it, but it found Chris Tremaine. Didn't pierce the field. He's at backward point. That's beautifully bold. I've had the first email of the evening session. Oh, come on. Do you know, I'm kind, I'm, I'm grateful, but equally I'm a bit gutted. Uh. It's from a chap called Roger, and he sent a lovely photo with the email. Of who? Well. Uh. Oh, what sort of photo? <laughs> Keo finishes uh, his over with a lovely flight of delivery, 
it's induced a, a, a thick edge from Duploy, who was firmly pushing that into the offside. And they pick up two runs. It runs down to towards the third man boundary, 382 for two. A message from Roger. Loving the commentary from the pool in Sandals, Antigua. Oh. Roger. And there's a, it's a nice photo there of the, of the iPad in the sunshine, in that's, the Caribbean. That's cool. Do we have Rod, Roger back, is it? Is that, is that who it is, Roger uh, yeah. back? Yeah. Lovely place to... Okay. Well, thanks well. for that, Roger, over and out. <laughs> nice place to watch cricket. I was in Antigua recently, well, yeah. and it was pouring down. Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely threw it down. I've always wanted to go to Antigua. I was there on my 60th birthday, <laughs> and it hosed it down. Yeah. Did you do any cricket tourism whilst you were going around? The... What do you think? Well, I'm a bit 50-50 here. You told Are me you? the worst idea of going to Spain would be to play cricket. So no, I'm, I said I'm... the cricketer's idea of the worst. Yeah. Yeah. But yes, I did, I did go to the test ground in Antigua. That's nicely punched to uh to deep mid on for a single by by holden the new one and the old no, one well we saw both but we stopped at the new one yeah okay yeah, yeah. the sir uh, vivian richards yeah stadium if i'm that's not right. mistaken that's right and i yeah i was with my family and uh i'm sure they were thrilled with my uh impromptu tour of the ground is that why they didn't allow you to go to the old ground <laughs> The memories and the reminiscing that would have gone on. Oh, well, bold, safe, save. Deploy coming down the ground and, and giving himself a little bit of room. Safe, safe, saw that. Fired it a little bit wider and Deploy just got the bottom of the bat on that. I have said a few times stumping might be our best chance. Nearly came to pass there. Safe, save. A bit flatter, a bit quicker. Punched away into the leg side deploy as you might expect from a man on 117 is seeing the ball extremely well and has got aggressive intent almost exclusively now he just turns that one away into the the space between square leg and mid wicket out to james sales for another single yeah so we went to the uh, the new test ground and it's yeah. a very nice very nice ground and we had a look around and um, i think we got into the changing room and he uh, yeah, had a look here and there and saw the statue of of the great man. There's a slog sweep from Max Holden out to the long boundary. It's going to cross that long boundary. Now he's played that shot four or five times and each time extremely well. It takes him up to 127. 388 for two is the Middlesex response right, right now. Yeah, and I decided to, um, I don't know why, don't challenge me on this. I was excited and, and I was undercover, so I was dry. And um, I decided to to share my impression of if Richard walking out to the middle Ooh, with, okay. with one of the Is locals. Is there video evidence of this? Film? No, there isn't. Damn it. Do you know what? I did this and the local guy who was helping show us around said, man, that's good. Yeah? Yeah. I think that's what he said. Something like that. I mean, that that's a compliment and a half, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I could walk like Viv. Phil, Sir Vivian Rowe. Yeah. Maybe without the serve. But... And there, the similarity ends, I should say. I think on any other measure, he's got me covered quite significantly. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Keogh, to continue from the Lynn Wilson end, he will bowl to Deploy, who sweeps a very full ball. It interested Rob Keogh because it was a sort of ball that you might just play over the top of, but he didn't. He got his bat low enough, helped it around the corner. George Scrimshaw is on the field. Your challenge, Dan, is to tell me who he's on for. He's fielding at deep backwards square. Max Holden cuts a short wide ball out to the point boundary for a single. I'm going to go for... After a very long pause, but I think it's Ben Sanderson. Okay. Another sweep, another floaty delivery. This time it didn't bounce. It got there on the full. Helped around the corner by Deploy. Who um, he's got a variety of sweeps. I don't. I haven't seen him yet play the reverse sweep. Yeah, Rafi's just there at midwicket, isn't he? Yeah. Where's Tremaine? Tremaine is. I'm sure I just saw a number twenty on the back of a jersey. A little bit too straight from Rob Keogh. He's only got one man 
attempting to save a single on the leg side. He's at kind of almost level with the bowl of stumps. There he is. So anything squarer than that is a single. So really looking to bowl more middle and off. Oh, I would like that. That ball is more middle and off, but it's short. It's cut away again with fast hands by deployed. Nicely picked up by Tremaine, moving quickly to his left, but he's unable to stop the single. So yeah, so that was the the highlight of Antigua was um, was the test ground because otherwise it just threw it down. Last ball of this over from Rob Keogh is pushed firmly to mid offs right. They jog through for a single, which concludes the hundred and twelfth over. But yeah, thank you very much, Roger, for yes. dropping us an email. Yes. Nice to hear from you. Have a great time. Absolutely. If anybody else is is tuning in and you can, well, I think you're going to struggle to one up Antigua at the moment. That's, but that's the winner, isn't there's it? There's a challenge. Yeah. There's certainly a challenge for you. If, I mean, can't verify it. I, but to be fair, we can because there's a cracking picture here. But if you turn up and say you're watching from Barbados and you don't provide photo evidence, then it's going to be difficult to verify it. It's a cracking place, the West Indies. I, so yeah. I've only been fortunate enough to go to Barbados. I say only. Um, I'm very fortunate to go to Barbados. But the cricket culture out there, and when I went out there, I had to go and pick up a media pass for one of the England tours. And uh, I don't know whether I was meant to, but I ended up walking across the outfield at, at okay. Kensington Oval. Yeah. And you suddenly look around, and all pre my generation and, yeah. and my, my interest, but you look at the names on the stands around... Yeah the Barbados cricket ground, the Kensington Oval, and you think, wow, I'm in, I'm in a special place right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, you just kind of, yeah, that's, that's well what you do. You do kind of stand there, don't you, and, and look at the names and the, the Greenwich stand and, and so on and, and so forth. And, um, yeah, it is uh, it is a special place. It's a lovely ground that I really enjoy that ground. Really pretty. The Sir Garfield Sobers Pavilion. Yeah, Malcolm Marshall End as well. Yes, the Malcolm Marshall. Yes, there is the Malcolm Marshall. Yes, absolutely. Well, thanks you to go pre-season to Barbados. We went for six or seven years, so we know Blimey, we know the island. Tough. Yeah, that was quite difficult. That's a nice shot from Lewis Deploy. Just waited, waited, waited. It was a slowish ball from Safe Save. He had nothing to work with. What he did really well was waited for the ball, waited for the ball, and then his bat speed, skill, timing meant that he punched it off the back foot. It evaded. Emilio Gay at extra cover and goes away for yet another boundary for deploy. That's nice technique. That's good skill, that. He's batted so well. He has 125 well. of 139. And to be so aggressive or so so positive on a pitch that others have, have struggled with. They've taken a long time to get in and they've had to be watchful. And you said that the hand speed through the ball, you, you'd think based on our summary, you'd go, wow, the ball's going to stick. It's... You're going to play a full shot, you're going to chip one in the air, and you're going to be caught by one of the catchers that's going to be lurking around. He's not done that. No, no, he hasn't. He's played very, very well. I think it's interesting. You know, he was, as we said before, he was, just to reiterate, he was two not out of 25 balls. So it's not, he hasn't been, he's assessed the conditions very well. He's got himself in and those 25 balls. He's assessed the conditions. He's assessed his options. I can do this. I can't do that. And... Um, and then he's applied applied himself in the context of the conditions that he's found himself in. He's a guy who very rarely in his in his career will have found himself two nine out of 25 balls. Mm. And um, there's a reason for that, right? Because it's not that easy to score. Yeah. But he's had a good look and he's got himself in. And there's a lesson there for, for, well, for, for all players, let alone young players, is you can't always just go in and go from ball one. You know, you've got to work it out. What can I play? What can't I play here? And then he just said, "Okay, all right, I know, yeah. I know what I know what's available to me." And um, gosh, he's played well. He stuck well to his plan, though, didn't he? I don't think yeah. it was for a lack of trying that no, he was no. two off twenty-five. It was just a case of he didn't let the situation get the better of him. Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah. as you said, particularly the the younger cricketers and and the amateurs would would have been in that situation and gone, "Oh my word, I haven't scored a run in in four overs now." And yeah. it's, something's not working here and yeah. a full shot comes about but no he stuck to his plan well i had an email an update email update from roger back in antigua oh. just to say it's raining oh okay sorry to hear that lovely in northampton <laughs> yeah not quite the same degree celsius though. <laughs> marginally colder it has generally been a, a lovely day today hasn't it the, yeah, great the, day. the cloud's been it's been drifting over every now and again, but 
more often than not, it's been blue sky out there. I think our cameraman, Ben, on the gantry has been pretty chilly at points, which highlights the fact that he's slightly colder than Antigua. Although, no. Oh, nicely bowled, Rob Keogh. Beautiful flight and guile in that delivery. Knowing Ben's record with Sunburn, I suspect he's probably quite grateful the fact he's in Northampton and not Antigua. Oh, is that right? Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't tan well. <laughs> Keo, again, that's not look like a sort of a pushed out ball. I don't know if it was a Karen ball. I don't think it was. It was a slightly different release. Didn't quite land where he wanted it to. Allowed Deploy to punch it square of the wicket. And that single brings up the 200 partnership. 403 for two is the team score. 200 partnership between Deploy, who's responsible for 127 of those, and Max Holden, who's currently just enjoying the ride on 133, not out. That next 50 from 150 to 200 was fairly evenly split from memory. I think the 150 partnership, Loose Deploy did an awful lot of the heavy lifting, having contributed up, what, I think it was 101, I think, at the point that that, that milestone came up. Nicely bowled again. Whereas Holden, I think, has gone from 47 to 69 as, as a contribution in, uh -huh. in this next 50. So, as you said, both have just gone up a gear well there was a very polite inquiry wasn't there for a court behind i think it was a very full ball and um max holden was trying to kind of almost half volley it with an open face down to third man he hit the ground in trying to do that so so full with the ball and there was a polite inquiry as was that did he hit the ground or did he edge it and uh it was unconvincing, I think, wasn't it, Dan? That's the word I'd use. Yeah, yeah. It so, was... Yeah, I say, sorry, to save saves off, and the captain is back on. So Proctor from the David Cable end. In the over that he bowled in order to change ends for the two spinners, first over after T that was, there was only one man who wasn't on the boundary one fielder, obviously the keeper wasn't on the boundary. It was, it was at mid-wicket and um, that was to deploy. However, things have changed a little bit and we've now got a mid-on, a mid-off, a mid-wicket, an extra cover. So there are now four men and this. I think that's Rafi Weatherall it's kind of hanging around on the offside in in no man's land, really. Mm. Sort of cover, but nowhere near saving one. And he may as well be on the boundary, really. And I think he might find himself there pretty quickly because that's just not a position. And that's Rob Keogh, I think. It is Rob Keogh. That's just not a cricket position. No, yeah. I cannot see any purpose in that position at all. No, I think Northamptonshire in a in a position here that they're just trying to slow... Middlesex down, aren't they? The the trial by spin from the David Capel end only lasted three overs. They've say went for eighteen off those, so it was going at sixes without really Middlesex taking any form of, of risk. And a lot of those field placements have been I think a nod to the fact that they're just trying to just trying to control Middlesex a little bit, aren't they? Not allow loose deploy to free the arms with as little risk as what maybe he was before T. I to totally, which you know, argues for me that fielder should have been on the boundary there. Had he been on the boundary, I think he would have stopped the boundary. But um, he was just kind of wandering around. And, you know, that's a bit of a, uh, I hope we don't get into that kind of, we're just going to wander around and fulfill the overs that we've got to bowl. Let's have some purpose about it. Keep our standard tights early in the season to dial in a session. That ball's gone down the leg side. Max Holden tried to catch up with it and deflect it, get a cheap boundary, find down the leg side. It was, again, a half inquiry, nicely taken by a diving, tumbling McManus. Yeah, I don't want, I don't want North Ants, I never want North Ants to, to dial in a performance, to just sort of go through the motions. Is that forgivable? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really sure on that. It's kind of somewhat understandable, but it is early in the season, and... I just don't like to see it. Personal pride, personal professionalism. Keep your standards high. Do the right thing, even when no one's looking. And there are very few people looking. I think 
a number of North Ant spectators have decided that they know which way this game is going and have decided to get themselves home and perhaps watch the end of the golf where I hope we see Max Homer win his first green jacket. If it's Scotty Scheffler, that's not the end of the world. But I'll back Max Homer. Proctor in again. Let's go back to the cricket. Bangs it in. It is pulled hard, slightly mistimed by Deploy. I'm going to say that very often. Picks up one out to deep backward square. It's the first time, isn't it, over the last two and a half days that you look around Wantage Road and still a few hardy fans occupying various seats around the ground, but certainly the, the sparsest it's been over the, the course of the days of the first game back at Northampton. Yeah, similar delivery there from Luke Proctor to the one that got the, the wicket. Um, of the day, the wicket being Nathan Fernandez. It was a banged in ball, deliberately banged in in a way that it was dying by the time it got to Holden, but he's seen that before, so he knew he could stand up. And as long as he watched the ball, he was in no danger. Knocked it away into the leg side for a single for 11 for two. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. Um, it's all very well for me to sit up here sort of pontificating and want to be able to get the professional stance like it is hard it's hard graft you know there'll be some tired bodies out there they've been in the field now for 115 overs the outfield is is sapping it's hard work bowling they've only got two wickets for for all of their efforts and i can't fault their efforts so it's understandable if there's a little bit of slopey shoulders at this stage of proceedings because I think everyone involved in the in this game thinks, as we as we do, Dan, that it's going one way. Yeah, it does feel like the writing's very much on the wall. But I am enjoying Rob Keogh's work. He's flighting the ball nicely. He has posed some questions for the batters. Hmm. That's the one that, that he'll be disappointed about, the one that's going down the leg side. Well fielded by George Scrimshaw, who has made an enormous amount of ground from backward square to a very fine leg. It was swept fine again from, uh, from Deploy, I think. He picked up three. It went very, very fine. And then he's made up a lot of ground on a full-length dive. Good effort, young man. That's good to see. And that ball has been the release ball, really, from Rob Keogh. He hasn't bowled a lot of rubbish. Yeah, the odd low full toss, the odd shortish, widish one, a little bit of, but, you know, all kind of standard stuff. But the, the one that he will be disappointed about is he's bowled a few too many that can be just paddled around the corner. And he's been a, not been able to build pressure as, as a result of that. But otherwise, I think he's bowled very well. There's, there's a more orthodox sweep. There's really not been much rubbish bowled across the the eight sessions is there yeah uh, both, well said both units have bowled, have bowled really well really tidily not let either team get away from from one another it's been very even stevens why is it even stevens not this game because it is even stevens but why is the expression even are you looking it up yeah why is not even collins because it doesn't rhyme. Well, that would be my obvious answer. Single picked up from Holden's. He just knocks that slightly over length delivery away to save Zayeb, who's on the cover boundary. That takes him up to, at the end of that over, 139. The score to 416 for two. The partnership is 213. Rob Keogh has bowled 25 overs. He won't have bowled 25 overs in a in a match, in the first home match, very often, in his in his career, if ever. I would suggest probably never. 25 overs, eight maidens, not for 72. And he's bowled pretty well, particularly given that he's got a, a spinning finger injury as well. There's a bit of a lull in the game. A drink is being run out for the batters. The umpires are having a chat about where they're going to have a a beer or a glass of wine or a glass of lemonade later on this evening. Luke Proctor is in no hurry to really race proceedings long. He's taken his sweater and cap off. But Northampton, you are five ahead of the 
the required uh, over rate. So not exactly in a in a hurry. Um, I don't know whether this is whether this is legitimate or not. But is it on Wikipedia? No, it's on it's on another website that I've never heard of. Um, it says something about rhyming colloquial phrase and expression for equal, which we obviously know is somewhat out of the ordinary for English slang. Though it seems to incorporate a Christian name as no specific reference to human behavior or personality, as do other formations such as Silly Billy. However, mm. it may be argued that the phrase is not without discernible historical origins and that the like of willy-nilly, even Stephen, was not originally based upon a name, but made to sound grammatical and make semantic sense. <laughs> Have what? I helped there what? or not? <laughs> what? <laughs> I haven't helped, have I? I? I thought that was going somewhere, and then it kind of went nowhere. It, it lost me. I, I, it lost me. It was a bit of a kookaburra in April, wasn't it? Uh, uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I, it, yeah. Someone will know the answer to that. I thought you had it, but then it just dribbled into the sand, really, didn't it? Luke Proctor, he's not dribbling into the sand. He's running in from the David Capel end, and he's bowling a good length ball. It's driven firmly to extra cover. Rob Keogh fields no run. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't help. There were there were other articles. I just felt like clicking on that one and uh, yeah, well, that was gave you the first thing. I thought you were really onto something then. I thought maybe, that was, maybe there's nothing to be onto. It, do you know what it was? That sounded like a very learned and useless article. That well, I I, I tick the useless box. <laughs> you, it's not your fault. <laughs> the learned one. I think I'm a long way short of that one. It's not your fault. <laughs> Sharp single taken again, Max Hold. The, the, the batters are on it, the bowlers are on it, the fielders are trying to be on it, trying to keep the standards high. It's good to see. These two have run particularly well, I think, between the wickets. There's been no hesitation. Every call of yes has been responded to. They've pushed well for threes in the outfield when they've needed to, taken singles when they've found gaps. Yeah, I think Luke Proctor's bowling a little quicker than he has than I've seen him at, at, at times. He can be slippery. What he doesn't want to happen, he will not be uh, keen for deploy to walk down the wicket and plant him back over his head. And deploy does do that and will want to do that. And I think the intent and the aggression in Proctor is saying, you're not doing that to me, Sunshine. It remains to be seen whether he will. So he bangs that one in. It's very slow as it gets to deploy. And he kind of tennis shots it into the ground to extra cover, no run. And a lot of the North Hans bowlers have looked pretty quick through the air, to be fair. Tim Proctor being one, Rafi Weatherall being another. James Sales looked quick through the air. Chris Tremaine obviously looked quick through the mm. air. Tom Helm for Middlesex on day one looked quick through the air as well. Just, yeah, not getting the output that they're, that they're putting in, unfortunately, at the moment. Yeah, well said. It's a great Lovely Yorker. Yorker and well played. It just missed the front foot by millimetres and deploy chop down on it. That's where his fast hands are even helpful in defence there. Chop down on it and the ball squirted down to, to fine leg. It was a great delivery. Yeah, really, really good ball from Luke Proctor. And again, we saw him pick up that wicket of Nathan, or the wicket, sorry, of Nathan the Fernandez, wicket. the wicket, by trying something different, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. And he's almost, I think, a bit of a standout from the North Hans seamers with his willingness to, to yeah. try different things. He has, yes, he has. That's fair, fair comment. Which has been nice to see. Nice to see. I'm almost certain San Ben Sanderson isn't on the field. I think you're right. Chris Tremaine is there somewhere, although he's no longer in the position where he was when I saw him the first time. It's a hard orthodox square of the wicket sweep by deploy. Just got his line, and he's landed a little, little wrong there. But the ball, you know, one of the issues about sweeping is the batters worry about a top edge. Well, you're not going to get a top edge here. And also, even if you do, there is no man on the 45 who's usually the man who catches a swept top edge. Managed to keep that down. Another attempted sweep didn't make... Oh, it's given four runs. Okay. Rob Keogh's appealed for that, but it must have got an under edge on it, deploy. 
that would be why that wasn't given out OBW then. It was a good appeal, though, by Rob Keogh. Yeah, it was. A, I think it was an anti-four runs appeal, actually. Mm. But uh, if, yeah, maybe I'll get away with leg buys. But again, he's just drifted to, yeah, that's not the line he needs to be bowling. And, and the, the bad ball that he's bowled, he hasn't bowled many, but that has always, almost always been that same delivery that's, that's going down the leg side. He's overcorrected there, too much width. And Deploy has waited for it and slapped it through extra cover and pick up three for his trouble. Yeah, Luke Proctor has just given Justin Broad a, a wave and a nod to get loose. And, and he's doing you can so. see him just doing so over in front of yeah. Craig Harvey and his team. So it won't be long until we see another bowling option for Northamptonshire into the attack as Justin Broad gets loose. Yeah, Rob Keogh showing signs of tired fingers. People might say, well, he's only bowling off three or four paces, mm. but there's still a lot of effort, the shoulder rotation, and the fingers can get very tired. He's bowled now 25 and a half overs. And with a finger injury as well, and for with good a, measure. Yeah, and with a finger injury. So this will be, I suspect, his last ball, as he's bowled five balls in this over. And this over's made a slight dent in his figures. But again, he's bowled pretty well. It's a tactical conversation between Rob Keogh and, and James Sales. It's, it's not normal, is it, that fielders are almost rotated round positions? No. It's not, is it? No, it's not. I've been sat here for a while convincing myself that I hadn't seen that last year, and it felt very regimented last summer that this fielder was in this position. Yeah, this yeah, thing. yeah. But even now, we've got Emilio Gay at cover. We've got Rafi Weatherall, who's pretty much spent his day at fine leg and, and long off in at mid-wicket. We've got Safe Sabe, who's been all over the places at backward point. Uh, it was a kind of a get out of the over ball, wasn't it? You might call it in one day cricket. You see that sort of ball often mm. in 50 over cricket, where it's a dying, slightly wideish ball. And um, it's hard to hit that anywhere other than the cover fielder. That's where it did get hit. Brings an end to that over Rob Keogh, probably an end to Rob Keogh's spell. Well, I think we'll see, as you were saying, Justin Broad come on at the Lynn Wilson end. So Rob Keogh, 26 overs, eight mains, naught for 85. Deploy on 147 not out. Yeah. Max Holden has now gone past his partner, Max Holden, who's on 141 not out. Max Holden will not care. He's interested in the not out. He's got a good seat in the house and he's scoring at a decent rate himself. So crack on, really, would be. The instruction for him, 4.31 for two. And um, Middlesex currently trailed by 121. The partnership, 2.28. Yeah, they're building a brilliant partnership together, aren't they? It certainly feels like it's just all... Well, it's all just taking a little bit longer now, yeah. isn't it? Those conversations between overs are becoming slightly elongated. The conversation between the batters, Max Holden, still isn't ready yet. I mean, not to say that Luke Proctor is ready to bowl. He's still got a fair bit of, fair few steps to cover before he gets to the end of his mark. As well, 20 overs remain, or minimum of 20 overs remain in the day. I don't know whether would Luke Proctor and Northamptonshire just be doing their best to make sure that they only bowl 20 overs between now and six o'clock. I would think so. An hour and 18 minutes left on the on the clock for us today. Overpitched by Proctor. Full toss back to George Scrimshaw, who in the end keeps that to a dot ball. It's definitely a lot brighter than what it has been this time the last couple of days. We have had floodlights on, haven't we, for a very short period of time on day one and a slightly longer period of time on day two. But as yet, I think we're quite a way away from from those coming into effect. James Sales in front of us going through a few looseners as well. Short ball. Pulled away, down to James Sales. That's brilliantly well to keep that down to a single. He's been busy, hasn't he, James Sales, patrolling that boundary. Although then again, he's had periods of time where he's been in a short cover and various other places as well. So Yeah, yeah, for sure. I've got another offer on even Stevens. Oh, yeah. Um, Probably better than mine. Well, I think it, 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 could, it could be, but it, it's got some... Um, connotations to it that I'm not sure oh. that we should be endorsing. But I, I think the term, I'm, I'll go this far with it. We need to wait for a blast night past the watershed. No, no, it's not. No. It's kind of more PC. Okay. Well, no, 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 so the watershed would apply, wouldn't it? 
it's just not particularly nice, but I might be misreading it. Um, but I'm not going to put myself in any jeopardy. I think so that's gonna, probably a really good idea. Good idea, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You've got your army on that, I can tell. Um, the term <laughs> originated, I'm going this far. I okay. want to go no okay. further. Yeah, good idea. The term originated in Jonathan Swift's Journal to Stella, 1773. Oh, I remember, yeah. There we go. Almost mm. a quarter past five, yeah. So there we go. But I, but there is a there is then a quote, and I won't go into that. Yeah, fair um, enough. Because I'm not quite sure exactly what it means but jonathan swift is the man who we've got to thank or blame for that good old johnny swifty to his mates liked a quick there didn't he oh that's a good run very good run quite happy to take that fielder on aren't they and they have done pretty much the entire game i think it's tremaine that's off the field at the moment and sanderson is on there sanderson's back on and actually um People take on Ben Sanderson at, at their peril because he's really quick over the ground. I think I, I've seen this over over the time that, uh, that Ben Sanderson's been with us, that um, opposition batters who perhaps haven't played a lot of cricket against Ben don't know that he's quick because he's kind of he's slow between walking back to his mark. He's a thoughtful bowler. You know, he doesn't run in at great pace and mm. so on. They perhaps don't realise how quick he is across the ground and... Um, as he was then, picked it up with one hand, got a good throw away, uh, and, and perhaps reminded uh, Deploy that actually, mate, I'm, I'm no slouch. He is very sharp across the ground. Deploy is now just one away from 150. Holden himself is only eight away from from 150. One has faced considerably less deliveries than the other, but both of them closing in on another milestone. Partnership, yeah, 231 runs. It's a lovely shot. Cover drive, over pitch by Luke Proctor, misses the Yorker, beats the dive in the covers. And that's four more added to the score. Max Holden moves to 146 at the end of the over 438 for two some of these numbers phil they're, they're starting not to feel real i have yeah, to say yeah 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 understood yeah yeah that ball was uh very well struck wasn't it It really that was rang out yeah it heard all round the ground justin broad is going to have a bowl he's going to replace rob keogh from the lynn wilson center end poor justin broad must have been Wondering when he was going to get back back involved in this game, having faced just the four balls in the first innings before being trapped LBW by Ryan Higgins. And other than that, he's yeah, been a fielder, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. We really seen him. He's done a lot of running. This will be interesting because Justin Broad is a military medium pace bowler. That's what he is. Um, that's not to say he's a bad bowler by any means. I think he's got some good white ball skills and. Um, you know, if he can develop himself with the white ball into a kind of Stephen Mullaney type mm. type bowler, that would be um, very, very useful for North Ants and very useful to his to his future career. I think the situation here is that um, he's got two men in, both of whom are pretty much on 150 not out. They've put on 235 together. It's 438 for two and he's bowling with the wind blowing towards a short leg side boundary to the two left-handers so <laughs> you know the odds are not in his favor and i suspect that neither of these two will want to be patting back just in broad for too long so it's going to be game on nicely played dare i say maybe even a touch quicker from justin broad than what we saw 100 percent last year that run-up yeah. just looked a little bit longer didn't it and it did 150 for Luce Deploy. Another milestone ticked off. 151 of 158 balls. 14 fours and three sixes. A pretty casual uh, acknowledgement, not in any bad way, mm. but uh, nice thumbs up. Got old fashioned thumbs up to the to the pavilion. Good on you. Yeah. Yeah, because I did expect uh, McManus to be up to the stumps from the yeah. word go. Uh, for, for, he may yet do so, come up to the stumps, that is. Again, on the money nicely for Justin Broad. 
75.9 mile an hour on the speed gun. So that would be based on what we learned yesterday. We can add three or four to that. So that takes him up to late 70s, which I'm certain is a touch sharper than where he was last year. And had a full year of professional cricket under his belt, had he? So he's had the yep. benefit of last year and a winter. Take on Luke Proctor, who's quite happy just to let that single run through. And the other thing as well last year with Justin Broad, it felt like we or Northamptonshire could get three, four, five overs out of Justin Broad and then found it quite difficult to come back for a second spell. Mm -hmm. But having had a winter in him, those legs yeah. got a bit stronger. Yeah. yeah. Being looked after properly by proper physiotherapists yeah. and eating properly and training properly. Yeah. Well, yeah, he's, he's certainly looking to bowl a lot quicker, isn't he? Mm. He was a medium pacer. He's now sort of medium fast. So, so this is a different, a different um, just in broad in that respect. Think, What's a nice cricket shot? Yeah, nicely timed off the back foot. Just opened the face up by Max Holden. He moves to 146. It didn't look like it was raining at Antigua. Going to going back to no. Roger Back's photo, did it? No, it looked lovely. Other thing just on just mate, just to put out there, Max Holden's current career best is currently 153. Oh wow. I wonder if his dad's in the ground. His dad, um, when he was with us, was always mm. at the ground. His mum often and sometimes his sister as well, actually. Um and I haven't I haven't been around the ground today, but I wonder if Dave, Dave Holden is around somewhere. Um a good cricketer and a good coach in, himself back over in Cambridgeshire. He's helped a number of young cricketers over his time there. Just a single added to the score there. I'm getting to, I'm getting to real I'm quite sentimental about these things. I was very keen that some of the sales family were in yesterday yeah. as we found out that they were just to see uh, James Sales bring up his, his three figures. Um, and now with Max Holden closing in, not only on 150, but should he get past 153 on a career best, it would be lovely if, if some of his family was in, able to see. I'm, I'm sure they, they, they probably are because they're only up the road in, in Cambridge. Nice shot again, cut away off the back foot. Ben Sanderson doing the work on the offside boundary. Another one added. Max Holden moves to 148. End of the over, and looks like we're going to have another longer, slower break between the overs as James Sales, I think that is, takes the jumper off and it's going to have a second spell from the David Capel end who looked very lively earlier today, looked quick through the air, asked a few questions with that shorter ball that, that he possesses. Middlesex had answers for them, but he certainly answered, asked a few questions. Yeah. A long conversation there, isn't there, between McManus, Tremaine and Proctor, who've just split and gone their separate ways. Yeah, having a chat and trying to slow the over eight down is probably preferable to bowling <laughs> yeah, true. At, the, at the moment. At least the scoreboard's not moving anywhere if uh, if we're not actually releasing the ball. Have you checked on the weather forecast for tomorrow? Uh, no? I haven't, not since this morning anyway. But I will have a I will have a gander. I did speak to the ground staff earlier today and did ask the question because the forecast this morning for tomorrow didn't look fantastic. And they said, "Well, not expected, not expecting much more than a couple of a couple of millimeters." And I think it's going to be incredibly windy as well. Yeah, I've just seen that. I've just had a look, yeah. Which Craig Harvey just mentioned that obviously as there's sheets down and we've got winds up to 40 plus mm. mile an hour, that becomes a bit dangerous trying to remove those. So there's a health and safety thing to think about. Um, a couple of morning showers, otherwise partly sunny and breezy. Okay. With a 63% chance of 
or probability of precipitation is what they call it rain of one and a half mil but i think where it's going to be so breezy it's going to be quite hard to predict what might or might not mm -hmm. Take by Lewis McManus. Yeah, that was a good take. James Sales just slides that one down the leg side. Yeah, I've got gusty wind. No, I've got gusty wind <laughs> on my phone. That vegetable quiche is coming back again. <laughs> uh, it's predicting gusty winds and heavy rain in Northampton on Monday. That's the BBC. But I think it's pretty clear it's going to be very windy. Short ball again down the leg side. And yeah, yeah, he might get wided there, to be honest. That, I mean, there's very little way that the batsman can reach that ball. And I think that Deploy is giving it an old-fashioned stare, as if to say, how am I supposed to hit that? And James Sales would say, well, you're not. That's exactly why I bowled it there. That's the idea. But I think it was a, a fair... <laughs> he's mm. marking the umpire's card. If he keeps bowling there, he perhaps will be wided. He's back on the money there. He bowled four and a half overs, none for 17 so far, James Sales. It does look quite chilly out there now as well. It's Emilio Gay, isn't it, at mid-wicket with his arms very much crossed and trying to stay warm. Drop down into the offside by a loose deploy. He has a look for a couple. Nice adjustment by uh, James Sales there. The deploy, as he's done a few times, has advanced down the wicket and um, James has banged it into the, into the pitch. He knows what the game was there to try and lift him straight. And I would imagine there's a conversation between deploy and the umpire, Tom Longley, and I think that might be about that ball that mm. flew down the leg side. Oh, oh nicely bowled, wasn't it? Oh, nicely bowled. He got pumped for four. Took a bit of pace off, didn't he? Oh, and... what a bit of timing that is. What a way to come to 150 for Max Holden. Fantastic innings. A little bit aerial through that cover region. Salutes the middle sex boundary. Yeah, 153 of 314 balls with 10 fours. And he's looked very good for it. So he's, he's equal on his career best, is that right? Absolutely yeah. spot on, yeah. Yeah, he's play, I mean, he's just played perfectly, hasn't he? He's, yeah. he's played exactly the innings that needed, that needed playing. It wasn't particularly difficult in terms of what innings do I need to play here. That was pretty clear. You need to, to, to occupy the crease. And um, kind of get stuck in and get as big a number as you possibly can in the time that it takes you. And that's exactly what he's done. One, it's one thing saying it, it's an, quite another thing to do it. And he's done it very nicely. Yeah, he's read the script well, hasn't he? Batted nicely with Nathan Fernandez. I'm sure he acted as a, as a calming influence yeah. for the young man Fernandez through his innings when he picked up his first first class 100 on debut as well. I'm sure umpire... So I'm just signalling over to the ground stuff. I don't know whether they're... Put the lights on, is it? Can yeah, it looks like it might be asking the question, but it's brighter, doesn't it, than, than what it did yesterday and the day before to get the lights on? So they're asking yeah, for something I'd say, else. I'd but... say maybe, yeah, they're, they're having a... They're in a longish conversation about something, aren't they? Well, they certainly want something done there, don't they? Because I think the umpires then asked Rafi Weatherall to, to go and get... I think they're trying to locate the ground staff. I think that's what's going on. Yeah, they are trying to locate the ground staff, and I think someone has found one of them. <laughs> Spot the ground staff. That can only be for floodlights, right? Yeah, I'd say so. I like the idea of the floodlight button being like a fighter switch. Like a switch in a fighter jet, you know? Obviously, we spoke about the limitations of what Northamptonshire are allowed to use the, the floodlights at various different times. Yes. I, I like the fact there's got like a like a like a, a cover over it that gets flipped oh, over okay. by. Yeah, you know? yeah, okay. 
they're start, I still don't think they've actually managed to get anybody's attention up in the uh, up above the garages there. Rafi Weatherall still trying to wave through the windows. <laughs> Short ball down the leg side. Doesn't really bounce. And Lewis McManus does well just to sweep that one up. The question that that and this is not an immediate question for, in terms of it, it needing not an immediate answer, but the question that um, Justin Broad will need to work with um, Rory Kleinbell on over, over his time here is, and there might be more than one question, but one of the questions will be, is this extra pace that you're bowling at an advantage or a disadvantage? Mm. Um and I don't, I don't have a view on that. But there's a question that I would, I would want to talk through with, with him, because he's probably bowling with enough pace on a with with a harder ball yep. to make it easy to drive through, easier to use that pace. Yep. yep. Both both sides of the wicket, sort of behind square and in front of square. Um, clearly, you know, if there is movement on offer, then it happens quicker. That's good. But if there isn't movement on offer and you're just giving extra pace, then maybe it's not so good. So you know, developing to be a really difficult to score off medium pacer who can bowl a full pace ball, particularly a bouncer, to keep people honest. A bit of off pace delivery there that he's just bowled. So that's a question is what what is, what sort of bowler are you going to develop yourself into and mm. why? You know, What we don't want to do necessarily is have another guy who bowls between 75 and 80 miles an hour right time over the wicket and hits the you know, and blah and blah and blah. Yeah. You know, Stephen Mullaney, as I've mentioned previously, he, one of the good things about him is he's different. I'm sure Stephen Mullaney could bowl like this because I've seen him bowl yeah. full pace deliveries and he bowls a rap, a, not a rapid bouncer, but relatively, yeah. he bowls a rapid bounce. So you get, you take the point. Is there a is there a role for the military medium pacer mm. in a setup where you've got a significant number of right arm over medium fast bowlers? Yeah, I think uh, the point I was about to come back with, I think you covered off anyway, much before I I got there. But point of difference is a yeah. is a nice kind of buzz phrase, isn't it? Yeah. In cricket, and um, yeah completely agree with you i think somebody that might bowl five mile an hour slower consistently would be a point of difference yeah. it, it might not be as obvious as a, oh well he's, this guy's gonna bowl left arm seam or this bloke's gonna bowl 95 mile an hour but yeah yeah it does provide a point of difference and we've got another little break in play here as i think the middle sex batters take a little bit of a, a comfort break and maybe a fresh towel and some new gloves a little bit of a drink i feel like we've had one of these every over over the there's, last there's been some activity here. yeah yeah i mean it has been known when players been dull that the fielding team in particular have run the 12th man ragged mm. that has been has been known particularly if the 12th man's dragged his backside around a bit during the proceedings mm -hmm. it's okay we're going to get him on every over and um, um, pass that round needs a jumper he's down at fine leg <laughs> Oh, not that jumper, the other jumper. No, the other jumper, yeah. the short sleeve, yeah. the, the vest, the pullover. Exactly. Oh, no, actually, I don't need it now. No, it's, it's a bit it's a bit too warm. But can I have a drink? <laughs> you got it. David Willey is a man who has run 12th men ragged. And actually, the worst one was, uh, in, in mine, was Niall O'Brien, mm. who would work 12th men incredibly hard. But it often coincided with the 12th man being, if you like, a reluctant 12th man. Yeah, okay. It's not good to leak that behaviour because you're going to get more work. Nicely played. We are in a bit of a situation here, though, Phil, where this evening session will... Or maybe just drag on a touch. I mean, there's still a minimum of 16 overs to be bowled. I think post T was 32, so it's bang on 16, isn't it? But it's yeah. five past five now. And the last five overs have become noticeably yeah. slower. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's lifted into the leg side. Was it a leading edge? I think half a leading edge. 
think it was. And that's, that is quite remarkable, really, because um, you would fully expect that ball to carry off the leading edge, wouldn't you? And it just yeah. got nowhere near the man at short mid-wicket. It was a long way short. Emilio Gay, there certainly isn't as aggressive as a short mid-wicket as what we have seen yeah. at various points through the game. That's not to say he's, he's deep by any stretch. But again, that's another one of those, another one of those, dare I say, even a 50-50 chance. I'm yeah. not even sure it was that that clean cut, but it was another one of those that, in order to be ultimately successful with this kookaburra ball, you, you have to have a right man in the right, right yeah. place at the right time. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, I think James has, he's trying to get through his over quite quickly, actually. Oh, that's nicely played, isn't that's it? Really oh, well gapped, isn't it? By Max Holden. Yeah. Rob Keogh gave on that, gave up on that quite quickly. Safe save, but short cover didn't move. And that's four more added to Max Holden. So he definitely has a new career best now. Yeah, he does. He, he does. Moves to Good on him. Fifty-eight. Good on. I don't know if Middlesex have a CB round um, protocol. I hope they do. A nice thing, they'll have something, I'm sure. No doubt, yeah. And another one back to back fours for Max Holden, slightly square at that time, but just as well timed. Gave Justin Broad no chance out on that boundary. This run's coming quite freely at the moment for Middlesex, yeah. Just it was just a, a drive ball, wasn't it? It was wide and it was, was over length. The previous shot was more almost on the up. We haven't seen too many of those drives. The one that went through extra covers a lovely cricket. They're both lovely cricket shots. The previous one was not a bad ball, really. And got ball to finish the over. So fair few runs coming off the bat on that one. Rafi Weatherall, he seems to be the one that's showing the urgency to get around. Although, as I say, that he's just slowed down into a into a walk. Wendell's, uh, well, he's exhausted himself, Phil. He's exhausted. He's so tired, he's no longer flagging. He's he's done laps. He's, he's He was providing motivational commentary over by the coffee van. He was. He'd brought his kit bag. We'd seen him throwing up a few tweakers earlier in the day. And even Wendell has found himself a nice picnic chair in front of the scoreboard. I mean, that's it. That's as an opposition coming to coming to uh, Wantage Road. That's it, isn't it? Mm. If we can quieten Wendell, we know we're on top. Say that a lot about home fans in in various sports, and say that North Hans Ultra <laughs> in Wendell. If you if you quieten him down, it's a moral victory for Middlesex. <laughs> Little conversation between. The umpire and the captain. They have no idea what that was. But I think un in an unconnected way, it's led to Luke Proctor suggesting that Chris Tremaine might get loose. It was it a question to to see whether the seamers were still ah. permitted to bowl? Maybe. Okay. Yeah, good spot. Down the leg side and a good take by Lewis McManus. You know what's been quite interesting here with with the umpire and particularly it's Rob White, isn't it? Yeah. At our end here. You mentioned about the fact that he's been on it, isn't he? Yeah. With, with the throwing the ball in at the wicked ends. And, and I'm quite surprised that he's allowed the time to elapse between the last half a dozen overs that we have had. Well, he'd be a little bit more keen to, to get this through. Oh, oh, that's a genuine edge. It's a genuine edge. It wouldn't have carried if there had been a slip in. There'll be people around the ground saying, well, we haven't got a slip in. And they'd be right because we haven't got a slip yeah. in. That would be a very, very good observation. Had there been a slip in, he would not have caught that. Unless he was standing in front of the wicketkeeper, which would have been a bit odd. Um, so, uh, yeah, another false shot. Not I know. It's been rare, but, yeah. but it is another one in that it's just happened. And it's added to those that are already there. It was a, a thin edge, but it went down very quickly. Four runs to deploy. Yeah, Broad can feel a little bit of, you know, a little bit hard done by there. 
Northants have found the edge a number of times, but um, one was spilled early. I think it was Fernandez was yeah. spilled. It was a very good one-handed diving effort that went very quickly to a very close captain uh, with the gloves on and uh, didn't manage to stick. It would have been a great catch. I say captain, I mean vice captain. Slow ball deploy takes on Karen Nair at mid on this time. Comes through for a single. Scoreboard just ticking over. There's 100 runs have been bought up in this session now for Middlesex. Last uh, wicket came at 203 for two. That middle session was painful for North Ants, wasn't it? Mm. 160 runs were added. The way this is going, there could be a few more. Solid by Max Holden. Not prepared to take on Karen there this time. 466, 465 for two, the score. The last ball of the 124th over in this innings. Justin Broad so far wicketless for 13. Make that wicketless for 17 as he drifts down the leg side and Max Holden says, thanks very much. Turns it down to fine leg and picks up another boundary, his 13th of his innings as he moves to 166. I think Chris Tremaine is going to bowl from the uh, David Capel end, but just on on uh, Justin Broad there, he can count himself unlucky to, to, to have found the edge, which has been a rarity, and for it to go for, for four fine through where first it would have been. I don't, as I said earlier, I don't think it would have carried. I'm pretty sure it went down pretty pretty quickly. Just loses his line a fraction there. <clears throat> and with the pace that he's bowling at, which mm. is uh, high 70s, any bat on that just goes fine and runs away for four. Oh, I was asking the question. It was purely a question earlier about, is he going to turn himself into another right arm over Seema who bowls between 75 and 80 miles an hour? He, he, could, he could do that. Or is he going to use medi more medium pace to give the batter less to work with, perhaps be more effective in white ball cricket and so on? Um, that will be a question that he can work through with the bowling coach and the, and the head coach. And it depends on the makeup of the team, depends on the services you're going to play on it. Lots of variations. The fact that he can bowl a bit quicker, that gives him options, of course. And I was just thinking that there was a, a cricketer who moved from Middlesex to Somerset, um, Josh Davey, yep. uh, who was, I, in, in my understanding, I think he was predominantly a batter during his time at Middlesex, who could bowl some seam. I'll pick up on that in a moment. Chris Tremaine returns to the action. And, um, yeah, Davey went down to... Uh, couldn't really establish a solid place in the Middlesex side. I went down to Somerset. And uh, at times, down at Somerset, was first change bowling, sometimes opening the bowling, but batting right down the order. So, he, he, you know, he completely flipped mm. uh, his, his skill set. So um, the fact that Justin Broad can bowl a decent pace at seam up is... It is good to have that capability, but it doesn't mean you have to use it all the time. So it's something to work through. I've always wanted in my time to develop a real medium pacer. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of that in particular in white ball cricket. And um, I thought for a while that Carl Kurtzer might be the one to to, to do that. It, um, that didn't, for various reasons, didn't sort of come to pass. But um, famously got a very important wicket in the finals day at... Um, at Edgebaston in 2013, when he was throwing the ball, having not bowled in the competition, a brilliant bit of inspirational captaincy by Alex Wakeley. But yeah, there's a play. I think there's a place for medium pacers. It's not every, not in every game, not in every team by any means. Oh my word! Well, Chris Tremaine's come back into the attack, and loose deploy has hit him back out of the ground. That's another six for loose deploy. His fourth. That's gone down the ground into the back of the Spencer Lounge, I think. Yeah. That's a almighty hit, wasn't it, by the Middlesex number four. I think he might have just been getting a bit, a bit worried there that Max Holden was just getting away from him. <laughs> just wanted to even it up on 167 apiece. Dropped into the offside. They're going to look for two, aren't they, here? I'm going to say no. That's great fielding. 
no need to take the risk. It's a, another massive tick in the right box for Justin Broad. He's a fantastic fielder. He's yeah, so he quick is. across the he, ground. He absolutely is. Yeah, he absolutely is. I don't. Yeah, I, with the signing of Ravi Bapara, I don't know whether Justin Broad's place in the in the T20 team mm. is is you know, there'll be a few looking over their shoulder at that and thinking, oh, is he going to take my place? He's going to make my place. Should Broad not play, it would affect our fielding capability in in T20 cricket. He is an outstanding athlete. Yeah, absolutely right. I've got quite a funny email in from Phil Watson. It's, it's a very funny is email. It? Yeah, it's very good. Come on. Uh, Phil's just shared with us, and to be fair, I think it's quite a brave story to share. Okay. He said, I've been watching the live stream on my PC, and I've got quite annoyed with what I with what I thought was a buffering blue circle on the screen. And it will, it will just have a look at the screen now, Phil, see if you can spot it. Let's turn down the leg side. Well, I can see a blue circle. To Rafi Weatherall, you spotted one, yeah? I have. He's going on to say... It's the blue circle dot on the cinch mat. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Keep up the good work, lads, Phil. <laughs> that's a brave email to send in, Phil. And I thank you so much for doing so. Good camera work. Too. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> <laughs> you can see that, can't you? Now that that's happened. That's the, brilliant. The, the little mouse that, that suddenly kind of turns into a little rotating that's brilliant. blue circle whilst the PC's thinking about something. You go, why is that on that screen? Why that's won't lovely. it go away? That's lovely. There's a lot of me in that email. <laughs> I think there's a lot of people that might be able to relate with that one, Phil. That's great. That's so good. Thank you very much, Phil. Appreciate the chuckle. Quarter past five in the afternoon on a Sunday in Northampton. If you could have sent that in three hours ago. It's a good been, story. It's, it's nice. I really like it. Nicely timed and gapped. Karen Nair does the fielding. Well, Max fielded. Holden adds another one to his tally. The floodlights are very mm. much on. I wouldn't have said they're taking effect just yet, would you? No. Certainly looks a bit brighter in the middle, but... Can't see any... Can I see shadows? I can't Maybe see. a little bit no. off Emilio, but not a huge amount. No. I almost think they came on fairly early, but there is a, a heavier covering of cloud, isn't there, coming over from from the east? I suppose the, the, the obvious thing to do would, have, would be to look at Bristol and Glamorgan and see what's going on down there. Big slower ball from Justin Broad, but can't get it on target. It just drifts down the leg side. Uh, both still on in Cardiff and Bristol, so that would say to me that the weather's still pretty good over that end, that side of the country. Yorkshire did declare in the end. They did. 434 okay. for six. And what, what lead did that approximately? Well, uh, so yeah. Gloucestershire, it would have given Gloucestershire 491. Oh, wow. A 21 for one in reply. Looks like that might have just yeah. gripped off yeah. the surface a little bit by yeah. Justin Broad. Absolutely. Um, anything else exciting going on? Glamorgan lead by 400. They are 361 for seven. Sussex declared 694 for nine. Who got those? That's, that's good for the average of that, isn't it? John Simpson, two hundred and five not out. Oof. That's a good. That's a good way to start the season, isn't it? For the it is. for the statisticians it is. in your team, and Leicester thirty six for no loss in reply. That's your Division Two scores. Broad round the wicket looks like he's following through down the pitch a wee bit, as in there. Mm. Might be far enough down there, might need to, but, but, well, to yeah, be out the way. By the time he finishes, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, by the time he finishes, for sure. Division 1, Essex lead Kent by 190. Uh, they're 73 for 2. Hampshire trail by Lancashire by 111 runs. Lancashire made 484 and Hampshire is 6 for 1. Knott's lead Worcestershire by 169 runs. They're 125 for 3. Somerset. Not, not so. Ben Duckett's still in, or has he gone? He's uh, had a quiet start, hasn't he? He has. He's not in. Ben Duckett made 63. Okay. All right. Quickly. Did you get those quickly? Oh. He didn't tell me there was going to be a follow up question. 63 off 87 balls, so mm -hmm. striking at 72. 
the match at the Oval, that's the one that there, there's there's the result coming at the Oval, assuming it's obviously dry tomorrow in London. Somerset are 158 for five. So they only lead Surrey by 15 at the moment. Lewis Gregory's currently in on one and Lewis Goldworthy on 56. Does look like there'll be a result at the Oval. And then at Birmingham, Durham are 507 for seven. There's a follow-up question coming. Who's, yes. Who's got those? Alex Lee's 145. Out. Uh, out. David Beddingham, 49. Ollie Robinson, 60. Graham Clark, 76. Ben Rain, 93, not out. Oof. Matt Potts, 34, not out. Ollie Robinson's an interesting topic of conversation, isn't he, with the with the summer ahead? And who's going to take those gloves for England in the test matches? Tremaine giving absolutely everything. Great. Not Tennis player S grunt at the mm. at the delivery crease. 21 into his 21st over, Chris Tremaine. None for 69. Slight change in the field as Rafi Weatherall comes up into what would be a circle. Safe gets pushed square at the point. It's quick again, and Max Holm just lays that one down the ground to captain Luke Proctor. There's been, um, we've watched a lot of batting, haven't we? We have actually. Well, a lot of well batting as, as well. And um, one of the well batting things that um, has been credit to those guys who have who've posted good numbers is their concentration. Because it's, because, mm. you know, you. Be, it's not easy, right? So I'm not going to say it's easy. I don't want to say it's easy. It isn't easy. It's hard. But it's not as hard as it normally is at this time of year. Yeah. If I could say that. And once you're in, it's it's been difficult to remove people from the crease. The numbers will tell us that. Yeah. Um, and so concentration levels have to be very, very high, and they have been. Uh, so to, to the credit of all the guys who have, who have got in and stayed in, ah, something's happened to the footholds at the David Capel end from round the wicket from Chris Tremaine, and they need... I'm going to call it a damper. Mm. I don't know whether that's right. I've, have I made that up? Have I clutched it from the memory banks? It could be. They was it, was big... it a damper that they would have used to have put gunpowder in yeah, various weapon bits of weaponry? And yeah. it kind of feels like it's got a similar kind of vibe there, isn't it? You're yeah. basically trying to compact and yeah. stuff that surface back together. I noticed actually earlier in the day that Rob Keogh had had a, couple of cursory looks at mm -hmm. that area it, it did follow up or it was followed up sorry it followed a drag down or a yeah. ball that slipped down the leg side so whilst there's a break in play that when the damper has been mentioned there was a game a second team game here at Northampton a few years ago and there'd been a lot of bad weather around and we were on one of the old um, some of the old one of the end wickets so it wasn't a wicket that's going to be used for championship cricket and uh, the problem the umpire said to me look the problem is Phil, I was desperate to get some cricket on so the problem is it's the takeoff point here at the, um, and it was at the Lynn Wilson end it's the takeoff point here and I'd had a conversation reasonably shortly before that with Paul Taylor who was uh, the assistant groundsman at the time um, about this quick drying repair um, mm -hmm material that he that he had that he used and he said yeah it breathes through it the grass will grow through it and it's quick drying we we'll use it it's great blah, blah. and um so i went over to the ground and i said look if we cut this square of grass out here and put this stuff in yeah. how quickly would that dry so i dry in a couple of hours we, we do that and uh i said and it's fine you know, you can take off and if you can you could use it to take off and he said, yeah yeah i'll be fine absolutely fine so uh, i went over to them i said look would you be happy if we did this? I said, yeah, second team cricket. We can, we can have a look at that. Yeah. I said to, to Paul on the ground, so are you happy we cut that? Yeah, yeah. So out they came, they cut it up. We put the mix in and filled it. And our bowlers <clears throat> at the time said to me, um, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, we're trying to get some cricket on. And they said, uh, well, that won't work. 
I said, well, that is the stuff that they repair the ends with and you never see that. That's the stuff that they, no, it's not. No, it, it really yeah. is. And this went back and forth. I said, look, okay, we're getting out there. Well, we're not happy to take off on that. And it was all, it was all quite friendly, yeah, by the way. Sure. But uh, I said, okay, we need someone to test it. And the bowler said, we're not testing it. Why would we test it? If it does it, if I slip and, you know, if yeah. I cr I'm not doing that. And um, somebody who was mentioned yesterday, we decided would be a good, because um, he's expendable as a bowler, was James Kettleborough. <laughs> <laughs> and so we got James Kettleborough to run up to bowl. Uh, and he, he didn't really bowl cats. He said, don't bowl seamer. Yeah. But um, to run in as a seamer and bowl a delivery. And James Kettleborough ran in and missed the spot. <laughs> First time round. Second time round, he hit the spot. Everyone was happy and we got some cricket on. Um, but um, yeah, that's just filled a gap, hasn't it? It certainly has. Perfectly timed as well, actually, as uh, Chris remains at the end of his mark and ready. Oh, to go. How, how we laughed. Dan. I can imagine. I thought. I thought. I thought for a second you were going to be the one sprinting in mm -hmm. off the long run to test the uh, the quick drying cement. That might have been a lot of people's first choice, actually. To be honest, yeah. Chris Tremaine into bolt. Just oversteps. I'm sure it's completely coincidental the fact that we've just had that break in play and. That pop increase has just been padded back down. I mean, it, yeah, he, he bowls very few no balls, as I understand it. And the fact that he, he, you know, he, he obviously disturbed the material that was in there and then it's repaired. And, and the next boy he oversteps says to me he's lost confidence mm. in, um, in that area, which is totally understandable. And when that happens, bowling becomes very hard. As if it's not hard enough already. Yeah, there's a lot of stresses and strains, aren't they? Going through the body and I guess the second you lose a slight bit of confidence there, you're going to be, well, not not really prepared to put your put your ankle, knee, yeah, hip well, through it, I, I suppose. The back foot landing is just like a normal running stride. It's a front foot mm. you know, landing that takes the impact. And it's sort of eight to ten times body weight going through the through the system every time you do that. Just think about that eight to ten times body weight going through your system every time you land that front foot. And Tremaine has bowled 21 overs now. So that's what, 126 balls and a no ball, 127 balls that he has done that for eight to ten times body weight through his system. People say cricketers are not athletes. Well, that's that's a pretty good athletic effort, I reckon. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Just don't go asking to see any uh fast bowlers toenails we they probably won't have too many left i don't suspect yeah. justin broad is going to continue from the lynn wilson center end it's looked pretty tidy hasn't he so far during this spell four overs none for 18. 33 minutes left on the clock or 11 overs so 11 overs left on the clock rather than 33 minutes particularly with the seamers operating might get through out of touch quicker if Rob Keogh or Safe Sabe come back on for another spell before the end of the day. It feels at the moment like quite a nice pace here from Justin Broad for Max Holden and Loose Deploy. Yeah, um, Justin Broad might be thinking, look, you know, I could turn myself into a genuine seamer. Rather than a, oh, that's a <sighs> big swing from Max Holden. I don't know how far away that was from the top of leg stump. That was a hack, wasn't it? That was quite a large hack, yes. And uh, Deploy's gone down there and said, he did. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> words, words to that effect. Well, there's one fielder out there, and I haven't noticed it up to this point, but actually, Karen Nair, James Sales, and Rafi Weatherall. They were all fielding in on that leg side. Karen there has a shot at the stumps. But actually all just made their way in in comparison to, to loose deploy. So Luke Proctor and North Ant's quite happy with Max Holden having that real estate to aim cricket balls into. Saying if you rate yourself, then have a go. Have a go. Have a go. Come and have a go. And he did. Unfortunately for Max Holden. It bounced just enough. 
Do you know what's interesting as well with, with, with this particular cricket wicket? Yesterday, we saw Lewis McManus in the brief spell that Middlesex were uh, batting yesterday evening, having to deal with quite a lot that were getting to him on the second bounce, the mm -hmm. third bounce, some that had rolled along the floor, maybe the odd Yorker for him. And that was post heavy roller. And actually, the more cricket that's been bowled on it, and the, I guess the, the, it's had time to decompress itself, actually feels like a bit of a better batting pitch, I think. I don't think the heavy roll has actually helped it. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's indistinguishable, the effect of the heavy roller, isn't it? I wonder if there's also a factor, you know, that he just caught less balls because mm. we've bowled straight and they haven't left as many, maybe. I, I think that would be interesting, sort of percentage-wise, to know yeah. if that's... That's my kind of my blink is, yeah, he's caught fewer balls. That's well fielded there. James Sale's making a lot of ground very quickly to his right to prevent the single. In what is pretty much a dead a dead rubber, the last ball of the over with 10 overs left in the day, having been on the field for 127.5 balls. That's a good effort, that. I like that a lot. That tells you something about where that young man He's not alone, but where that young man specifically there sets his own personal standards, it's good to see. Yeah, you've been very complimentary of his fielding throughout the course of the day, haven't you? And it, it, you could be forgiven, I think, at, at points if you allow yourself to drift on a day like today or, or, or a day like Middlesex had on, on day one. You can forgive yourself if you do so for five minutes, ten minutes, mm -hmm. but I haven't really seen that at all from either side, have you? Not, not, not to the point that Big mistakes have happened, if that makes sense. We saw that one overthrow from Roland Jones. Yeah. There were a couple of shies at the stump that yeah. obviously caused no yeah. no damage, but yeah. there's only one really that I can think of. Yeah. It's gone air, really. Ooh. Max Holden's gone to another gear here. He has, hasn't he? He's got that, got that well over Emilio Gay, but he's only come oh. back for two you're not timed that very well at all i'm wondering if there is an element of i want to get 200 because we might not get on tomorrow i wonder if that's in his mind yeah and normally that kind of thing is a crazy thing to say for a professional cricketer but given that the only outcome from this game can really likely be a draw yeah then you know your own personal milestone then is is fine to look at that but he's 26 away. He gives himself a bit of room, doesn't he? And Chris Tremaine follows him. McManus does well to get down the leg side and pick that one up. Just having a bit of a stretch there, the North Ants wicketkeeper, before he gets himself back on his feet. Chris Tremaine ties the shoelaces. A few double teapots around at the moment, Phil, which I think is the... Oh, teapot. <laughs> the universal sign of... <laughs> This has been a long day. Teapot sounds good, doesn't it? It does. Could we could we please hurry this up and and get back to our respective homes and hotels, please? Just looking at the extras count here. North Ants thirty extras conceded mm. in one hundred and twenty-eight overs. Thirty extras. And let's look at the composition of those. If I can actually work my own telephone to um, to tell anyone that. Yeah, okay. So the comp composition of those 30 extras is six no balls, 16 buys, and eight leg buys. By comparison, in the middle six innings, there were 11 extras, two no balls, two wides, one buy, and six leg buys. Let's pick that up. Well, that's, a, that's a one day cricket shot, isn't it? Yeah, just got in line with it, hasn't he? And tried to work it over the leg side boundary. Very risky shot, though, with Karen Nair and Ben Sanderson down on the boundary edge in that area. Yeah, well, because he, 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 got, he got a half a bat on it, didn't he? If he gets mm. a whole bat on that, you've got to think that's going to end up somewhere near one of those two. I would have thought so, particularly with the, the lack of pace available to work with on yeah. this pitch. Yeah. Another fielder has just gone out onto the leg side boundary as well for loose deploy. 
the partnership currently 288 so 12 away from from 300. this is his feet flicks that one into the leg side they'll look for two loose deploy says no sanderson does well to restrict that down to just a double yeah there's another gear isn't there here they've both decided to kick to kick on and in, yeah in the context of the game in terms of the result of the game it's okay what's well, the deficit now 60 60 runs mm. i can't see a situation where they where they pull out so uh, i guess they're chasing their own next big milestone before the close of play i, I suspect nine overs and one ball to go well, that's nice. It's going to be four. I think Karen is going to do very well to cut that one off, and he doesn't. So Max Holden adds another one. 179 now for Holden. The partnership, 293. You know, I just heard the name Sando. I don't know who said that. It might have been Rafi Weather or actually going over to have a chat with Ben Sanderson. Yeah, I guess professional sport, and particularly cricket, never becomes a a free hit so to speak but as you said game looks like it's meandering one fairly obvious way as it has done for quite a while to be fair probably will have an eye on on the weather forecast i know we think we spoke yesterday about rain cards didn't we yeah um and yeah you, you do get a little bit of a free hit to maybe bring up a, a triple hundred partnership between you and your mate and bring up a double hundred for the first time in your career, bring up your first Middlesex double hundred for loose deploy as well. And if they have got one eye on the weather and they think, well, there's not much chance of it's getting out there, Let, let's do it today. Nine overs, Justin Broad from the Lynn Wilson center end. Let's assume that the weather's going to be fine tomorrow, which it probably isn't, but let's assume that. Yeah. Is there any way that, that Middlesex can put North Ants under pressure? Let me just remind myself of the, the state of the game. So they're 56 behind. So you would say, I guess, best case scenario with nine overs to go, level pegging at the end of the day. That's that's a good rough, rough, yeah. yeah. Best case scenario. Yeah. That's going to require them to go at over five and a half and yeah. over, which yeah, yeah. is... But it's a decent assumption. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're going to have to get to a, what? If they keep going at this, their scoring runs quickly. That's what's worth noting. And they've scored 135 runs in this session. What would they want to bowl at to make sure that also that they don't leave North Ants a small score that they might actually kind of chase that down? Oh, my word, he's got in position early there for the reverse sweep, hasn't he, Max Holden? I think he was in position to play that shot before Justin Broad had got to the popping yeah, crease. I think he was, yeah. Could, I think they could. I think they could get themselves into a position, certainly where they where they afford themselves time to have a bowl. Don't necessarily think they'll afford themselves enough time to have a bowl on this pitch with this ball in order to take 10 North Hans wickets. No, I, 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 I agree. Could they get 200, 250 in front and go, wow, we'll have a, we'll have a go for a session and a half and Just see what put happens. Put the wind up here, yeah, yeah. I mean, that would take them probably until lunch or just afterwards tomorrow. Yeah. So you've got, yeah, what have you got then? Six, 60 overs to bowl them out. Yeah. And and chase down whatever's left. Yeah. 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 Which, as I think we've said a couple of times, there's been eight wickets have fallen in three days of cricket. Yeah. It would be quite remarkable for 10 to fall in 60, 50 overs or however, however long was left. Yeah. And I mean, the pitch still hasn't particularly turned unlikely to suddenly start carrying a bit more or, yeah. or seeming a bit more. And if it did start to turn, that would all be down on Josh DeCare's shoulders because Middlesex have only got one out and out spinner in that side as well. Yeah. Although we yeah, we're unsure about uh Fernandez. Yeah, and deploy to be fair. Yeah. Five hundred for Middlesex. Five hundred for two for hundred and thirty overs. And a round of applause that you can hear through the effects mic from the Middlesex balcony. If I said it was sparse about an hour ago in the ground, so it's um, ever so slightly more so. 
<laughs> I think the, the com save stand, I think, has three people in it, I think. The yep. cinch football stand has got six. So that's nine. Wendell's in the Wendell suite. So there's one. Ten. And ten. What have we got? In front of us, I think the the chaps with the big cameras don't count. I think no. they'd, they'd be here anyway. One, yep. two, three, four, five, maybe opposite us, above the Curo Wealth Lounge. Oh, the cameraman's doing us a favour. I wasn't watching the screen. Overpitched from Tremaine. It's just dropped into the offside by Max Holden, who moves to one eight one. I don't know this. Clear, clearly, I can't tell this, but there's something about the way Chris Tremaine is going about his work that says to me that he is saying, I am not leaving this field unless I've got a wicket against my name. And I'm going to give everything I can for the team in order to achieve that. There's something bloody minded about the way he's performing, which I really like. Yeah, he certainly bowled well enough to, to deserve one, hasn't he? Flicked into the leg side that time with Sanderson giving chase and they'll settle for one. Horrible feeling the fact that Chris Tremaine may end up rather disappointed by the end of the day. It's, I think it's hard to see where a wicket comes from, Phil, doesn't it? There's going to be a wicket this over. Where? Court. Paint me a picture. Tremaine bowls. Holden advances, tries to wipe it through mid wicket, gets a top edge and he's caught. Somewhere. Somewhere. <laughs> Anywhere. Caught, caught behind. Yeah, okay. Oh, oh she went far away. He's got a big inside edge on it. And he's going to come back for a couple with Rafi Weatherall in front of us doing the fielding. <sighs> Mystic. Mystic Phil. That's the 300 partnership. Wow. You don't see that every day of the week. You really don't, do you? You really don't. Fantastic effort from the two of them. Max Holden certainly done his best to catch up with Loose Deploy. Loose Deploy contributing 175 to that 300 partnership. Ruffy Weatherall looks like he needs a brew. <laughs> <laughs> looks like he's out past his bedtime. Hands on knees. Oh, there's an appeal for a court behind. No one can quite believe it. Chris Tremaine was adamant that Max Holden had played that off the face of the bat through to Lewis McManus. I thought there was a noise, Phil. Yeah, and I don't think there was much else going on. Something happened. Chris Tremaine can't believe it. Lewis McManus can't believe it. Emilio Gay couldn't believe it. And the umpire didn't believe it either. <laughs> Victor Maldrew didn't believe it. Yeah, I can't, I, no idea. I thought I heard something. Yeah, but... yeah and it had a set up, yeah, it had that kind of tone of, of, of a thin edge. Yeah. And just to add insult to injury, Holden advances at Chris Tremaine and larrups him down to long off. 505 for two. I had I had a feeling that might have been quite short from Chris Jermaine. Oh, yeah, I thought I thought, I thought yeah. there was going to be a yeah. well. You can sniff this one, Max Holden, if yeah. uh, if that's the way you're prepared to to behave. At least deploy on strike, and he goes for the ramp, and that has flown down in front of us. A couple of bounces. I lost that. Us. I lost that ball completely. Must be getting tired. Good option, wasn't it? Very good. Got into position early, didn't yeah, he? He really did. It's a good option. And Tremaine's no slouch with the ball. It's a brave shot, isn't it? Mm. He played it well. I don't suppose you caught how Chris Tremaine took the hat back from I the umpire, didn't. did you? No, I, I didn't. I was watching the replay of the shot, but he's going to be pretty disappointed there, isn't he? Yeah, it was a it, whatever it was. The noise was was uh, it was a flick of the pad or a flick of the edge of the bat, and um, you know, I, I, the, on the replay you're looking for has the ball gone past the body? Uh, is the bat the only thing it could have hit? And I couldn't say that from from the angle. 
Yeah. Um, the noise may be sounding woody, but that you know, that a fine flick of the pad can sound that way too. So who knows? Yeah, the cameras and the the setup here that we've got at Northamptonshire for the stream are fantastic, aren't yeah, they? Absolutely. You're starting to get to Sky Sports levels of broadcast to be able to get that close to the action. And the counties haven't quite got to that level just yet. I will say though, and a good time to mention it. Uh, however, I don't remember the exact reward or award, sorry, but the Northamptonshire live stream for 2023 was an award winning live stream. Yeah, 2023 it was. 2023 as well, which it's is massive. Something like innovation yeah. in county championship um, media activity. Yeah. That's not quite right. I've butchered that, but it's in that. Along those lines. Got all of the right words, not necessarily in the right order. And another tickle down the leg side. Four runs to Max Holden, moves him on to, I think, 188. Depends how quick the scoreboard operator is. Have I gotten it early? It is 188. It was the uh, the best digital innovation award for the North Ants oh, okay. live stream for 2023. Thanks, Toby. And that you have to say, that's a fantastic effort by Alex Berry, who's moved on now, Toby Williams himself, Dan Vernon too. And then obviously Ben and George, who... George pressed a lot of buttons, didn't he, on the on the producing Absolutely. deck, and and Ben shivered a lot on the gantry holding the camera. So yeah, it's a team effort. Been great to be part of it. I just got a little look up from Luke Proctor, who looked at with a smile on his face. He's doing well to smile. Just the one wicket to fall all day. Yeah, six and a half overs left in the day as well. That's a nice looking shot, isn't it, by Loose Deploy? Some conversations for Rory Kleinvelt to have, just keeping people, um, keeping people's pecker up, really. Mm. You know, one of the things he can look at is what's going on around the grounds. That's, that's for sure, because this is happening pretty soon. I mean, it's pretty extreme here, but it's it's being replicated to some degree, almost everywhere. Yeah, you'd say Warwickshire. Although Durham are now all out for 517 and Warwickshire have been forced to follow on. Have they really? 180 behind Durham. I, I don't think they can afford to take any time out of the game with batting. Personally, I, yeah, I, I yeah, think I'll batting again would be... Well, you would give yourself 10 overs less to, to try and... yeah try and take any wickets i think i said on day one didn't i for me you'd rather you'd rather go again and if you have to chase 30 yeah in five overs or whatever it might be then good on you if yeah, you get no, it totally great. Get that. and if you don't yep fine yeah can't argue with that thinking at all a helmet is being run out for lewis mcmanus i think tom longley wants to chat with his co-umpire rob white or does he? Or does he want to chat with the captain? No, he wants to chat with the captain. Just going to check and make sure that the ball is still round, I think. So who's going to have a bowl? It's going to be safe save, isn't it, from the David Capel end? And although he finishes the day with 23 overs for Maidens naught for 88, I want to congratulate Chris Tremaine. Mm. I'm trying to say that name better, Chris Tremaine, for, um, for his effort and skill, but in particular his, his effort because he has run in really, really hard all day long with no reward, with a bit of bad luck. And um, he has not dropped his pace, his intensity, his professionalism or his skill level throughout. So uh, that's the way you do it. You know, it's a hard, it can be a hard, hard game, this, and that's the way you do it. So good on him. Yeah, led by example, wasn't he? Overseas yes. pro. Coming over to, almost, well, lead the bowling attack, I suppose, with, with Ben Sanderson in these first two games. Pass on that knowledge and inspire the next batch of North Ant teams. I'm sure lads like Rafi Weatherall, James Sales will, will learn an awful lot from, from Chris Tremaine. If, and I'm sure it will be more than this, but if it's nothing other than you run in as hard as you can yeah. every time you get that ball in your hand, that's probably enough, you know? And I'm sure there'll be more besides. But... Um, yeah, well, well, well done, Chris Tremaine. That's how you, that's how you lead a bowling attack. Yeah, six overs to go then. 
and another long conversation between overs as Luke Proctor makes his way all the way down to long on. Safe save. Just allows loose deploy to turn that one into the leg side. He's going to look for two and they're going to take on the fielder. Safe save gives a big shrug of the shoulders. He's not happy with the fact that two runs were allowed there. Max Holden just dropped the bat there. I don't think he was hit by the the throw in. I think that's Ben Sanderson, isn't that? Isn't it down there doing the Sanderson doing the and sales together, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Reverse sweep. And hit powerfully out to deep backward point. Rob Keogh finds himself in that area of the world. Hit that, the hit that too well, didn't he, really? He did. Probably wanted to get that further behind square of the wicket. He hit it too well. It's a big gap, isn't there? Big gap. I think Safe Save is bowling almost almost down the leg side, which makes it hard to fetch that ball. That one, he's got a bit straighter. Ah! Told him, just gets that on the outside half of the bat. He's on 190 now. And if he has got eyes on a double 100 today, he's got about five and a half overs to go to get it. He can do it in a couple of hits, can't he, if he wanted to. It's that back to save, save. 520 for two. Middlesex trail by 32 now. I think reverse sweep's his best boundary option, you know. Just beat that one man, Karen, there at, at 45 because it's hard to see. Gives himself room on the offside and that does turn away from Max Holden. He gets enough of a battle on it. Takes Karen Nair on for a couple. Successfully takes Karen mm. Nair on for a couple. You know, Max Holder's played a number of very good slog sweeps, and that gap is the gap is open there, but it's into the wind and it's a huge boundary, and you kind of think there's too much risk in that. Going inside out for extra cover with the line and the pace that's ace by is difficult. So it's sort of helping it around with a reverse sweep is not a bad option. Well bowled, held back nicely. Yeah. We're into one day cricket mode here, aren't we? Yeah, we are very much so. So if just saw him advance down the track and you said held it back and defended it in the end down to, well out to Justin Broads at cover. He's gonna be taken out the attack. It looks like Rob Keogh is gonna bowl the last few overs from the Lynn Wilson center end. So well bowled Justin Broad. Seven overs none for thirty-three. Rob Keogh makes his way over, so he'll have three overs to bowl tonight. Bit of a thankless task here for any for any of the bowlers at the moment, isn't it? So, uh, as we've said, as Chris Tremaine has demonstrated and uh, given him a good rap, and rightly so. But it, that you know that can be true of, of of all the bowlers. Everyone's running. There's no lack of effort with the ball and and in the field from North Anson. That's that's good to see. You know, there was a spell on day one. Very early in the game, it was the second hour, and I felt Middlesex kind of went a bit absent. Yeah, lost their way a bit, went well, through the motions, whatever you want, however you want to describe it. Um, but then got back on track and, and and rallied well after lunch. Came back uh, stronger for for whatever was said and discussed between them. But to their credit, North Ants can't be criticised at all throughout this long, long bowling effort which is now into its 134th over with only two wickets to show two men in nearly on 200 each a partnership of 321 and north ants have kept their standards really really high and i love that and yeah full credit to them and actually do you know there should be a cold beer waiting for them when they come off the field as well that mm -hmm. would be a nice a nice touch just to recognize that I'm not sure if I'm being old school there. Perhaps I am, but I think, you know, some way of, of, of recognising lads you put a good shift in there Yeah, would be nice. I am sure there will be people saying, you what? Hmm. Everyone should have a beer when they've only got two wickets. 
I think I think it's another one of those, isn't it? I think we spoke what well, feels like a week ago, but it must only have been about an hour. And you mentioned about the fact that it felt like the North Hans bowlers had the seamers at least had been created more opportunity than than the Middlesex yeah. quartet. And obviously I agreed, but said obviously if you just look at the face of the scorecard, you argue and just say no. But again, I think it's another one of those, isn't it? We've had the privilege of, of sitting up here all day and watching every single delivery over the course of the last three days. And the actual scorecard and the headline doesn't doesn't tell the story, does it? No, it doesn't. No, stats um, over a period of time, you know, you got to believe your stats over a period of time, but certainly not in one game, in one spell, or even a couple of games. Over, over a season, over a career, certainly your stats are your stats for a reason. Um, but no, this doesn't tell the full story at all. But it does tell the story of how well Middlesex have applied themselves. There's no mm. question about that. So uh, I'm very happy, very pleased to be able to be very positive about the the effort and endeavour from from North Ant's perspective. And good on them. You know, the same should be said for the batting effort. As these two have played absolutely brilliantly. Deploy faces up with possibly four overs in the day left to Zabe, knocks it down the ground. He's they've become a bit, a bit more becalmed. There was a bit of a mad mm. 15 minutes and it seems to have quietened down. It almost feels, and dare I say it, that he's prepared to bat for Max Holden to get this double hundred yeah. tonight, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. there's something of that going on. But Max went into kind of Mad Max mode, didn't he, for, for a while. He was yeah. standing away from the stumps and flailing two or three times, which was uncharacteristic of the way he's played otherwise, and has now become a little bit more becalmed. Yeah, well, he's just five away now, isn't he, from what would be yes. his first first class double hundred. Yeah, he's broken the back of it, hasn't he? But he definitely deserves it. No one, I think, would, would say otherwise. He's got three and a half overs to get it. So he can just knock that ball around now. As long as Luce deploys, prepared to play his part and get him back on strike. Uses his feet, pushes that wide of safe save and gets a single. Ice cream van looks like a bit of a sorry, sorry sight at the moment. Yeah, that's optimistic. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's well bold. Just gripped a little bit, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it did. Holding up to the task, just drops it in the offside and picks up a single. I think the com save stand pretty much empty now. It is. One, there's someone standing in front of it, but in terms of its purpose for people to sit in it, no one is, is taking that up. The dive from Emilio Gay. That's a tired dive, wasn't it? You know, there's a penalty for false fielding, isn't there? <laughs> <Is there? laughs> that would have been harsh. That's a yeah, one you, pound fine. You know the slide when they when fielders kind of yeah. the, the walls running away from them and they slide when it's actually well part that is now a criminal offence in the game of cricket and you can get penalised for false fielding and that dive was so far away from the ball. I I say it tongue in cheek, obviously. I think, I think Emilio might just wanted a bit of a lie down for <laughs> for a couple of seconds there. <laughs> just quite enjoyed the comfort of the North Ant Square. Rob Keogh is having a chat with his captain. Loose deploy on strike. He's only 10 away from a double hundred, which is well within his remit. Shapes up that one, doesn't he? To hit it away in the leg side. Max Holden says no. He doesn't want to come back for a couple. Doesn't want to risk it. So he's one shot away. Let's have a look. He's had a yeah. That's how, I thought he might have a glance. Where are the men on the leg side bound? If he gets a chance, he's going to play a hard sweep. I think. If he doesn't get the chance because it's too full, well fielded off his own bowling by Rob Keogh. Gave him no pace to work with at all there, did he? Four singles will get you there, Max. I'm sure that's what his dad's thinking. Or four will get you there. So an expansive extra cover drive. Ben Sanson will cut it off. He, he, it was struck very well. So Ben Sanson had to take a defensive line to that ball, which enabled them to come back for two. Takes Max Holden onto 
198, just two, two runs away. If I was Rob Key, I'd be thinking, well, you're not getting them off my bowling and do everything I could not to be the man who's bowling when the double hundred count. I used to hate that when people used to get a hundred when I was bowling. It's not getting off, not coming off my bowling. Can't say I've ever been in that situation. I'm not allowed to bowl. <laughs> for, good, for good reason, to be fair. 199 for Max Holden then. One ball left in Rob Keogh's over. Deploy on 191. At least Deploy will keep the strike as he takes a single off the last ball. It feels like a bit of a, a laddie kind of matey thing to think about, but I think Loose Deploy and Max Holden might have gone, do you fancy a race to a double hundred? <laughs> <laughs> Who gets there first? I don't, I, I don't think that will have been the, the, the conversation. No, I don't think so. It is a Sunday and it is cricket and it feels like that would be a, a conversation that would be had, had between two mates on a Sunday afternoon. Maybe not to a double hundred, but yeah, yeah. I'll race you to 50. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. On the park. Or, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 for sure. XYZ Cricket Club, but yeah. Good team, that. <laughs> Going up the divisions. Good youth setup. Two overs to go. Safe save from the David Capel end. That Middlesex fielder on the uh, balcony looks quite comfortable, doesn't he? <laughs> Shorter ball and reverse swept by Loose Deploy, or almost reverse swept. He's kind of gone down to sweep. Actually, safe didn't allow him to do so. So one more added. In they come. Fielders are coming in, as is the way when someone is on the on the edge of a big number. I always found that quite odd that it usually just happens until they're one run away. Yeah, it's a cricket thing, and not. Yeah, it is. Wendell's waved them in from the leg side boundary. Yeah, he's not daft, Wendell. He's got his he's got his second wind. He's back up on his feet. Reverse, or someone's reverse sweep is your shot, Maxi. Well the hack through the leg oh, side the is. Oh, that was dearly. And that's really not far away, but no. it is a double hundred for Max Holden. Two hundred and three or three hundred and seventy one balls, sixteen fours. And my word, has the Middlesex batter batted well. A round of applause from those that have remained in the ground. And a nice cheer from the Middlesex balcony as well. Yeah, well played, young man. Always look out for Max Holden's scores. I haven't had to look very far, just away to my left to see the 203 come up. Against anyone else, I'd be really, really pleased for him. <laughs> and I'm just quite pleased for him today he's played very well and he gets his boundary and gets off strike so can loose deploy do it before the close of play tonight yes is the next question he's on 193 of 201 balls oh, i don't think he'll worry about hitting into the wind deploy because he hits it so hard oh he was shaping up there a little he bit. was wasn't he safe saw that he's taken the single down to long off quite a remarkable not far away from being a runnable double hundred from loose deploy oh, max holden's going to take the single going to give loose deploy one more from safe save you can do it in one hit if the delivery is right, or obviously he can knock it down the ground for a single and keep the strike. But he can't. <laughs> Defends it, or plays it, doesn't defend it, plays it back to save save. We have gone past six o'clock, and there is one over left in the day. So Rob Keogh will bowl the last over of day three from the Lynn Wilson centre end. Had is off the North Hans fielders slowly moving themselves into position. Max Holden's on strike. Just gone past that milestone. 205, not out. Partnership now worth 342. 183 runs have been scored in this session. Oh my goodness gracious. 
Seriously, 183 in this session. In this session. Wow. Rob Keogh is going to bowl. And that's a cracking shot, isn't it, by Max Holden. He just gaps the, gaps the offside and gives Ben Sanderson a long chase. Turns out to be quite a comfortable three. You probably wouldn't. You probably would have got good odds on potentially or nearing 200 runs scored in the evening session. A Middlesex partnership of 350, two double centurions, mm -hmm. all happening on the same day. I know there's a, there's a few bits there that yeah, haven't yeah. quite materialised yet, yeah, but yeah. yeah, no, that's right. I mean, <laughs> very very good odds. And it's the second game of the season. Mm. And it's the middle of April. Yeah. Wider ball. That's going to beat James Sales. They're going to come back for two. So, loose deploy, I think, is quite happy and content if he goes in overnight, just short of that double hundred. Yeah, it looks that way, doesn't it? 348 now, the partnership. 210 for Max Holden. A full toss that time from Rob Keogh. Takes the single. And the scores are now level. Scores are level. Which doesn't mean a whole lot. No. But the scores are level. How many days of cricket do you think we'd need at Northampton to get a result? <laughs> Eight. At, at this rate, yeah. Because I, dare I say it, I don't suspect Northampton would have declared if that was the case. Takes the single, takes on Luke Proctor. And that is the 350 run partnership between Max Holden and Luce Deploy. I would imagine that that's a record for the fourth wicket against Northamptonshire. I, I, I don't know. Somebody might might know that. But, um, it's, it's an impressive number. Whatever it is, it's an impressive number. It certainly is. Last ball of the day then. Defended to safe save in at mid-wicket. Umpire hands the cap back to Rob Keogh. There is a round of applause from those that have remained in the ground. A handshake for Emilio Gay. The Middlesex batters embrace with pats on the back all round. Handshakes as well from the North Hans fielders to the Middlesex batters making their way off the ground. Well, Phil, 500 and 53 for two. Blimey, they're quick to turn those floodlights off tonight, aren't they? Middlesex lead by one with a day left. Mm. It's a difficult... Uh, we, we've spoken, obviously. Um, we, we've probably covered all, all aspects of this over the last over the last three days. Um, one of the things that um, I said at uh, various points is, you know, I like to, in sport, I like to see a contest. And at times there has been more of a contest uh, because of the Kookaburra ball, um, in terms of contest bat against ball, than there might have been with a Duke's ball. However, that has not been the case today. It's not been a fair contest, really, I, I would say, bat against ball. That's not to take away at all from the application and skill of Max Holden, who leaves the arena on 211, not out, and uh, Lewis Deploy on 196, not out, who have played brilliantly and combined for 350 at a very good rate. So well played, those two young men. They should be rightly proud and have a, a nice brew ready for them as they as they leave the arena. But um, yeah, we've seen so few balls deviate off straight. Um, the ball has gone soft very quickly because of the weather that's around the country, um, incredible amounts of rain. The pitch is not hard enough to help uh, the ball deviate. And so that, the combination of those two things has made batting a lot easier than it than it might otherwise might otherwise have been. Um, that said, you know, you still got to get them. So I don't want to detract at all from the from the skill and application of the of the batters who have scored runs. But it has not been a fair contest bat against ball. I think the numbers the numbers are telling us that, and the numbers are. Reason, this is extreme, but they're reasonably, reasonably similar all around the country. On the positive side, there are a huge number of positive things from a Northamptonshire perspective. And, I, and, I, and I'm a hard judge. I think that's the right way, the right way to be. Um, we've taken one wicket in, in the day, um, but we've tried numerous things, uh, different tactics, different bowling partnerships, 
um, different variations and so on that just haven't quite worked out. Things just haven't gone to hand. We had a couple of chances that haven't stuck. A um, few players have missed, a few edges that have gone to ground. And um, that's credit to the endeavour and the skill levels of the bowl of the bowling bowling side. So um, difficult to really make that point too too strongly. Really, I think at 553 for two, we have not bowled badly. And if people want to call me an idiot for saying that, it, that that's fine. I'd understand that. But um, yeah, I stand by it. I don't think we've bowled badly, and I think we've run in all day. The effort in the field has been fantastic. And I see a team that's pretty together and uh, long may that continue. If that continues in that vein, then we'll have a decent season. Yeah, it's a fair and honest assessment of the day, I think. Middlesex, yeah, dominated and it has been good fun to watch from a Middlesex perspective, I'm sure, having watched Max Holden and Luce Deploy score the runs that they have. Um, Phil, thank you very much for your company for the past three days, mate. It's been great fun. It's been Insightful a pleasure. as ever, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the season with you as well. You're off to play golf tomorrow. I am. Get, I, get playing around on this. Exactly. North I Devon will Coast. be back at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning with Mel Farrell, weather permitting. Um, so fingers crossed it stays dry, and we'll see you at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Have a good evening.